Hey, M0A Nation, Jason back with you. Took a quick little lunch break, got some much needed coffee to make it through the day and back to you all talking literally all things aviation. We should be sitting at Sun and Fun right now. It's a gorgeous day here in Florida to be hanging out uh, at Sun and Fun. That is not the case thanks to the uh, coronavirus. Instead, we are bringing some of the phenomenal Sun and Fun exhibitors, some of my very good friends as well, people you would have seen down there anyways. We're bringing them all to you to sit and chat and just talk about aviation. Um, we talked to Steve one Canivo uh, this morning. We talked to Max from Cirrus. We took a little lunch break. Um, let me go over the schedule for the rest of today. My goal is to keep the stream going, this live stream going all day now. I don't know if there's a cutoff uh, for how long we can do that. If so, we'll fix it and adjust. But uh, anyways, Trevor from Chart It All is joining us here in just a second. Then at 2 p.m., my ver uh, very early aviation mentor, Joel, uh, will be joining us along with Controller Bob, who you might remember from a few recent videos. Then from 3 to 5 p.m., we're switching all to drones. At 3 p.m., my good friend Ken Heron and 4 p.m., Brennan Edwards will be joining us. And we'll be talking about drones as well thereafter. But let's, uh, let's give a few little shout outs before we bring Trevor on here. Let's head over to YouTube and give some uh, shout outs. Hey to um, username B Evans, great to see you. Adam Thomas, welcome back. Fly with Brad, great to see you on over here um, as well. Um, over on Facebook, I know we have a few hopping on there now. You guys wanna give some shout outs as well. I'll get that uh, the chat pulled up there in a bit and say hi to you guys as well. And then of course, we have our special guest. Please welcome to the All Things Aviation live stream, my good friend Trevor from Chart It All. Trevor, how are you doing, my friend? I'm doing very well, Jason. Thank you so much for having me on and uh, helping us celebrate aviation in this crazy time. You know, it's definitely a unique time that we're living in. It is a crazy time indeed. If you have never heard of Chart It All, all you have to do is look at Trevor's shirt. And that explains <laughs> Chart It All in a nutshell. Trevor, can we go over like you were decked out Oshkosh today? Is that, is that correct? I am, yeah. I, I've, got, I've got, so here, I'll, I'll model for you here. Uh, <laughs> I've got the Oshkosh shirt on. Uh, I've got the Oshkosh coffee mug. Um, staying hydrated. Uh, I actually, you know, we have a coaster, but it's not actually Oshkosh, but we can we can talk a lot about this airspace. We have the Daytona class Charlie airspace. Uh, I've got I've got my watch band on, which this is uh, this is also uh, this is where I fly out of. This is a uh, Orlando executive airport. And then, of course, a phone case because we chart it all. You know, when we I say chart it all. Chart it all. <laughs> I get it, man. I am rocking my chart it all mug uh, that you uh, graciously gave to us when you're up here. I love not only the M0A part that you left on there, I love that it says not for navigational purposes. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, lawyers your, make your, us put that on there. Your lawyers make you put that on there because someone's navigating going, huh, okay, that's, I, yes. I can see this happening. The, the only exception to that, and this is a new program that we're looking at possibly starting, is if you update your chart every six months and we'll, we'll, we'll send you a new product every <laughs> every time the new chart comes out. So that's that way awesome. you can stay up to date, you can stay current, uh, and you uh, just leave your credit card on file with us and we'll, we'll uh, send you a new product every, uh, that, every time. The thing I love about you, Trevor, is you are you are an entrepreneur like myself, and I absolutely love that. Let's learn more about Trevor. First off, Trevor, um, let's where did this all begin? I mean, I noticed you don't have a quarantine beard growing. So, <laughs> I, I mean, how old are you now, and how are we diving into this flight training thing? Sure, sure. So I am 16 right now. Um, I started flying technically uh, on my when I was 10 years old. My first general aviation flight was on my 10th birthday. It was a Young Eagles flight in a Piper Cub, and that was my first exposure to general aviation. And I couldn't be more grateful and, and lucky to have flown in a Piper Cub. It's my have, to have that airplane is my my first airplane. I you know people may say that you know doesn't really go very fast, but I think it is the best example of the power of general aviation. So flew in a Piper Cub for the first time. That got me hooked. I actually uh, discovered general aviation through the space program. Growing up in Central Florida, I'm local to the Central Florida area, just north of Orlando, I used to want to be an astronaut because from the time I was born until the end of the space shuttle program, we did not miss one space shuttle launch. You know, we, we would go out to Kennedy Space Center almost every weekend. That's what I wanted to do. Uh, and that's what I, that was, that was my life. I saw myself becoming an astronaut. And then 
2011 came around and that program ended. The space shuttle program came to an end. Elon Musk wasn't really around at the time. Uh, SpaceX wasn't uh, doing all the wonderful things that they're doing now. And the future of manned space flight didn't really look great. So I did some research as a nine-year-old at the time and wow. discovered that a lot. You know, age is a number. I you get it, man. I get it. There, you know? um, and so I did some research and discovered that a lot of astronauts, um, especially those that I had really looked up to and admired, started out in general aviation. They got their private pilot certificate. They learned how to fly. And that's eventually what led them to that career. And I, I found, wow, this is really cool. I, I'm going to do some research and, and find out what I can. And sure enough, that year, uh, my 10th birthday, my parents surprised me with the young Eagles flight and a Piper Cub. And that's after that, I was hooked. And so that fought the continuing on to that year, uh, Santa Claus that year brought me a flight simulator. <laughs> uh, and so it was a little flight simulator FSX with a yoke and a throttle. And, and I, I accumulated several hundred hours on it. Uh, I still have it, actually. And I, I'm probably going to pull it out during this time of social distancing to stay to help stay current, um, mm -hmm. so to speak. But I built up a bunch of hours on that. I was just loving everything, learning as much as I can, watching a bunch of videos and, and reading every book I could find about aviation and flying. And then I learned how much it cost. Yeah. And it, you know, I think we all have that reality when we, when we start getting, getting interested in aviation. We find this incredible passion. We're really excited about it. And then you realize, well, this is going to cost quite a bit to actually pursue this as, as you know, a goal and to become a pilot. So um, you know, I have two of the most incredibly supportive parents ever. I love them to death, and they support all of my crazy ideas. Uh, but financially, flight training just wasn't a reality for us. So... When I was 11, I did what every 11-year-old would do, and I decided to start a company to pay for my flight training. Every 11-year-old starts companies, college, that's right. You know, ultimately college. And so uh, that's how Chartered All was born. It really, you know, the story is that I was planning out a flight uh, because, yes, I was that geek. I would plan out a cross-country flight with a sectional chart that I'd fly in my flight simulator, uh, do all that. And my mom walked by, noticed the chart, noticed, you know, she isn't a pilot, uh, neither of my parents fly. And... And she just noticed that it. W she found it interesting, um, you know, someone who isn't an aviator. So we took a Sharpie, drew the outline of a shirt on the actual chart, and that's how the idea was born. Did, you know, did a bunch of research to figure out the best way to do this and make it happen. The idea of, you know, printing sectional charts on different apparel products had never really been done before. So mm -hmm. we debuted at Sun and Fun in 2015, uh, got some great feedback, people really loved it, and here we are now. It's been wow. quite the journey. <laughs> That is super cool, my friend. And you're right, just like every 11-year-old, go out and start a business. But yeah, well, you know, I needed to find a way to pay for flight training, and this was it. <laughs> well, most people sweep hangers, you know, in exchange for some flight hours, but you right, went, right. You went a, a very different but awesome route, my friend, and congratulations to you on your success. I think it is, it is truly phenomenal. So where are you at now with your flying, your flight training? What are you up to? What are some of the goals? Definitely. So I am 16 now. I turned 16 last June, and I soloed on my 16th birthday, uh, Cessna 172, Orlando Executive Airport, and it was just that. That was that was the dream, really, for me since I started flying was to solo on my 16th birthday. I'd had so many uh, great friends and mentors tell me about their experiences soloing on their 16th birthday, and that's you know I'm very lucky and grateful that uh, we made that happen. And so. Um, doing that now, finishing up my private, getting started on instrument as well. Uh, going to be finishing both of those up this summer when I turn 17. I've got a, a few other plans as well that will. Uh, th th I'm working on a new project. We'll just leave it at that. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, we'll, we'll be talking a lot more about that soon. But I actually uh, started originally flying uh, gliders because when I was first getting into aviation, I learned that you can solo a glider at 14. And gliders are a fantastic way to really learn the fundamental stick and rudder skills that you need uh, as a pilot. So when you, you transition into a single engine aircraft, now you just have to learn how to regulate the engine and, and manage that, throw that into the mix. So mm -hmm. I was very fortunate to receive a glider flight training scholarship, and it took me through solo. So I soloed a glider at 14 and then started the transition into powers. So, uh, you know, aviation has definitely consumed my life since uh, since that first flight, but wouldn't have wanted it any other way. Were you down, uh, was that the Seminole Glider Port, not too far from you? It was, uh, so I've been to Seminole Lake Glider Port, but I actually flew with Eagle Sport Aviation, uh, mm. and they're based out of Pearson, Florida. Mm, they do glider there, operations. Yeah. So, yeah. That's very it's a cool. Great trip there. I want to I want to grab some questions before they get too buried sure. in here. Someone wants to know if Rippin is on your chart for the proper arrival in Oshkosh. Should I mean, be. That, it, it should be. I'm not sure where exactly. I know it's 
around here somewhere. I have to look. Uh, it's like maybe spin it's around. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it's kind of hard when you're the one wearing the shirt. Fisk is on here, though. You Fisk, can see okay. Fisk. So the Good. Fisk arrival got there. Uh, Rippin, I'm sure, is around here somewhere. Yes. Okay, perfect. <laughs> People are wondering, everyone else is wondering, is that Embraer 175 behind you as well? That was the it other is. top yeah, question. It is. Yeah, we got a smart audience. This is the home office. Yeah, this is, uh, this is the home office, working from home, remotely, yeah. school, everything uh, is from home. So, yeah, it's uh, my friend, one of my very uh, earliest aviation mentors and friends uh he was a uh, first officer on the embraer 175 and that was a, a gift from him yes that's cool that's a that's a fun gift to have trevor I, I love talking business so i want to i want to learn and uh and and dive more into the business of this you started this business at 11 you launched with t-shirts um yes. and where have you taken it from there what kind of reception are you getting with this obviously i see the leggings i see the uh the shirts all over the air shows and and on social media and everything else um, catch me up on how the business is doing and what's it evolving into sure so we started off like you said with shirts uh socks and aprons those were our first three uh products and everything that we print, that we produce, is custom. So you get to choose your home airport, your airspace, Whoa. any area you that, cool. any area you want. That's we don't, so cool. We, we don't just have an inventory. You know, we really customize it for you. And as you know, uh, we'll add a logo, a flying club, uh, EAA chapter number, really anything. And so that, uh, yeah, you can see the uh, m0a.com on there. Yep. We, got, um, yeah, we got the big camera for everybody too. Oops, where, is, you where are you at, John? Right there. Boom. And Hold so. On. Yeah, perfect. M0A.com. And that's Ocala. Trevor, you can't see it, but they can see it on the camera. That's uh, Ocala in the M0A.com portion. And of course, it's the Ocala sectional chart. Whoops, I'm working backwards. And Ocala is right there. So you don't have a stock of Ocala mugs. You literally have a stock of blanks, Trevor. And exactly. then you go and someone says um, on here, uh, I want Orlando Exec. I want Ocala. And they do that. And you, mm -hmm. and you just print them on demand like that. That's cool. That's it. Yeah, you just uh, if you order on our website, you just type in the airport code, any special instructions that you'd like, and we can work with you one on one to design it, make sure you're happy with it, and then we print it and send it to you. And so that the fact that everything's custom really is what makes it special because people can choose an airport where they had an engine out landing, uh, where they first soloed. You know, people can it can be connected to a story, and that's what I love about it. Uh, Jim Aviation is all about sharing stories, and and you know it's such a great community. So you can you know drink coffee from the mug, uh, drink coffee from mug a mug where you had your engine out landing and tell that story so uh, <laughs> that's my storytelling you know, mug right yeah <laughs> exactly storytelling mug so um you know that definitely went really well I, and we for the first year year and a half i was 11 at the time still you know my parents still full-time jobs like it, it was something that was more of a hobby post sun and fun we came back from sun and fun it was great but it started off kind of as a hobby we sold it to pilot friends stuff like that we had a little google site um and then about Two years ago, we sat down and said, you know what, we've been toying with this for a little while. This has some real potential. Are we going to take it and run with it? Or are we just going to let it die off? And mm. we decided to take it and uh, run with it. And awesome. uh, now we're in Sporty's Pilot Shop. We work with no EAA. Way. Okay. Yeah, you can find all of our products, or most of our products, excuse me, on Sporty's. And it's just been fantastic. We, uh, they, we went to Oshkosh for the first time two years ago mm -hmm. and uh, did their fantastic reception there uh, from people. Such a great time at Oshkosh, you know, and uh, we just came back from Women in Aviation where we unveiled a whole new line of products. And a lot of our products, you know, if you go to our website, chartedall.com, you'll see everything that we have. We have quite a variety of really fun, fun stuff. And mm. basically, most of the products that you can see are ideas that customers have had. They, they said, hey, Trevor, can, can you produce, uh, you know, a phone case? Or what about uh, a scarf or, or something like that? And, and sure enough, you know, we'll, we'll do the research to see if we can do it and make it happen. And that's actually how, you know, scrunchies just came into development. We just uh, started, uh, you know, I don't know if you could use one of those, Jason, no. but uh, we, we do sectional chart scrunchies as well. So you were bringing, really you're bringing back the scrunchies. I thought scrunchies died, but you were we, bringing them back, you know, huh? I, I really had very limited knowledge of scrunchies until I had a bunch of friends. <laughs> you, That's you, good. You, That's you good. should be making scrunchies. They, they've kind of been coming back within the last year. It's been a new trend. And so uh, I was like, okay, sure, let's see what we can do. And and here we, and here we are. We, we, now, we now sell sectional chart scrunchies. That's awesome. <laughs> Holly, who's on uh, YouTube, uh, one of our great uh, 
online ground school members. I always give Holly a hard time because she watches this at work, Trevor. So she always has to hop ah. in and out when the boss comes around. But she's on right now. And she says, love your stuff. Can't wait for Christmas to order a few things. So let's talk about awesome. those few things, Trevor. When you were here, sure. you announced, uh, it was actually before you even announced some of these things that you did at Women in Aviation. What's the new stuff right now? Scrunchies is so. one. Scrunchies is one. We have tank tops as well. Tank tops are brand new. We have, uh, we used to, actually we still have, uh, Tervis. Anyone local to the Florida area is probably mm. familiar with Tervis tumblers. Yeah. So we have uh, now two uh, stainless steel tumblers. We have Whoa. a metal water bottle, uh, which fits in your flight bag. It's perfect to bring along flying. Uh, it has been product tested multiple times by several pilots. So uh, you can is bring that flying approved? with you. Yeah, got it. Pilot approved, exactly. And then uh, we have another tumbler, just like the one that you're drinking from now. Uh, it's a little bit bigger, 22 ounce stainless steel, uh, and it's printed all with your chart on it. So That's those cool. are uh, two new products, scrunchies. Then we also have Apple watch bands now, which I will show take that. off that, and, that was and show that off now. So these are brand new as well. Uh, you can choose to have one airport here, another airport here, uh, really whatever you want. And those <laughs> those actually pair very nicely with the phone case. So, it, shameless it, plug there. No, uh, when you showed me the <laughs> Apple Watch bands, I bet you did quite well at Women in Aviation with those and with scrunchies, yeah. I imagine. Very, very popular, yeah. Oh, our scrunchies sold out. You know, they uh, the, the scrunchies are the one thing that, uh, the one product that uh, is not custom uh, because you can't actually see the airport. So, uh, we did, do have inventory of scrunchies and they have been super popular so far. Wow, I, I totally get it. Um, Austin wants, uh, to, he says, I wish you could make a sectional chart short sleeve dress shirt. Mm. That is that is a request that we've had for about a year now. We are working on it because believe me, I am the same way. I love dress shirts. I actually mm -hmm. not, I'm not actually a big t-shirt fan. I love t-shirts, but for the most part, I'd much rather wear a dress shirt. So I, we are working on that, Austin. We it's are, tough. There's working, so many little yeah, lines and buttons and it is. And and one of the problems is, you know, uh, the process that, that we that we use is called dye sublimation printing. So the ink actually gets embedded into the fabric fibers, um, so it doesn't wash out or fade. It's very high quality. And so, um, in order for us to maintain that process, the uh, the margins on on some of the fancier dress shirts and things like that, they'd end up being really very expensive. And and for right. the most part, people a lot of people probably aren't going to pay eighty ninety dollars for a for even a short sleeve uh, dress shirt. And so, we're working on that. Uh, we're working on, on making those happen for you. So stay tuned. Stay tuned for that. That that is it's coming soon. That is super cool. Trevor, let's talk about some of your goals because uh, I imagine a lot of people on this on this webinar right now share the sentiment. You spend a few minutes with Trevor, you realize he's 16 years old and see what he accomplished, and I'm thinking he's either going to be president of AOPA or president of the United <laughs> States. I'm not sure which <laughs> at this point, but what, what are some of those future aviation goals? Collegiate plans, where are we taking this Absolutely. thing? So right now I'm planning on attending uh, Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, and I'm going on an aviation law track, actually. And it's funny that you mentioned president of AOPA, because that's actually ultimately a type of position I'd love to end up in someday. I want to uh, ultimately end up in aviation law and advocacy, fighting for general aviation up in Washington, D.C., uh, working specifically in the education sector, working on aviation education. You know, I'm all about uh, education. I'm really looking forward to being able to get my uh, certificated flight instructor. Mm -hmm. um, uh, add on and, and become a flight instructor because for me it's all about sharing aviation. I have, I still have some just truly wonderful aviation mentors and friends who have really helped me out in aviation and, and helped me get to where I'm at. And I can, you know, really hardly wait to be in a position where I can pay that forward to other students because, you know, for me, not coming from the aviation background and not really knowing a whole lot about how to get started in general aviation beyond having to actually do the research. There isn't a lot out there, and a lot of students who, you know, they may have that passion, but they just don't know how to get started. And so that's the the, the direction that I'm working to start taking chart at all now. You know, I want to uh, be able to really help inspire other students to pursue their aviation dreams. And I'm not saying you have to go start a company, but apply for aviation scholarships, network, mm -hmm. go out to the airport, start meeting people. You never know who you're going to be having a conversation with and who, and who you're going to be talking to. And so. What's great about aviation is for most people, someone helped them out when they were getting uh, started and they want to be able to pay that forward to you. So uh, definitely, you know, to any students watching this or just anyone for that matter, uh, don't be afraid to go up, meet people and uh, and apply for flight training scholarships. There are so many wonderful scholarships out there, uh, most that go unused just simply because people don't apply for them. So definitely uh, go make that happen. It's doable and it is scary and it is a lot of money, but it is doable. You can make it happen. Well, let's stick with that theme because over on Facebook, Jav asked a question, do you go to high school and can you talk about having <laughs> discipline? 
Absolutely. That's a wonderful question. I do go to high school. I'm a high school senior. I, I am in the International Baccalaureate Program, IB, if anyone's familiar with that. It is similar to AP. I go to DeLand High School here in DeLand, Florida, uh, public high school. And IB is a very rigorous, acad academically speaking, it's very rigorous and time consuming. So finding that balance between flying, chart it all, school, everything like that. You know, I am still a full time student uh, right now. That's kind of been put on pause. Uh, you know, we do, we are in online classes and everything right now, but I am still a full-time student. So it's definitely taken a little while to find a good routine, uh, between schoolwork, chartered all work, flight training, among a few other things that I, among a few other projects and stuff like that. And so the big thing for me is I, I definitely prioritize things. School is all, always comes first. Uh, so school is number one for me. And then chartered all, I, you know, I'll usually spend, uh, come home do, do whatever homework I have to do, prepare for the day, next next day for school, and then spend the rest of the evening working on chart it all work, whether that is uh, marketing, uh, sales, website, whatever it may be. It's just, you know, the work varies day to day. Uh, so, yeah, definitely. I uh, definitely find a good balance. You know, for me, it even comes down as simple as, you know, you know making a to-do list and sticking to it, you know. Uh, I always like to plan out my day uh, the night ahead, the, the night before, and just say, hey, here's everything I have to do for the day, for school, for chart it all. Uh, and for everything else and just you know try and stay motivating try and stay motivated and, and get it done you know the motivation for me is that I'm not gonna be able to keep flying if I don't you know this is uh, you know you need to find a way to pay for it and all You're plus it's smart. a lot of fun you know it, it, it's a whole lot of fun and, and it's been great to meet so many wonderful people in uh, in aviation through the company through chart it all and just build some great friendships and relationships that's super my friend let's uh, Trevor I have more questions for you but the audience uh, sure, sure. Is, Go so, ahead. Yeah. is so engaged right now I don't want to miss a lot of these good it. questions definitely um, please uh, Katharina asked on YouTube Trevor I'd really love to see a special chart it all products for female pilots Definitely. So uh, we actually have a couple of products that are geared specifically towards women in aviation. Uh, we just came back from the Women in Aviation Conference and we did a partnership with them where we added the Women in Aviation logo to our products. And unfortunately, you had to be at the conference for that, but we'll be doing that again next year too. Uh, but we are, we definitely are working on a, on a specific product line promoting women in aviation for sure. That's awesome. Carlos Rodriguez said Trevor could be the new CEO of M Zero A. Uh, uh, that's fine. I can go. Are you to the, ready to I can, retire? I can Are you retire. ready to retire, man? I can go to the beach for a bit and relax. There you I'd go, go. Like yourself, I'd go stir crazy. I'm not excited about this 30 days at home thing right now. So yeah, me neither. Me neither. Um, it's we'll a, we'll see how that goes. Do. <laughs> I understand. Um, hey, who knows, Jason? I may come for your job someday. Who knows? That, that is okay. <laughs> um, Jurg asked, "Does Chart at all ship to Switzerland?" We do. We can. Uh, we definitely do international shipping all over the world, anywhere. Yep. Mike also said, "Don't forget to enjoy life and be a kid too. Don't forget that." <laughs> I, Absolutely. Uh, that is that is good advice. For yeah. Sure. I I made those uh, those mistakes too. I mean, so so regimented, so strict. So you got to be smart about it. Yeah. Um, definitely. Over on, over on Facebook, KL Thompson. If you others want to know, what are the shirts made out of? Sure. So uh, we have actually three different shirt designs. We have uh, the the first design is is a men's crew neck shirt, uh, which is a um, it is a wicking, uh, athletic fabric material. So just like if you were to go and, uh, and, you know, like workout clothes, stuff like that. Uh, and that's made out of that. And then we have two other shirts, a unisex V neck and a women's V neck, uh, shirt design. And those are a poly cotton mix. Uh, and like I said, they all go through the dye sublimation process. So they are very high quality. Uh, they won't fade or anything like that, but yes, those are our three shirt collections. And then we also have, um, uh, in regards to athletic fabric, we have uh, leggings and we have yoga pants. Uh, the leggings are a little bit more of a fashion fit. The yoga pants are more of an athletic fit. So if you actually want to work out in them, do yoga, stuff like that, the yoga pants are, uh, are for you. That's a, <laughs> you are a salesman at heart. I love it. I, 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 th I think, Jason, I think we should get you in a pair of yoga pants. What do you think? Wow. <laughs> do you think um, we can pull those off? <laughs> if, if you have a six foot four pair of yoga pants, yeah, I would love to see them. That. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I remember the first time I met you, and it was actually, I was significantly younger. I was like yes. two or three years younger. Uh, and I was like, 
whoa, you are tall. <laughs> like, and and so, I, I'm not very tall. I, I, I'm like, right. I'm five, five, not very right. tall at all. So standing next to you, it's like, okay, yeah, no, I don't, but unfortunately we don't make yoga pants quite in that size just yet. <laughs> you, hear that, you hear that, John? John's over here laughing, going, this is not a good idea. This is not no, a good yeah. idea. Yeah, well, what about Office Dad? You think, you think we, yeah. I couldn't get boxers for you. You mentioned that the other day. Yeah, and, and if we could get like, Office Dad we aren't some boxers. Going into that, uh, we aren't going into that clothing line category yet the, then, you know, we're not going to, yeah we'll, but, we'll have to we'll have to think uh think about that one then i don't know what we're going to get for office dad but um, yeah we have to get off dad some swag actually we, speaking of that uh yes the plan was to be in studio today but unfortunately you know with everything going on uh obviously much smarter to be doing this from home but we do have uh for wayne i think this is the first time he's seeing this an m0a office dad Love it. coffee Love so and you've actually got Ocala in the letters there. And this is something that we can do for anyone. Um, you know, we can add your name or anything and, and actually put your airport in the letters. So uh, Office Dad, you know, next time I wow. see you, we've got yeah. Wow, he's going to love that. That is so cool. I love how we just started this Office boxers, Dad. But still. No, no, it's not as good as boxers, <laughs> but it's, it's a good, it's a step in the right direction. I just love how we branded him as Office Dad just a few months ago, and it's just, it's catching on like fire. I absolutely love it. Off, you know, pun it's, intended. It's been it's, it's doing very well. It's like you said, I'm, I'm ready to retire. If you can be the CEO, Office Dad can do the videos. I think we'll be. Uh, hey, who, who knows? I mean, with, with, with you know, huh. Interesting you say that. Well, let's talk go. about that. There you go. There you go. Anyways, let's continue to talk about your goals, your your plan. Sure. So, aviation law at Riddle. Um, give me the thought process behind that. I mean, it sounds like an outstanding plan, but but it's also yeah. that's an expensive plan too. Let's let's talk it it through it. It is. So, you know, between Chartered All and lots and lots of scholarships, uh, that is how I am planning on paying for college. We all know how expensive Embry Riddle or any college for that matter yeah, for is. For sure. And so that is the plan. My focus is, uh, you know, I got into the whole aviation law thing. I actually didn't want to do it for quite a while. And my, and my mom has always thought that I'd be a great attorney and a great lawyer. And, I, and I always smooth talker. I, I tried to deny it. I was like, no, I, I don't want to be an attorney. I, I, don't, I don't want to go into law. Uh, and for the longest time, I was like, no, I'm not going to do it because, I, you know, I, she, she always saw it in me, though. And she was always like, you should be a lawyer. You, you should consider it. And I was like, yeah, I don't know about that. And then, um, you know, I started – really getting interested in the work that AOPA and EAA was doing up in Washington, D.C. a couple of years ago with air traffic control privatization and when that was was mm. uh, being talked about up in Congress and, and seeing the work that they did to really help advocate for the general aviation community and just the industry in general fascinated me. And that I, and I'm all about really, you know, not just the whole fun sales business side of things, but I'm I really want to help change and make the industry even better than it already is and, and really help move us forward. And so that's the kind of the track that I'm taking now, going through aviation law, ultimately mm -hmm. ending up in aviation advocacy. You can definitely be on the M0A uh, council, uh, and be on retainer. We can start <laughs> we'll with that. We'll talk in about a decade or so, for sure. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, B. Evans on YouTube had a really cool idea, actually. He, he's going to want a royalty for it, I'm sure. Okay, sure, but, sure. <laughs> <laughs> plane, plane covers and cow plugs. That's a creative little... <laughs> Um, little idea, idea as well. It, that, that is a great idea, and, and we've actually we've talked about that. You know, just just doing things that involve aircraft. Actually, the only problem there is now, now you have to go through a bunch of certifications and stuff with the FAA to point. make sure it's all good. Uh, for a while, actually, uh, we we had thought it'd be really cool to do seat covers for an wow. airplane. Wow, obviously have to be fire you know resistant and, yeah. and everything like that and they have a whole bunch of different regulations so uh that it's just it's a very complicated thing but i do love that idea and it's definitely hey i've got time now you know so I, gotcha. business, I, can, I can do some more research on that for sure i got you although um, you know really you know long term and hey if two three two three max Zulu is getting a paint job right now so you may want to right. talk about this i would love to wrap an airplane in an aeronautical chart if anyone has an airplane that they, they want to be the official chart at all ambassador airplane you know put an aeronautical chart on an actual airplane i think that'd be pretty cool not the entire thing you like some cool design but i think that'd be pretty cool trevor this I idea think this idea is going in the jason shepherd parking lot okay this is oh, there you go this is the official That's anytime nice. anytime i have an idea i have to put it in my parking lot and office dad wayne makes me have a five day cool down period before because i get really <laughs> excited about ideas i'm the same way i'm the same way my mom and i both you know i i definitely got that from her i credit her 100 percent on that <laughs> mm -hmm. i'm writing this down I'm not ignoring you here i just think it's a good idea no you're Wrap good and th that is that, that was actually my mom's idea like like how cool would that be to put a sectional chart on an airplane and and bring it to oshkosh bring it to sun and fun 
and just have it be the thing. I'd love to find a way to incorporate that somehow. You know, I, I don't know yet. I'm not ready to buy an airplane yet. Hopefully soon. Let's but. revisit that thought. That's a really, yes. really intriguing yeah. thought. I don't want to give away my ideas publicly just yet. Um, <laughs> thus, it sits in the parking lot. I, I like it. I like it. I've got a little notebook. It doesn't say parking lot on it. I like that idea, though. But I, I'm the same way. <laughs> Let's uh, let's take some more questions. Uh, Trevor, are you in the M0? I know you're a ground school member of ours. Are you in the group, the Facebook group as well? I just joined a few days ago, actually. Okay. Yes. Well, if yes. you've been in, the, have you seen any of the crazy memes that have been made in there lately? I saw the one that you discussed on, I think it was Tuesday. Uh, yes. When we did the ground, when we did the uh, live stream. Um, yes. Then. I also recently saw the Stevo one yes. uh, with you and Stevo okay. uh, for the volleyball tournament. <laughs> most of that, most of that is the work. If you go to Facebook of Eric Deagle, he's listed as a top fan there. He's a fantastic member yes. of ours. I met him at a, a meetup in Charlottesville, Virginia, not too long ago. He and his uh, wife, yes. and they're working on coming on the cruise with us. We need to talk about the cruise in a second. Yes, uh, but he said, in reference to our yoga pants, he said he can Photoshop a pair on me. So that's, um, he is the Photoshop ninja. Eric, that is something I, uh, I, I don't know if I would like to see that, but I, don't uh, think I, would I, I do think it would be intriguing. I, I think it would definitely be, be interesting. It would definitely, uh, Go viral, I think, on a you would post uh, in all the PM wrong ways. Yeah, in, in all the wrong ways. And, and the office dad is commenting <laughs> Eric, to him. You know, ch ch that that I'm going to leave that over uh, in your hands. So yeah, uh, Missouri office dad is egging him on to do that. So I, I don't. Uh, <laughs> I can I can I can send you some uh, some uh, P PNG files of our yoga pants if you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> Super. Hey, let's talk, Trevor. Um, you are joining us on the aviation mastery at yes. Sea Cruise, which we are just so excited about. Uh, your enthusiasm is contagious. Over on YouTube, uh, Katharina shared, uh, Trevor, you're an exceptional human being. She said, not only highly intelligent and interest driven, but a, a beautiful personality as well. What a combination. And, and, and honestly, so it, it's, hard, it's hard to not talk to you and not get excited about aviation and business and everything else. So Trevor well, is you. joining us as one of our speakers um, as well on the Aviation Mastery at Sea. Hopefully Hopefully by then we have some very cool uh, big oh, news yes. to talk about. I would argue even bigger and cooler than chart at all. And it's hard to get cooler than chart at all. Just, just a little bit cooler. I'll, I'll, I'll say that, you know, and, and actually in, and to that point, um, I will definitely be coming on the cruise and thank you guys so much. Uh, I'm really looking forward to, to joining you all and Steve-O and, and Brennan and everyone. Um, but the, you mentioned that I'll be speaking. I, I won't actually be speaking about chart at all. I'll be speaking about my new project, which mm -hmm. is uh, not public yet. It is, in the works it's very very exciting and it's definitely something that uh you're going to want to stay tuned for so if you go follow uh follow me on instagram or facebook or anything like that stay tuned and that announcement like you said will be coming very soon yeah i uh, i think that is it's gonna be exciting anyway so yeah trevor is going to be sharing some amazing information um on the cruise, myself, Trevor, uh, Stevo, Brennan, who will be with us at uh, 4 p.m. Uh, we've got some some rock star uh, people lined up for the cruise. I actually, it's so funny. And, and Trevor, you haven't gotten much of an update, and I apologize for that. As far as the cruise goes, you would think I start every marketing message going. It's a tough time to be marketing a cruise, talking about a cruise that we're doing. I know it's in October, but with all this negativity of the news, you look yeah. at Royal Caribbean stock right now. Everything else is just getting hammered. Um, that's true. We still, yeah, we, we have we, we sold out of the diamond packages. We are we are get, trying to get the crews to give us more rooms right now. Like it is, we, we still book like four or five cabins every single week. Um, aviation, Perfect. as you Perfect. know, Trevor, is a relentless bunch. Which is, yes. um, we yes. will certainly um, persevere through uh, through all of this. So it's um, that's the hope. You know, and, and and come October, I'm I'm hoping that you know. Hopefully by then, uh, life will slowly be getting back to normal, and, uh, and we'll still be able to go on the cruise. That is, you know, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed for Oshkosh right now. You know, uh, I'm absolutely. Really, I'm really, you know, uh, Oshkosh is definitely one of my favorite events of the entire year, and uh, really keeping my fingers crossed for that. Yeah, I love it. Uh, by the way, Sam on YouTube said, I'm back. I uh, just ordered my socks. So Sam hopped oh, on the live stream real quick to go order some Outstanding. socks. Outstanding. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. So when you fulfill orders this afternoon or tomorrow, you make sure you, you give something special to Sam as well for watching. I, so I, that is duly noted. Thank you, Sam. That is awesome. Noted. Yeah, that is, that is super cool. I love it. Um, YouTube, Facebook, let's open. We've kind of been doing questions the whole time, but let's open it up for... Um, um, questions to Trevor about Chart at all, about his journey. Maybe you have a son or a daughter that you want to um, get interested in aviation, uh, whatever, whatever that may be. Trevor is the person to talk to. I know he's got plans for a 
for a foundation in the future to just give back uh, to a community that's given so much to, to him, so much to myself. I mean, that's the thing about aviation, Trevor, you know this. Yeah. Aviation is, um, is, a, is a genuinely passionate and giving community. Unfortunately, um, sometimes places put up some walls and make it difficult to get in, but when you get to the true kind-hearted people in aviation like yourself, um, it is endless where it can take you uh, with that. Oh, and you are, you're living proof of that. That's my favorite part about friend. it, you know? And, and it's, it's, you know, the first time I went to Oshkosh, I heard this all the time from so many people that I met. You go the first time for the airplanes and you come back for the people. Yeah. That's what it's all about. That and is I can, the, you know, I'm testify to that, no problem. That is the ultimate truth here. Adam yeah, Thomas said uh, he wants uh, chartered all swag bags on the cruise. I haven't announced what we're doing for that yet. So, well, uh, hey, uh, you know, you're, you're predicting into the future a little bit there. He's hmm. working on that. I don't know how far we are on your on the idea I sent you, Trevor, so I don't want to announce anything just yet. That, I know. It's in the works. It's, it's in, in the, the works. works. Okay. The, it's going to be cooler than swag bags, Adam. I'll tell you that. It's going to yes. be way, way cooler. Significantly um, cooler. So that will be cool. Um, someone asked about the uh, shower curtains as well. Is this, yes. is this, yes. wow. So I yeah. could be flight we planning in the all. shower. Hey, review your uh, your airspace in the shower. You know, you've got nothing, you know, hey, just <laughs> I love free it. time. You know, you got to study for your written exam. <laughs> I got, okay, a business idea just hit me. Let's, okay. set, let, let's combine sectional chart shower curtains with a Bluetooth, Waterproof speaker, so they can listen to past your private pilot check ride audio book. <laughs> there you go. That's perfect. In the shower while we're looking at their sectional chart. What do you think? That's perfect. We can we're sell it as something. A pair. Love it. I love we're, it. We're on Absolutely. to something now. <laughs> <laughs> no shower curtains. If they. It, it, that was again one of those ideas that I never really imagined. Like, hey, would anyone actually be interested in, in buying a sectional chart shower curtain? And and yeah, we had a bunch of people because a lot of people have you know larger hanger shower bathrooms yeah. in their hanger. It's perfect for that. You know. Uh, depends on, you know, your significant other may not be a huge fan of it. That's why it usually goes in the guest bedroom. You normally uh, customers joke with that <laughs> yeah. on a certain guest bathroom. But uh, same with the duvet covers. Same, same you with have the duvet, duvet covers. You wow. have duvet covers. Yes. Yeah. Wow. That is, there's so. nothing more romantic than a sectional chart. I, I know, cover. right? There you go. <laughs> I get it. Wow. Wow. That is funny, yeah. man. Very, yes. very cool stuff. We have fun, we, and we have a lot of fun. I, I know exactly what your Embry-Riddle dorm room is going to look like now. It's just going to be oh, like walking into yeah, a chart. Right? <laughs> My roommate's awesome. going to love that, right? Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. Let's see. Let's uh, let's head to uh, some more questions here. Everyone loves you. Adam Saylor, one of our great lifetime members. This means a lot because Adam is a super, super guy. He tells you, you are on fire. And Adam is a very, very successful in his own right. So that uh, that statement carries a lot of weight uh, with you. He's one of our great lifetime members. Um, so uh, Eric Deagle, the Photoshop King, says this young man is going places. Keep it up. You are awesome. Um, so let's uh, let's see. Uh, Eric Deagle also wants a sleeping bag too. He said for those sun, cold sun and fun Ooh. and Oshkosh nights. You that'd know, be fun. that'd be perfect. Yeah, that'd be absolutely perfect for uh, for uh, you know camping out at sun and fun Oshkosh. I love it. I there love you it. Go. Maybe 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 even a whole tent while we're at it. You know, there you let's go. just do or, or like at least the tent rain cover. You know. I See, love this is it. how it happens. You just get the ideas flowing. And, yeah, I love know. it. By the way, Ben Crawley, one of our fantastic ground school members, says his wife loves her uh, leggings of oh, T.Y.S. Wonderful. Tyson. He's uh, in the Knoxville, Tennessee area. So Perfect. Yay. Outstanding. Yeah. Great to hear. Great to hear. It is super, super cool. Let's... Um, uh, let's find some more. Oh, Katharina was asking about uh, the, the audio book. Uh, if you go on Audible, I was just joking about a crazy business idea. I wouldn't, I, I'm, I'm not, a, not hey, trying to be I, a salesman. I'm not opposed to it. I, I got gotcha, you. I, I got gotcha. you. Uh, if you look on Audible and just type in past your private pilot check ride or type in Jason Shepard, uh, it'll come um, right up. And Ernesto and a few others talk, chimed in about the audio book. So, Trevor, with all this coronavirus stuff, I mean, you're, you're not flying now. I, I would assume. Yeah. What are you doing no. to stay proficient? Yeah, definitely. You know, I've uh, I've been doing a lot of ground school. Uh, I've been going through uh, instrument ground school. I was actually just getting ready to take my private pilot run. I was literally ready to, to go do it, uh, and then everything closed. Um, right. And so I'm doing a usually about a practice test a day, staying up to date with that, studying for the oral, and then also getting started on the instrument uh, ground school for that as well. So definitely doing that. Um, like I said, I may have to break out the old flight simulator and start flying in that. 
uh, and and maybe shoot a few approaches and that's I'm, I'm getting I'm get, getting through that and uh, you've been teaching me all about that with your ground school cool. so um, cool. <laughs> may, may have to do that but yeah it's a definitely a bummer you know uh, flying is and I think a lot of us can relate uh, to this it's it's definitely hard to stay at home and, and you and I are very similar we're very social people you know we love going out and doing stuff so staying at home for a while is definitely um, kind of kind of different but yeah. it is necessary and you know if we want to have Oshkosh this year and get back to normal Gosh, I know. As, as soon as possible and so uh, it is a great time to really get ground school and pre- test prep check ride prep done that's what I've been doing uh, that's what you know a, a lot of friends a lot of people that I know a lot of friends have been doing that as well mm-hmm. so yeah great time to you know study up to date on that you know there's also a lot of great aviation content on youtube you can watch yes. not even for studying just entertainment and stuff um you know great stuff on there as well i'm yes. trying to get a youtube channel started it's cool. a, a slow progression for the last year but uh, it's been fun just kind of sharing cool aviation adventures and stuff like that um yeah so yeah i understand man that's super cool hey trevor how about ifr charts as well yes sir we can do those as well ifr low high all of the above that's all, and it's helping you study for your instrument as well. So that's exactly, uh, exactly. Um, that is super, super cool. Let's uh, let's look for some more kind of questions here. Um, Eric Deagle wants to do a live flight sim online event. That would be cool, Eric. We got a that that's a be fun. that would be a super fun, fun idea. Walter on Facebook asked, "Do we recommend to go fly with the current virus situation, mm-hmm. uh, even if they clean the plane?" Um, I think you need to follow. Uh, CDC and World Health Organization guidelines with this. I mean, Trevor and I are both in Florida and Governor DeSantis just put us under a essential only. You could argue aviation is essential. They just said aviation's essential. Does that mean yeah. M0A is a, this is a, it's just, you could thread it however you want it. I, I am gonna yeah. do my part and the M0A team's gonna do their part to stay home. We're literally actually moving, as soon as we get done here, I was telling Trevor earlier, moving all this live stream software and everything into my spare bedroom. <laughs> and that's what we're gonna do. So future webinars, all that, like, see all the camera, there you go. Uh, all that is gonna be in my spare bedroom. I'm sure the family is thrilled about that. <laughs> um, it, it just means I'm gonna work twice as much now as well, but th- I love it. So that, like yeah, yourself, yeah. Trevor, work never stops. Does yeah, it? it's so. been an adjustment, you know, working at home, school work from home and everything like that. But hey, it's, you know, it works. Yep. It works. Absolutely. They forced me to clean up my my home office area, so to speak. I've, we've all we've gotten a lot of house cleaning, overdue house cleaning done, which has been good. So I bet. <laughs> it kind of forced us to do that. I bet. Adam Thomas says he wants a bomber jacket, by the way. So we actually just worked with someone. I think it was a, the first year we were at Oshkosh. Yeah. Uh, where we um, worked with them, they actually uh, we did the sectional chart on the inside of the bomber jacket. That, that's the uh, that's the original. Was, I mean, that's World was, War II yeah. kind of stuff. And, and it was exactly that. It was um, the name escapes me right now. They were going to a, to a benefit, a World War II uh, a memorial and benefit, and and they wanted the bomber jacket with the chart on the inside. So we worked with them to make that happen. It's uh, one of those you know custom things that that we do on off the side. We don't really advertise it, but we can do that. So you can uh, do jacket the, lining. Wow. New jacket lining, something that, uh, and you know, um, many years ago, there was actually a company that printed uh, rain jackets, and and they were super popular um, at Oshkosh. We actually get a lot of people uh, who come up to us and say, "Are you the ones who make the rain jackets?" And they actually they went out of business uh, about a decade ago, um, but you know, those are also in the works as well. That's cool. Someone wants to know too, um, sunglasses perhaps with a chart maybe? Not sunglasses, but sunglass case. Actually, you know what? Ah, you know, I don't have it here with me right now. We have everything. We do, this is incredible. We have, we have a little sunglass case that uh, you can put your sunglasses in. It's actually got an outline of Ray-Bans on the case. So oh. aviator style Ray-Bans. So. I love it. What, um, what's next for chart at all? What's like, uh, sure. is it, I mean, is this like top secret Elon Musk kind of stuff you can't share with us <laughs> or like what, what's going on in that crazy head of yours? Sure. So there is a, a certain part, top secret Elon Musk kind of crazy stuff, uh, that kind of aligns with my new project that I can't share yet. Uh, but in terms of everything else, you know, right now we're getting ready for Oshkosh. Uh, we are getting ready to pretty much any time we go to an event, uh, we unveil a bunch of new products. Um, and so we do have two or three things that are in the works right now uh, that involve apparel. So some more apparel coming, some more gifts coming as well. Um, so hopefully, like I said, fingers crossed for Oshkosh, we will be there. You can come see us. 
uh, and we'll be unveiling that as well. But yeah, right now that's the work. And then also we're really focusing now, um, and this, I've got a lot of downtime now to work on it too, on our social media content. We're really cool. trying to help uh, grow our channels and, and the focus is to really help connect and, and, and get to as many student pilots and really aviators as well as share the story. Because um, like I said, you know, my aim, I really want to be able to inspire other students to pursue flight training and just general careers in aviation mm -hmm. and show them that you don't have to come from an aviation background or be super rich to make it happen. Mm -hmm. You have to work hard, no yes. doubt about that, but it is possible. And so through social media, we're, we're, we're trying to, to, uh, to get that up. So if you do want to follow us, shameless plug here, uh, it's at chart it all, um, stuff like that, working on some video, some cool video content stuff like that some fun some fun little uh uh i, I don't really know the, the right word is uh kind of gimmick videos so to no, speak no it's fun it's uh, the entertainment i mean know, we, yeah exactly we've been doing a lot you've seen the office pranks we do lately and everything <laughs> yeah with sectional chart products you know I uh, one of our new products is a uh, is a uh, bow ties uh we Ooh, unveiled those cool. last year at Oshkosh, and uh my my very good friend dave allen he uh yeah, he is, was the inspiration for uh, the bow ties from the beginning because he, he is a bow tie master and you know we released neckties and the first thing he said can you make bow ties and he he was on me for about a year and we made it happen and we actually just a few uh weeks ago filmed a video how to tie a bow tie using sectional chart bow ties so just uh because they're not pre-tied you know right nothing, no they're legit like i get they're, it they have legit real bow ties so as a um stuff, fun stuff as a side note then so trevor i know you've never been on a cruise before right I have, yes. Oh, yeah, you have. Okay, so you know, and anyone, um, Eric, uh, Ray, a few others, Ben, a few others who are joining us on the cruise, there are two formal nights on the cruise. It would be pretty sharp if we all showed up with chartered all bow ties. I'm just like saying, it'd make for a good, a like good group photo. That. We need to Absolutely. look into that. Hey, let's uh, let's take a few more questions, Trevor. Yeah. Mike, who is uh, also uh, alumni with you in the, in the course, and you'll if you remember, Trevor, I know you just joined the alumni and current member Facebook group. Mike's our most recent success story. Just soloed not too long ago. His picture uh, is uh, is in there as well. He said, "What are your degree so, goals at, at Riddle? Short, medium, kind of long term? Is this like we're going sure. all the way to a doctorate? What are we talking?" Yeah, definitely. Great question. Uh, right now, initially, uh, aeronautics and possibly a double major in aerospace engineering. Uh, I want to do a master's, an aviation master's and PhD program. So I am very much of an academic person. Uh, that's like a whole separate side of me. Uh, but I, I do love it. I love research. I love um, all of that, those kinds of things. So the plan is long term to continue on through master's and PhD. Um, simultaneously with the uh, with the law degree uh, because like I said I don't necessarily want to work in aviation law permanently I want to use that as a stepping stone to get into advocacy and and really specifically education aviation education mm -hmm. both at the middle and high school levels uh, for younger students and then at the collegiate and mm -hmm. and flight training levels as well and, yes. and work with uh, the FAA and organizations like that to help uh, you know just keep like you say a good pilot is always learning absolutely uh, keep that going like that that's awesome. So, yes, my definitely, uh, through through PhD for sure. Super cool. Also on Facebook, Jav asked, "Love the horizontal stabilizer behind you. What is the story behind that?" Yes. So that is actually uh, that is uh, I think if I know what you're referring to, this thing up yep. here. Yep. Uh, that's actually a wheat rib. Um, oh, it's a rib. Okay. It is. Yeah. Uh, I actually made that. Uh, the the larger one is actually more recent within the last year. Uh, I went and attended. Uh, EAA's Air Academy camp, uh, which is a fantastic opportunity for students uh, interested in aviation, and we built that there. Uh, and so, fun. yeah, absolutely. This is yeah, this is the home office. So we've got a couple of fun little gadgets around. So I've got you can't actually see it, but I have a little sign that says "Keep calm and fly the plane." Yeah, I love it. Fly the airplane. I love aviate, it. Let's navigate, communicate. <laughs> I love it. Let's take a few, just a few more questions, then we'll honor your yeah, time definitely. here, Trevor. No, uh, you're, Eric. You're good. Uh, Eric is still working on getting his wife to come on the cruise on board. No pun intended. Eric, what if we got her a beautiful VFR sectional chart dress that she could wear? Maybe maybe that would do it, Trevor. Maybe or, we should. Or what about a uh, we have a, a wrap? A, we have a sarong that she could wear too. Oh yeah, I'm I'm beach. not uh, I'm not big into the sarong game, but I am uh, I've I've heard of that before. <laughs> I, I'm not you know don't wear one or use one, but yeah, it's like, I, I neither do I. I got it. I got it. I'm, I'm working on it. I'm trying to, I'm trying to catch up. Um, yeah, all right, is. let's look at some more here. Um, Gary was asking about uh, oh wrapping the planes. Yeah, we, we were talking about wraps earlier, Gary. I think that's a really cool idea. Um, April wants rain boots to go with the rain jackets you're going to make though too. That way we can be just like that decked like out. Like that. We, decked. You know, sneakers are actually 
Wow, may, really? may or may not be in research and development. Yeah, sneakers. that's cool. Be careful so. on that. That's a lot of skews. Be careful on that one. But I mean, <laughs> yes. shirts are shirts are a lot of skews too. But not as many skews as shoes. <laughs> So be mindful of that. Um, one entrepreneur from another. Hey, Trevor, I'll let you kind of wrap it, uh, wrap it up here. Um, what's just share some words of wisdom, maybe for those aspiring aviators out there, those stuck at home, whatever that may be, um, and some just strong parting words, my friend. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, it's you need to find a way to stay motivated, especially right now, uh, now more than ever, uh, and you know, do what works for you, whether that's ground school exam prep, uh, or if it's just like relaxing and having fun and, and learning through, uh, through uh, you know, YouTube and, and stuff like that and through the great content that's available there. Um, once we do get through this period, you know, whenever that may be, uh, definitely, 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 no matter who you are, do some research for, on flight training scholarships. Actually, even now, take the time to write some essays. Um, that, in combination with Charter Law, has been significant help to me um like i said there's so many out there that just go on you so uh just do what you can now to stay focused and uh keep 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 trying to stay positive you know it's it's hard to do uh but that's definitely the best words of advice i can give for now and then just in general with aviation you know don't be afraid to go talk to people go network um and just make stuff happen you know yeah. it's sounds difficult but it's really not you know uh, it, it, there's no secret formula or anything like that. Uh, just go out, start talking to people and, uh, and see what you can come up with. If you have a crazy idea, pursue it. You never yeah. know what it's going to turn into. You know, that's what, uh, where we're at here with this and, you know, good yeah. for you. Absolutely. I love it, Trevor. I'm so excited to, yes, I'm so excited to see you on the cruise. I'm sure I'll see you plenty before that at Oshkosh and you're just down the yep. road. Don't hesitate to swing on by. I've got some crazy ideas I need to run by you. So do stay in touch <laughs> with Office Dad and Amanda. Yes, um, will do. I got to we'll get do. them out of the parking lot and into the idea bin. So that's the <laughs> plan with that. My friend, uh, be blessed. Enjoy the rest of your day. Go fulfill some orders to Sam and everybody yes, else who ordered yes, as I, well and good, send them uh Send them love from M0A as well, please. Thank and Thank we'll, you all so much. Yes, thank you, my friend. We'll see you soon, okay? Perfect. See you soon, man. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Trevor. Bye. Oh, bye, man. What a super kid, huh, guys? Very, very cool. That's why I wanted to have uh, Trevor on. Just, um, I, It's incredible. I mean, I've always been a, an entrepreneur, but not at, not at that level that young. What a, what a super kid. These are the kind of people you want to be talking to, because I mean it. They're going to be the presidents of... Uh, AOPA, MBAA, EAA, whatever uh, that may be. So very, very excited. I want to answer some of your questions. Then we have um, Joel and uh, Controller Bob coming on in a bit. Joel and Controller Bob, if you're watching, um, you guys can uh, Skype in in a few minutes. That'd be super. Um, all that's good. Oh, I got to do our giveaway. I apologize. Bob and Controller Bob, wait a second to Skype in just, just a bit here. I forgot about our giveaway. So first off, most importantly, and I apologize for not doing it with Trevor, um, Trevor is giving away one of his Chart It All mugs. We, we made a new link. I realized the last link was really, really, really long. So now we just did a bit.ly uh, URL shortener. So it's uh, bit.ly forward slash all things aviation. So you can check that out. He is giving away a Chart It All mug. I believe it's an M0A Ocala one. If I'm correct, that's what he was showing. I think, Amanda, if you want to follow up with that. Trevor will handle shipping that again. We're only giving out the link once an hour, so you got to kind of watch if you miss it or anything like that. We're also giving away a Remote Pot 101 t-shirt of the size you need, obviously, an M0A.com t-shirt, and a 2-3 Mike Zulu t-shirt there as well. Our suite of books, like many of you were chatting about earlier, pass your private pilot check ride. Pass your instrument pilot check ride, pass your commercial pilot check ride, and of course the private pilot blueprint. Quick side note, don't let anybody ever tell you your commercial check ride is a glorified private pilot. Look at the, the size difference on those books, okay? This is commercial pilot, this is private pilot. Don't let anybody tell you commercial is a glorified private pilot because it's twice the size book-wise because it's twice the content to really know there. All those books will go together. Are they going with the chart hold, uh, the certificate holder? or? Separate, okay, so separately is the certificate holder here. This was actually, um, this is our lifetime member gift, I believe, this year. Um, M0.com, a good pod's always learning. On the outside, nice blue leather. 
RFID protected too, so that's important. Um, and then all your certificates, medical, that's why I'm keeping mine right now as well. Zips up nice so nothing flies out of there. You throw it in the flight bag. Speaking of flight bag, somebody is going to get an amazing M0A.com flight bag with their name uh, embroidered on it as well. And I just learned during the lunch break too, I know a lot of our drone audience from Opot 101 watches this as well. We're also going to do it, so it's two bags. We'll also do a remote Pilot 101 bag with your name on it as well. So if you uh, win that, uh, let us know which, which of the two you need. If you want a drone bag or a remote Pilot 101 bag or an M0A.com bag. Don't forget also that Max is giving out some great Cirrus swag as well. Well, so the swag continues. We are excited about that. We make that pretty here again with all of that. Let's take a few questions and let's go find uh, Joel and controller Bob here in just a bit. Um, let's see. Mike said my, my laptop needs new stickers. No, I just want a new laptop. The new MacBooks are out and this is my way of rebelling. Uh, until I can get a new one, so you got you to convince Office Dad. He's in charge of the budget on that one. I want the new Mac Pro, MacBook Pro is what it is. Let's see who is uh, texting me. Joel and, and Bob are texting me now. They're watching this right now. Jo Joel, I got your text, thanks. Um, you can hop on in like two minutes, Joel. Let me, let me finish this, then Skype me here. You're not going to miss this. Joel is, I want to be very specific, Joel is my aviation mentor, not my life mentor. You may find out why. We'll see when he comes on here. I'm, I'm teasing. Joel and I crack a lot of jokes. Controller Bob, another phenomenal uh, human being. A few questions came in. Uh, Sam asked if I could make a book on weather. Sam, I'll do you one better. All of April. So, um, starting next Tuesday, I guess, right? Starting Tuesday, we dive into our aviation weather series. So remember from memory on YouTube will be uh, thunderstorms. The next week is icing. The next week is pie reps. The next week is my personal minimums. I can't remember all the podcasts, but then there'll be concurrent podcasts as well to post with that. And inside the online ground school, all our webinars will be weather themed. It is weather month all April. So that'll be super. I'll be doing some public live streams about that as well. Good news too. This will be Amanda's first time hearing this, so this is good to tell you now too, Amanda. That's kind of how my brain works. When Amanda first took the job here, she was like, this man's crazy, because he has a million ideas. Um, the internet seems good at my house. If that all works, I want to reschedule the JFK Junior live stream for in the coming weeks as well. So that, uh, I don't mind just, I'll be sitting down, but at a folding table, but <laughs> it'll be okay. Um, all right. Um, Let's see, Nikki says Ocala is her hometown. That is our hometown too, uh, as well. Great to see you. Um, Gerard says yes on the new MacBook. See, that's my strategy. My sticker's falling off. I need a new MacBook. Um, we can donate this one. Um, give it to Office Dad, like he does any work around here, right, Amanda? Um, all right. Um, let's go ahead. Yeah, Mike, I agree. Mike on Facebook said that kid's going places. Can't wait to see where he is in a few years. Hopefully working for M0A.com. He's going to be our, our counsel on retainer. That's what I'm hoping for. Anyways, um, Controller Bob, Joel, I know you are watching this. Uh, if you guys want to Skype in now, that would be outstanding. I can only imagine how rowdy. By the way, if you are under the age of 18, this would be a good time to leave the live stream because you never know what's going to come out of uh, Joel's mouth. He, maybe he'll behave today. I, I don't know. Look at that. They're calling already. Let's, uh, let's see how much trouble these two are going to... Uh, Oh my, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. How did I know? How, how, how did I know it was gonna happen? What, hey, we're sporting a swag. Look, oh, I got it's a swag. Are the lights really bright where you are? What are you guys doing? I got the studio set up. Yeah, you've got the studio. Whose house is this? Yeah. <laughs> this is the Northern Command of M0A. What are you talking about? <laughs> you got the book in the background. You got the shirts yeah. on. <laughs> Hey, let's let you know. We're all set. You ready? Yes. Six feet. <laughs> I love it. We're in social distancing, baby. You are social distance. The, yeah. the book is between you. It's perfect. If you, if you were to follow us on Instagram, you would see that we are uh, 
it's just, it's no longer an issue anymore. No, it's, we're just gonna we're just gonna deal with it. So. I mean, you guys are always together. You know, yeah. I, don't, I don't know what uh, what your ladies you think your, about your this. Your life coach? Did you say that? Yeah. No, I don't no, know. I, I want to be very specific. Joel is my aviation mentor, really? not my life mentor. Really? Yeah. Did, well, another thing is, you said in, in the first part, people need to go back and watch the first part because I'm sure they can see it on YouTube. But you said something about some beard, and I just want to say, yeah, what's going on? I with am the not doing that. Not this happening. is the quarantine beard. I, everybody, ha you had plenty of time. I told you this morning, you could have sprouted one. Yeah, well, <laughs> I could have gotten a. I remember when you were in, in did a hobo when you were growing up and trick. Well, you probably didn't. That was way before your time. But we'd take a burnt cork and then do our face, and then you'd look like you had a scruff thing going. I, we can cut. That, I can try that goes again. way back. Yeah, it does go way back. Half these people have no idea what we're talking so about. So, anyways, M Zero Nation. Let me get to proper introductions. On the left, you have uh, Joel Weiner. He truly is my aviation mentor. Uh, Joel gave me my first job when I, before I could grow a beard, and before I was six I think, foot four. I think it was the first thousand hours. And and gave me my first thousand hours. He was the only one who called me back after all those resumes I sent out. <laughs> That's what really happened. And uh, and to the right is Controller Bob. You've seen them in many videos uh, before. Uh, oh, by the way, can I interrupt you, Jason? If anything, it's your intro. A uh, very sad day today. I don't what's, know if you're aware of what's going on. No, what's happening? Uh, Sun and Fun got uh, canceled yesterday. I saw that. And if you look in the back, I've got my wow. Sun and Fun shirt ready to rock. Wow, you were ready. Pass your instrument check ride book obviously one day you'll do that which too which i'm which i'm reading surprisingly enough yes you know good but uh, it was 40 40 guys souls got crushed when they officially canceled it because it is spring break for controllers so i, I got you so bob yeah. let, let's start there how many years sun and fun and oshkosh as a controller uh this would have been my 15th year so you're showing your age now i am a little old, so my rookie year was in 1999 Mm -hmm. My uh, team lead was a guy from Tampa Approach. Uh, we call his initials were RD, so they called him Rubber Duck. And um, I was you driving. You can't make this up. No, you can't. I was driving down to Lakeland and um, just a junior guy and thought, what have I got myself into? Yeah. So you, you grab your headset, you go on the tower, planes flying everywhere, Rubber Duck is doing his thing, and I'm plugged in with him. And and you can, and people can um, uh, equate it to your CFI takes you on your thing, goes, all right, land the plane, and you're, uh, and that's exactly what happened. He goes, he unplugs and goes, you got it. And there was that that moment where it's either, oh my goodness, and uh, from then on, the bug was hooked. It was amazing. So it's spring break for controllers. People call it spring break for trial, but they're, you know. <laughs> Amazing. I mean, it's the most fun you can have working ever. Standing, I told my wife, I said, there's things I want to see at Sun and Fun when I, when I was in my rookie year. And mm -hmm. that was a B-17 landing next to me. Check. Because mm -hmm. if you go out there, you'll see us standing next to the runway and doing those kind of things. Mm -hmm. uh, a DC-3 landing next to me. Check. Flight of two people. I mean, it is everything you can imagine. So, yeah. Uh, it's it, it, Sun it, Fun's it, amazing. So, it I was going to fly down there this year. I know. That's the other thing. He, we were going to do it, and you know. It's blown. Now, if you and here's what people who are watching this is going to. We're going to take over the show, Jason. Be I, I, you already have, but keep All going. Right. <laughs> so, if you'll notice, and it, go back to uh, the Oshkosh video when he was flying the John Glenn Baron with Matt, mm -hmm. who is one of your guys, one of mm -hmm. our guys, right? Mm -hmm. And um, if you'll listen to go back to the part where he's flying in the Baron with Matt. I'm actually talking to you guys, which was the most amazing thing ever. So well, you weren't doing much talking. It was, Joel was telling you what oh, he was right. going to do. He I said, hate. Bob, I'm going wide. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was interesting. Here's the backstory behind that. So when you watch the video, you'll completely understand. He told me he was coming in. So I knew it at some point. I didn't know oh. when. And <laughs> it just so happens that uh, the guy that was uh, I was standing behind ran out of spit as it very happens in these things. <laughs> and when that starts to happen, you come in right behind to start talking. And the my rookie who was up in the tower with me at the time was got binoculars and frozen like a wax figure at a museum because he didn't know what he was seeing out the window. And all of a sudden you hear, Bob, I'm going wide. And at that point <laughs> I knew he was in the plane. At that point I had no idea because you can't see his call signs or you're not talking like that. And next thing you know, I'm like, 
Joel's in there. Thank goodness, you know. And there's six guys yeah. in front of me. So. I knew he was. Yeah. He had my back, and that was a big deal. So I, that was I, really under, cool. I understand. Yeah. So and you, hey, uh, can I interrupt one more time? You're doing a great gonna, job at it. You keep just going. Be quiet for a second, all right? Just, just <laughs> gonna be right. Yes. Here's the interesting part about our relationship. I don't know if you knew this or not, but hmm. you called him your aviation mentor, right? Yes. Which I get. I'm on board with that. You're not saying a whole lot, are you? Nah. Okay, I anyway. was told to shut so, up. Yeah, just be quiet. <laughs> this is us in the airplane, by the way. All right? Um, and we've got a couple ideas for YouTube videos that are completely scandalous. So if you're interested, well, they're coming. we're going to Great. We're gonna have to, it's going to be all it. We're looking for investors. That's right. We're looking for investors, <laughs> right? Here's the other. Did I get, I'm off subject, aren't I? Oh, and so anyway, so you're a junior, junior neophyte pilot. And I know that the first time you and I actually talked face to face, we had been talking for many years prior to that. I don't know if you're aware of this or not. So the people watching understand that Jason and I have, I've talked to Jason for a long, long time before he was even, before I even knew what was going on. And he was, he would fly around doing traffic, traffic watch, yep. building time. And I would, you know, talk to him, and we put Jason in the simulator problems, and so people would sit there, and they would get this, you know, what was the M two three Mike Zulu before it was two three Mike Zulu seven one five nine Quebec seven nine Quebec, right. right? So that was kind of um, interesting. So we've been taught. It was interesting how that came about. Five nine Quebec doing the circuit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Do what, what was your question? <laughs> I'm going to punch you. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. You guys are ridiculous. Yeah. I told you, M0 Nation, these two are a piece of work, uh, but it is as much of a piece of work as they are, they are both very, very accomplished uh, in, in what they do. Joel is a very accomplished pilot. Bob is a uh, ready to retire soon. That's how old he is, but very accomplished uh, air traffic controller as well. Oh, Looking to make the transition yeah. into aviation as well. Yeah. Oh, and banner letters. Yeah, it, it, I do. I do what I can. Joel, I want to talk to you because uh, controller Bob is doing what all good controllers do, and just they talk too much. So I want to. I want to hear from from. Yeah, exactly. I want to hear from Joel. Joel, you shared with me on the phone the other day uh, about an iPad story you had, like at, at flight level two three zero or something like that. Oh, that happened. Oh, that one. I've had a couple good iPad stories, um, but uh, we were in the. the the P Baron, the John Glenn Baron, mm -hmm. and I was coming back from Nashville. The uh, boss had a meeting up there, and we were coming back at 210. And I have this lovely suction cup mount for my iPad that sticks up here on the left side, like many of our watchers have. Mm -hmm. And uh, at 210, the outside temperature is about minus five. Mm -hmm. So after 45 minutes of this iPad up there, it falls off. Well, mm -hmm. I'm at 210 in the solid goo over Atlanta, and it falls off, hits the yoke, which turns the autopilot off. Wow. All right. I reach down to get it off the floor, and by that time, I'm in a nosedive 60 degrees to the left out of 800 feet. <laughs> oh, wow. The controller's yelling at me. I'm rolling the airplane back up and climbing back out, um, but it was an adventure, and it all happened within three seconds. I believe it. And you got, AT, you got controllers like Bob yelling at you. Did you have passengers on board? Or were you, were you oh, empty? yeah. I had one passenger in the back, and it was an autopilot. It, it, I'm sure, I'm and sure it, they were thrilled. And Aaron, at 210, there's not a lot. When you move that stick, any, anybody that's tried to fly at a jet or anything at high level, mm -hmm. the, um, as you get higher, it takes more control inputs. Yeah. And uh, your indicated airspeed is obviously less. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a little thin up there, but yeah. it was uh, it was an adventure of about 800 foot in a matter of about 15 seconds. So. Yeah, I, uh, I understand. Hey, a few comments already. I want to share these yin and yang comments here. Sam says, how is ATC so intimidating when Bob is the nicest guy ever? Yet on Facebook, Eric says, controller Bob sounds like a used car salesman. <laughs> wow. Well, wow. Okay. So I am not the nicest guy. A uh, good friend of mine is watching right now. Uh, Jeff in Knoxville. Love you, brother. He, a uh, good friend of mine. He's watching right now. So uh, awesome job for him. Um, nicest guy. We've talked to a guy at Orlando Approach this morning. Awesome. Awesome guy. Um, so that was really, really cool. Mm -hmm. um, super cool people out there. There are a lot of controllers that are doing the right thing and are pr pretty awesome. I can't complain. So. Sure. Hey, Bob, right. how about uh, Mike was asking on YouTube to controller Bob, any emergency story that you can share that new pilots can learn from? 
Oh, He's got man. a few of them. Jeez. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back Woo. off of that one. Uh, you can share. I, I imagine yeah. there's some you cannot share, but anything yeah. that you can oh, share. Can you share the Sky no. Master story? Yeah, I can share the Sky Master story. Um, so if what? that's the good one. I don't, that's, no, the one that's, I, that's the one I remember. Yeah, no, that is a good one. Um, Sky Master was flying. Uh, Heading to Ex explain airport. what a Sky Master is, too, because that's a pretty oh, uncommon sorry. plane. It's a uh, Cessna, looks like 337, a... push-pull, right? Push -pull. A, correct, so Cessna mm -hmm. 337 is the identifier. Yep, everyone quick look it up real quick. I'll wait for you to pull the picture up, and then we'll go from there. <laughs> Keep going. Um, <laughs> he was actually flying an airport near you, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. um, and out of the blue, just said I lost uh, all power, and I need the nearest airport. So most scopes have a button on a scope we call the emergency map. You immediately pull it up and it pulls up every airport that we have in the airspace. Um, just one of those things uh, for that help. And Does that so include you know, private airports, Bob? Everything, grass strips, anything that can land an airplane, we would have that available phone off of you. Guys. Even more than it's on a section. That's correct. Mm -hmm. So most of the scopes don't have all that information simply because it would clutter up too much, and our objective is to separate airplanes, not necessarily look at airports and that people don't normally fly into. Mm -hmm. So we uh, put emergency map up. Say airports due north at uh, you know three six zero at five miles, and I ninety five was right off the nose as well. Now this is before I started taking flight training, and um, I didn't really you know didn't know anything about roads, for example. You know there's a lot of unknown things in regards to um, what is available, what's not available. Obviously, we don't see fields and such. So mm -hmm. pointed him right at it. He descended down. He did a went over top of it, did a 180, and came back. And um, then, of course, dropped off the scope, and the ELT started being reported by pilots, which is soul-crushing. Yeah. I think at that point, you realize how much uh, responsibility that you have when you're talking to pilots, regardless of what they're doing. You have this the ownership and responsibility, uh, which is something that you kind of typically, you know, don't think about until consciously somebody actually disappears on the scope and then you go, oh. Um, watch the Hudson River thing. That's another very popular one. Mm -hmm. And I commend the guy, it was awesome. The way he sounded on the radio um, was everybody commented he was so good on the radio and he was fantastic. He did everything he was trained to do. Mm -hmm. And um, to know, and but having this occur to me after the Hudson River thing, I heard something and I could feel what he was feeling, which had never occurred before in my career. And so it was really, really kind of a, a, a weird thing. I talked to him many uh, months later and I said, I offered up I-95 and he said, roads are death traps because uh, of power lines and you know other obstacles. You don't want to hit a car either. Yeah. And he said, you know, the other thing was that uh, a field was his next option, but there were 10,000 cows in the field. Well, mm. I'm not going to land there. But uh, he walked away. He, um, he said, once you everything down to about 60, 50 knots, things are pretty survivable. Mm -hmm. And we were able to put it between some trees and walked away. And I, I just remember the emotional side of it going, wow, I didn't, you know, it took me, when I found out he actually walked away unscathed, it was quite an emotional thing. I was, I'll never forget it. So. Is it is it true, like, uh, or is this just in the movies, like when we watch Sully, after that happened, uh, his name was Trevor, I can't remember the controller's name, Trevor Hartman maybe, Trevor something, they they took him off duty and mm -hmm. locked him into like a quarantine room and he couldn't have any interaction, no phones, nothing. Is that right. is that true? Uh, not necessarily, there's no protocol for that, but it's purely how you handle it. So something, something like that occurs, um, you need some time. You need some time to just kind of collect yourself a little De bit. Decompress. It really emotionally was, I don't know if you can kind of, it's not really fun in games and we, we have a lot of fun, but there are some times where you just go, wow, I am, um, mm. you know, and, and it, there was a, instances also at Sonic Fun where um, you're out there and you're trying to, you know, do the best job you possibly can and, and amazing, amazing people doing that, same as Oshkosh. And when something unfortunate happens, you hear about or watch, um, it just crushes you in a way you don't realize uh, because you have ownership. So I don't want to get the downside of that thing, but I will tell you this, and the, um, and you have to people have to look on YouTube as well. But there is a very very good friend of mine. Um, we were we worked together, retired last year, had the best save I have ever seen. There's some great saves. Controller doing amazing jobs, helping pilots in distress. This guy was um, he was you have to look it up. He was. Um, 
caught a guy who he recognized that he was in vertigo and hey. saved him. Um, we'll have to find, I'll have to get you the link or we'll find the link. But he actually recognized it was vertigo and walked him out of spatial disorientation, which, as you know, in wow. private pilot stuff, huge. Yep. And uh, even in instrument training, we talk about huge spatial disorientation stuff. And some of your videos online, I hate to be the, you know, that, but sure. are really good about talking about that as well. So he saved him out of there. And I, I walked out and I said, dude, that was amazing, amazing save. So, you know, those are the emergencies that come to mind real quick. You no, know? I totally get it. Joel, what about you and your flying? I mean, any any emergencies you've had that you can share that you're up for sharing? Well, um, things we can learn from? I've only had one engine failure, and that was in 97, and I landed in the TPC parking lot at Salt, TPC Sawgrass. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's my only complete failure. Wow. Um, I've had a 414, which I had to pull back to idle. It was losing oil. Um, always the first flight after annual. Mm -hmm. uh, you know how that works. Um, I've had some rough run engines. I've had autopilots try to nosedive you in the ground. You got to, or a trim run away. I've had that happen. Um, and I got to say one thing. In my initial training, I went to flight safety for the Cheyenne back 12 years ago. And we did all that training. And I, it sticks with me today about the trim runaway and what to expect and what to look for. Um, if the airplane is not doing something right, you need to fix it. Don't, don't let the autopilot continue the problem. Yeah. Um, and we had a problem the other day, and it was a fuel transfer issue because the autopilot kept rolling, was rolling left on us. Rolling left, yeah. And uh, Bob and I were on a trip. We were empty that day. And uh, He's yelling at me the whole time, Jason. I don't know if you I, know. No, never had Joel yell at me, that's for sure. Your, I didn't so, say he was my favorite I mean, aviation mentor. your teaching style? Do you have Joelisms going? Because yeah, when I when I teach the FOI, I just show a picture of Joel and say, don't do not do this. Really? Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. here's, here's, we're rolling left, right? And mm -hmm. he looks over and he goes, what are you doing? I said, I'm not doing anything. It's the autopilot. He goes, well, quit doing that. I'm doing it. And he's just yelling at me. And of course, you know, one of the things is an instructor, and hopefully I'll get to be one someday, right? I want to mm -hmm. be like Joel and Jason. Mm -hmm. And that is, um, what's the first thing you do when you're motoring down the runway and some student starts dragging the foot pedal? Hmm. Get off the brakes. Get off my brakes. Yeah. Brake, quit, right? quit riding my brakes. That's what Joel right, says. Right. That's right. <laughs> with his with his southern with his southern Pennsylvania right. accent, right. though. It echoes <laughs> through your brain, and you never forget it, right? Right. Yeah, and oh, it's just out of control, and you just think, oh my God, you know, what did they do wrong, right? So, um, yeah. Anyway, oh, and here's another one for you. Uh -oh. When you're learning to fly, our first lesson together, uh, we went out and started doing some steep turns, which I know is not normal, but you know, hey, we're going to go with it. Why not? And uh, he's out. Look, of course, what is every first time lesson, or when you're doing straight level, and then you start turns, what is the one thing students typically not really grasp the concept of? Getting in the slow, you know, right? Yeah, keeping it coordinated. Oh, ball flying, right? Oh, geez, let me tell you. He's sitting there. He's looking out the window. He's got four billion hours in an airplane. He doesn't need to know what I'm doing without just, he just knows. Yeah, you feel I'm, it. I'm, he's sightseeing. I'm over there trying, you know, like doing one of these uh -huh. programs. And he starts, and I'm sitting there just fighting the turn and just all over the place. He goes, oh, oh. My ball. <laughs> <laughs> you I told doing? you if you're if you're under eighteen, this may not be an appropriate live stream. Talk about aviation, Jason. Come on. Oh, you're right. And aviation. That's I right. I look over and I see that thing is a ball to the right, and I go, "Oh my God!" Stand on the rudder pedal, get the thing back, get him to stop crying. Just yell. It's, it's that's. So I'm I'm afraid, and you may be this way as well. And I asked why I asked is, I'm going to pick up these things, and the first. Mm -hmm person that I take up and they're completely yacked out on a turn, I'm just going to go, oh, oh, what are you doing to me? Oh, I love it. You know, think about it. I'm serious. People are going to go up and fly. I'm, and you know this is true now. Yeah. And they're going to go up there and they're going to go, there's a ball left. I remember Joel and Bob talking about something. Well, maybe I should, you know, anyway. I get it. Hey, let's, uh, let's switch gears for a second here. Let's talk careers in aviation, because both of you 
um, have fantastic careers in aviation. Joel's still trying to figure out what he wants to be when he yeah, grows up. I, I don't know yet. Bob, you, you've, you've just about got it figured out, and you're about to transition here. Joel, can you start with kind of, first off, where you got started, what you've done, what you do, what you <laughs> didn't like doing what? in what? aviation? You've had every job in aviation. You work for me, so you ought to know. I, I know. I, I know the um, clean the planes. And then, Bob, I want to hear how you got involved being a controller the, as well. Uh, what, this is... The, the story goes, I graduated flight school in May of 94. Mm -hmm. um, CFI, MEI, just the same as anybody would if they got out of ATP or flight safety. Mm -hmm. I, I had 213 hours, I believe. And uh, the secretary of the flight school, her brother, did the traffic reports. Mm -hmm. So we got to know each other. Next thing I know, I'm flying right seat and left seat doing traffic reports with the, the DJ at the time. And uh, that led into, um, on the weekends, I would tow banners for the, or did some training to learn how to fly banners in 1995. Wow. Um, and did that for a summer. And then in November of 96, the gentleman that um, I was flying banners for said, hey, you interested in buying the banner company? So I, uh, my friend Vinny and I got some money together. Bought the banner company, and uh, we did traffic reports in the banner plane, the Cub, which you have many hours in. Yes. Um, we did, and then on the weekends, I'd fly um, the banners. So I was flying seven days a week, which, as you know, you did for a while yourself. Yes. Absolutely. I, I want all the flight time I can get. I, I, I you gave last. it all to me. Thanks. How long did that last, Jason? Uh, maybe two years. You know, it's funny. Everyone lo wants to know how Jason gets so many hours. I just want to give them your cell phone number and say, call this guy. He can he can prove all of them. You flew <laughs> every job that I could give you. Yes. Yeah. I remember you land refuel the airplane and take off with a student on a cross country. Oh yeah. You land refuel and then go fly banners. Well, oh yeah. Or, or fly said, the afternoon traffic. You said Jason would sign off for ten hours on that two-hour flight. Yeah. Right? <laughs> wow, controller Bob. Um, Thanks what, a lot. What? So, so that goes up to 1996. I bought the banner business. Um, bought my first 172 in '98, um, and then since then I've bought. I can't count even how many airplanes I've wore out. Yeah. Seven hundred five nine Quebec. You wore that one. I uh, wore that, that one. Out. I, had to, I just had to pay for all those wear outs. Yeah, yeah, so hey, I, I just want you. And, I want and, everyone to know this. they refurbed twice. I, I bought the traffic plane, which was 7159 Quebec from Joel. You just saw all this money we had to spend on this intergranular, you know, corrosion. Joel, the invoice is coming. It was like 30 grand oh, yeah. to fix all that, just so you I know. Have a, uh, I just talked to one of the mechanics at ATP. Over oh. the years, they've had the same exact thing happen with some of their airplanes. Out of jacks, yeah. In which they, they part out. That's, I believe it. That's, I be it's in the paint shop now, is it not? It is in the paint shop. It yeah. uh, it should be getting stripped today. It's funny. It's not funny, actually. The paint shop couldn't strip the planks. They couldn't get enough masks for their workers with all oh, the coronavirus that, right now. Really? Isn't, that, who, isn't that crazy? Who's doing that paint? What's that? Who's doing the paint? Um, a company out of Fort Pierce. I don't know their okay. name. Sure. Uh, but they were they came highly recommended. Bob, let's talk about you. Um, how did you stumble into being an air traffic controller? Wow, that was an interesting thing. Um, this is gonna sound really hokey, but it's you know kind of one of those things. Um, grandfather died when I was 12. Gave me that old seven band radio with the knobs and stuff, and we were right under the final at uh, Page Field in Fort Myers. Mm -hmm. And planes would come right over top. I would sit on the lawn chair on the back with the radio and watch the planes fly over. Love mm -hmm. aviation, obviously. Yeah. And I uh, thought that would be really cool. And then took a tour of the tower and went, that's what I want to do at 12. Cool. And um, then, of course, you know, how do, what do you, how do you do that? What do you do next? Um, at 16, I said to beat my parents to fly, and they sat me down and said, what are you going to do with this pilot's license? And I went, I don't know. And so we, she, they punted on that one. And um, so then I go to college at that time. The procedure was a little different than today, but uh, I had to take an entry exam and while I was in college and studied because it was the big deal for me yeah. and um, did really well. And knew at that point, I wasn't going to get hired when I got out of college. So it's great. You only needed three years of work experience or four years of college in order to qualify to take the test. 
Wow. That was in Miami, and that was uh, it was pretty cool. So yeah, and then you sent it to Oklahoma City, and stress went right up from there. And yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's not as stress as mine. Well, no, that's right. Well, this is fake. So you know, but no, that's how I got into air traffic. It was it was awesome. I don't have it was. It's a great great career. Um, it's a lot of fun. Um, so people go. Um, my first day at o- in Oklahoma City, which is where they send all the new people. I remember uh, I was you know, wide-eyed and it's all new and you remember things and the guy goes, what's the first thing people say when you tell them what you're going to do for a living? And we all chuckled and laughed and we said, oh, stress. And he goes, that's right. And, and so people go, this is such a stressful job. And I go, well, I mean, stress is relative. Do you have mm-hmm. stress when you fly a plane? Sure. Are you prepared or not prepared? You have stress when you, I mean, there's a lot of responsibility. And I think that's the part. I always call it pressure when you're prepared. And a lot of things don't become stressful, but there are times, and I think a lot of people will agree that when you're listening on the radio, and I'm guilty of listening to too, the guy's just going crazy, or the person you're talking to on the radio is just talking, da 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 da, da and you're just waiting to get in to even do a simple check in, or you're afraid to, you know, do a, a VFR pop up call and stuff like that, and you realize that it's not about um, stress so much as prepared, being prepared to do it. So I, I get it. Hey, uh, Eric's asking over on Facebook, why do controllers have that age restriction? I mean, it's it's way younger than being a pi- airline pilot. I don't know. Um, the, it's interesting, and I don't know if it's. I can only go through experience that I've seen, and there are times where people will get close to retirement, and you can tell that they're done. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you're running shift work for that a period in your entire career. You're working days and nights and occasional overnights and those kind of things. It does wear on you over time. It's amazing I look as good as I do. Um, <laughs> You're so um, but uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, it's a good question. I don't have the answer. They've done. I, I don't know. I, I wish I knew the answer. A lot, it's a big unknown question. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Super. Yeah, hey, Joel, there's a sign behind you. Um, can we go full screen on them, John? What what on earth does this sign behind you actually say? Oh, yeah. Airspeed, Airspeed altitude, brains. You need two out of the three to survive. I, I, <laughs> that That's how you decorate your house, huh? No, we put that up. We put you. that up there just for you. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's, it's that's in right the. Here. It's usually right. on the other side. But we were yeah. trying to find a spinner we could put up there and try to yeah, dress so, up the studio. Yeah, we were looking for so, a spinner. But so I since gave we're away. since we're talking about spinners, one of the requests because I told everyone you were coming on, uh, they have it down here as funny stories about Jason from the beginning of his career. Do, do I open that I can of worms? Me. Well. Yeah. Um, I don't, I've never heard your side of the story other than you calling me and telling me you screwed up. Uh, so, which time? Which time? <laughs> this is day number one in 80 Mike. Day number one in 80 Mike. Um, I shut the uh, hangar door on the spinner of 1180 Mike, and it somehow. It, it was the actual, like the hurricane rod, right? Or whatever. The, yeah, the pin, the door the pin. pin. Yeah, the hurricane pin, I guess. That just, I didn't push it back far enough. Apparently, that's what the yellow lines meant in Joel's hangar. You got to push it at least back to the yellow lines. I thought it meant stop before the yellow lines. That was never in my initial hiring brief. But literally, day one, my very first aviation job, pushed that back, went to shut the door. I'm probably like texting people, got my first aviation job, so excited as I'm shutting the hangar door. And then the pin caught the spinner. And literally, Joel, you don't know this. Um, it hits, so this is the airplane. It hit and actually started to pick the tail up because it was pushing down on the yeah, nose right. uh, so much with that. Uh, I, I stopped the door after the that. The gave away and broke. Exactly. And, um, and go over there and get it because it's over there on the side. It's in where, the back of your studio. Do, John, do you know where the spinner is? <laughs> That's the King Air spinner. Where do we put it? It's here somewhere. Oh, I know. I gave it to you. I know you gave it to me. It's it, John's going to go look for it. it. It's here somewhere. We redecorated that one set. We have a King Air spinner, but that's... Uh, oh, that's all right. But I wanted to hear it from you that, yeah, day one, his day one. first job that I left him go solo. And I didn't get fired. No, it happened. It happened. It was just a spinner. Thank goodness. I thought we were tearing down an engine. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Well, if you, if it had been if it had hit the propeller, yeah, and the door would have stopped, but it broke the spinner off. So yeah, 
So let's, uh, any more embarrassing or funny oh, Jason minute. stories? I heard this for a second. Joel could tell me about this. He wait kept second, getting, wait. have to put new tires on the Cessna. Oh, mm. the tire And we deal. found out why. Why is yeah. that? All right. So I had a air traffic controller friend call Not me. me. Call me from Cecil Field. Uh huh. All right. Your airplane's been over here, landed. Well, at Cecil Field at the time, it just came over from military, and there was a carrier deck painted on the runway, three six left. The first twelve hundred foot was painted carrier deck. Uh huh. Well, every fifty hours, I was putting new tires and brakes on my airplane. I couldn't figure out why. But Jason was over there doing short field landings on the carrier deck. And burn my tires up. Okay, yeah, you, ha you have to, you have to admit. Your face is turning red. And Jason. it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. <laughs> M0A Nation, hear me out. Let me, let me justify this. If somebody painted an aircraft carrier on a runway, aren't you going to try to use it and land on it? Like that only makes sense. Not every day for three weeks. I was, I, I couldn't get it right. I had to get it right. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't catch the tail hook. You know. <laughs> I finally got it right. I was getting good oh, at breaking, yeah, man. Okay, so here's what. Could you do it now? What's that? Could you land on a carrier deck now with the Cessna? Um, in Joel's Cessna, not in mine. I don't want to beat up mine. Mine's too pretty. <laughs> we well, can't find the spinner. It's somewhere here. But we've been moving stuff around, by the way. So Wayne's still looking, but it's all right. It's, it's good. Yeah, no, that's funny. Um, somebody asked if there were phrases. I think Ray on YouTube asked if there were phrases controllers like or like if, if i'm just scanning over there is that correct uh let's see does yeah. atc like or dislike flight following uh because i can get it any time and second phrases atc controllers really wish pilots would not use but everyone does anyways kilo kilo, kilo. yeah tell, tell them why okay um there's we had this we, this morning in daytona yeah we well no yeah we did as a matter of fact um i think Understand that for a long, long time domestically, this is purely domestic stuff. Uh, everything is driven by three characters forever and ever and ever. And then IKO became more of a thing, and we started people started picking up Kilo. And controllers listen in three characters. And there's an older video of you and I a year ago where we kind of briefly talk a little bit about Kilo and, and mm -hmm. how it kind of trips us up when we're listening for things. Mm -hmm. And um, that's tough. Some people I've heard on online will sit there and say something like "flash" or "with you" and um, looking on the fish finder and all these little. That, that's of, Joel. Joel says that. Well, fish, I do say fish finder a lot. I'm trying to say other pilots, but you know, <laughs> anyway, uh, phrases that you, people will say are just purely subjective. Some people don't have any problem. I don't have a problem with anything anybody says in the radio regarding if they're looking for somebody or I'm looking on a fish finder or, you know, these kind of, uh, here's what about, the, what about when Joel the says tally ho, how do you feel about that? Tally -ho. Tally -ho. Now see every, so controllers are just different. I mean, we, some people have very, you know, like human, they're no different than anybody else. Everybody's got their little things that, you know, tick them off or drive them bananas or anything else in that regards. And some people roll with it. And don't get too excited. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I have a theory behind this. You can usually tell if I call up a controller and they're saying tree five, Life, Niner, K back. That's when you know you're like this guy means business. You better like not use any of your cute tally hoes or anything like that. Well, man, I mean business, but I don't say tree or five. Yeah. I'm just telling you, um, I, I have some controllers. Yeah. I know some controllers. Well, I mean, it, and it's it, it's just a subjective thing, and there's no real you know good explanation for it. And some people have a big have no problem with anything that's being said. You know, in Florida, we do tons and tons and tons of flight training, as yeah. you know. So yeah. we get a, a crazy variety of different things. And so you have to, you know, one of the things you teach them, just roll with it. And flight following is also a service that, you know, is really big important. So, yeah, you just kind of go with it because, you know, they're trying just as hard as anybody to try to help you, help them, help me, and help everybody else. I get it. Bob, what uh, what do you like more, tower or approach? Oh, that's a darn good question. Man, that was tough. So I started my career at the center. Mm. Who knows what the centers are. It's the yeah. root control centers, 22 of them in the, in the country. Um, and I always envisioned an air traffic controller working in a tower. That's kind of what I grew up, and that's where my passion was. I will tell you, I have a, a, a lot of fun in the tower. There is not a better place to work airplanes than Oshkosh or Lake Sun and Fun Towers. Those mm -hmm. are the best place ever. Those are my happy places. Um, and But the radar room is tons of fun, too. So if you were to tell me, there are some people I know can't stand one and love the other. 
Yeah. And, it, um, and that's just, it's weird because you, you know, I'm not, I don't want to go to the red room. I want to go upstairs in the tower. And that's just kind of, but I will tell you that um, the appreciation that all my coworkers have for great sunsets and great sunrises and just thankful that you get those things are pretty cool. Or when a thunderstorm's coming through, this happened one time. I was upstairs in the tower. Here comes a thunderstorm. You see the front coming through. And if you go through the weather part of your videos, you'll know what. I'm, and if anybody was Oshkosh last year and saw the front coming through, yeah, the nasty. Oh, oh, by the way, it was the same front that crushed. Hey, the way, wow, wow, you're gonna go there? You're gonna go there? So, hey, anyway. tie your airplane down when you park it. Okay. Well, you know the real story. I do. I, do. <laughs> anyway, so, I was there. I was yeah, there. Yeah, you the lived tower. it. <laughs> You're in the tower and you hear, you see the front coming, which is the most amazing thing ever because you know you're safe. And here's a guy on a final, and all of a sudden, out of the cloud spins a little funnel cloud. Yeah. Right there on the field. And he looks over, his eyes get big as frisbees, and he goes, Tornado! <laughs> I was clearing the guy for land, you know, clear the land. And the guy overheard my buddy screaming, Tornado, and he goes, Oh, we're going to abandon this approach. I'm like, Great idea. And it's this thing goes, right by us we're all sitting there going Ooh, it's a little late to abandon ship now and but uh the tower is really really a lot of fun um the writer room can be a lot of fun too but it can be it, that's thing you get real sporty too because there's mm -hmm. so many things going on in the writer room that are a lot different than the tower so, i bet i bet yeah. joel uh what about you as far as you're a man with many jobs you're a corporate pilot you're a flight instructor you're a banner towing pilot you're just an all-around aviation entrepreneur What's your favorite out of all those things, though, that you get to do? Flying my vagabond up the beach at 300 feet. I, I understand. You've been there with me. I've We've been there with you. Fun. That is some fun, fun flying, no doubt. That's, that's my favorite. The, um, as a, a job, I like to go, I get to go to a lot of different destinations. And over, uh, I flew for Firehouse Subs for 11 years. And in that 11 years, we, we traveled 38 of the 50 states. Wow. Doing store meetings, uh, did a lot of vacations with the, the group and uh, flying with the owners, flying with the marketing team. You get to see the different sides of it. Mm -hmm. um, they have sold the airplane and uh, in, in this market right now. I sold the airplane in January. Oh, you look, look real smart right, right now. And uh, we're not buying any airplane in the near future. I understand. Yeah, they don't even have restaurants open right now. So, yeah, they're, uh, but um, it's, it's fun to fly to a destination. Mm -hmm. um, I'm flying for a medical firm now, and last two weeks ago, I went to the Bahamas for five days with a group of people, and it's just fun to go to a destination and get to experience the aviation, and um, I left the Bahamas four days before they quarantined and shut it down. Wow. And the grocery stores there and people there are doing the same that they are here, mm -hmm. except when you shut down the transportation in the Bahamas, you shut down the Bahamas because yeah. it's 90% tourism. Yeah. Good so, point. So let, let's talk about that from a corporate standpoint, Joel. Um, someone hires you to fly in the Bahamas. You're staying in the Bahamas. How does that work as a corporate pilot? You're not they, home a whole lot. They put it, you up. It's fun whenever you got an extra seat and somebody can go with you. You mm -hmm. can take your girlfriend with you. You can do that. Um, there's been many trips where she's got a job too or their airplane's full. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, you get to read Jason Shepard books whenever you're bored. Sitting at a hotel that room. That was riveting. <laughs> but, um, but in the same thing, it, you get to meet a lot of different people, a lot of different walks. Um, mm -hmm. Over the years, I've flown for real estate people. When that went out, I flew for restaurants. Um, and the restaurant's out. Now I'm flying for medical business. And we're flying right now, flying doctors from different locations. Um, matter of fact, we're, Bob and I are flying again this afternoon. Yeah. Um, but so, as times change, the mission changes. But that's the thing, Joel. I mean, we deal all the time with helping people either get into careers, make career changes. Where, are you, where do you find these gigs? I, I imagine you're not sitting around on LinkedIn jobs looking for doctors to fly. No, the, the, uh, they find me now. now. Exactly. But how did that happen? How did you get to that point? I, I lived at the airport like you did. Yeah. And now it's hard to explain to some of these people, but... Um, you came to me and didn't matter if you were flying an airplane, washing the airplane, sweeping the floor, or taking the trash out. Mm -hmm. You were there every morning at 6.45. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for that's true. two and a half years. Yep, that's true. And when you changed your college and wanted to go somewhere else, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, you're leaving me? Yeah. 
and uh, the rest is history. Yeah. You know? uh, I'm sweeping his hangar. But now I've got this guy here working on his instrument ticket, sweeping the hangar, washing the airplane. He's a young Jason Shepard, you know? That's a Look bad video. We're hey, not hey, going to put that out, by the way. He's even saying. doing plumbing and electrical work. I'm sure. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Now I have no electric on one side of my hangar and the toilet leaks. Wow. That's exciting. <laughs> I didn't think I was any good at it. I just said I was going to do it. Wow. <laughs> hey, Jason, quick question. Anything. Oh, uh, maybe we say Michael, congratulations on passing your knowledge exam. It's an awesome yep. job. 82. That was, I see uh, a bunch of those. It's awesome. Job. Yeah. Uh, another quick question on there was, how do student pilots handle ATC? Ooh, good. Was, you want to take it? Yeah, that was a good question there. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I find, well, this is going to be a big surprise, but working on radios wasn't an issue for me when I was flying. Mm -hmm. But it's becoming, it, I've realized it's such a challenge for so many people who don't have radio experience um, in air traffic. And I just thought, huh. And that's a question I always wonder, how did a student, and, I, and the answer is your CFI should help you kind of navigate through that part of it and get them a good, C I would think, and you didn't do this to me, but get them on the radio as much. Cause you know, how sometimes CFIs will come over top mm -hmm. the, and especially when you feel like the controller is a little, you know, getting mm -hmm. angst up or is under a lot of pressure. Yeah, let the wanna, student talk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's, and it's intimidating because you're afraid to say the wrong thing. And, and you know, I there's the answer is just be just keep grinding away. Be as, you know, as as we try to be patient, you guys, pilots need to be just don't give up. Just keep plugging away at talking to us and the life. And you'll get it. You'll get it if, if sooner rather than later. If you get afraid, you know, don't worry. It's just me on the radio. Just look at, you know, just hey, it's just me. Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, right. it's hard, but I and I recognize and I see the stress. Many people say it's more stressful talking on the radio than it is flying the airplane. Sure, it can be. It's right? intimidating. Yeah. It can be. Yeah, especially uh -huh. if you got an air, an air traffic controller that, you know, yeah, it's, like that guy. Listen, it's it's just pressure, you know. <laughs> when you're when you, in, and I think by and large, I, you hear controllers have pressure, pressure, pressure. That's why I call it pressure. A lot of demands on their time. A lot of demands, this, this, this. And then you watch one of the videos we talked about, you know, what I'm ready to turn a guy on the final and some guy comes over and checks in and makes a big dissertation and, and just adds like, oh my God, I've just missed, you know, these kind of things. And it gets frustrating sometimes. How mm -hmm. you handle the frustration or the pressure is key in being successful. Some people are good at it. Some people need work, obviously, and just like pilots, you know, talking on the radio. So the best advice I have for them is just keep plugging away. You'll eventually, you know, we're there to help. It's a service thing, you know, and, and it's not, it's a one, it's not a, it's a two way street for certainly, but I'm not, you're not there because I'm here. It's the other way around. So. No, I, I totally get it. And I think if more people did things like tower tours and stuff, it would make yeah. uh, talking to ATC yeah. way, way easier. Joel, yep. what do you do to kind of ease, ease your students into talking on the radios? Obviously, Craig is a class Delta, so that's great, but uh, they um, may be intimidated the, to go over to Herlong, where that seems like the wild well, west instead of pilot control. Herlong or is usually where I solo most of them. Yeah. Um, but I keep a scanner in the hangar. Mm -hmm. And... Anytime anybody's at the hangar, I've had students come and sit at the air, airplane and listen to the scanner for hours. Mm -hmm. um, and that, if you hear it, the communication, um, it works a lot better. And here in Jacksonville, anywhere you live in town, you could have a scanner at your house and get 90% of the air traffic control. Oh, yeah. And listen mm -hmm. at your house. LiveATC.net is another one. People yeah, I saw another a few word. people mention that earlier. Someone want to know, Bob, if you listen to LiveATC.net. No, I do not. He is the live. <laughs> he is live. <laughs> well, and and there was a, here's another one, uh, and this is just for interesting. I don't know how much you're into the propping websites, but a lot of people do flight sim stuff at home. Oh, and yeah, think, big time. You know, Huge. Uh, I got good friends of mine to do it you know, a lot, and one of the things they do is a website called VATSIM. Yep. Very familiar. Like, Very familiar. And um, guys will go on there online, and you have people who want to be controllers trying to talk to people who want to be pilots great way to learn to communicate with you know learn to be a pilot communicate with people trying to learn to be you know in a very non you know pressure situation that, to me that was huge and i did some i'm not i'm guilty i flew on that for a while and That's talked cool. to you know yeah so it was really interesting I, I, this is going to online stuff but cool. i was flying into memphis virtually 
And Virtually. Wow. Well, the guy, the guy, That's a long ride to 172. Yeah, it was. <laughs> and I was on the, we were on the Dow one, and the poor guy from Australia was trying to back there. And next thing I know, I'm 60 miles north of Memphis. And oh, he, wow. He got a crash course on what it's like to be a controller and keeping it tight, keeping it tight, you know. Yeah. Back to the back of the box and trying to, you know, because space, uh, you know, a mile on final is extrapolated over time when you're not really hammering it in tight. Yeah, it can be you know it can be a problem. So yeah. Absolutely, I love it. Hey, Missouri Nation on YouTube, on Facebook, this is a great time to ask your questions uh, to Joel, to Controller Bob. Uh, ask those away, more than happy to uh, take those. Joel, let's go back to you. What's some advice? We have a lot of you know student pilots in training here, gearing up for some solos, some knowledge tests, some check rides. What's some advice that you give to students in their training, especially right now with the coronavirus going on? Let's too. go back to a question. A lot. A question that came up, uh, B.J. Hamlin asked a question a few minutes ago. Um, the important as a, as a student being proficient in the pattern or maneuvers? Good question. Well, the pattern is one specific thing. Maneuvers are another. The important thing is airspeed control and altitude control. Yes. Um, and you need to learn that if you learn it out doing maneuvers, slow flight, steep turns, um, those same maneuvers, slow flights, just a slow flight on descent, mm -hmm. all right? Your steep turns, you're going to do medium bank turns in the pattern, except you don't do a whole turn, you do 90 degrees at a time. Yeah. Um, and it's correlating the maneuvers together is what is hard to pass on to the student. But um, that's, it's airspeed and altitude is what you're controlling. Mm -hmm. you three things to do, pitch, power, and airspeed. Yeah, you're so I'm right. Ask you a question though, and, and Jason, you may know the question as well. Do you think examiners, when they take people out for their check rides, are watching to do the maneuvers and make sure they do well, or how they handle themselves in a pattern? You know, for example, if you go into a, a towered airport as yeah. during your check ride, what do you think that the examiner? I mean, I'm not obviously an examiner, but. I'm just curious as to what you're thinking. Is it has to be both because they're still holding you to ACS guidelines, right? So can I do it plus or minus 100 feet, plus or minus 10 degrees heading, these sort of things. But what Joel is saying is, can I take, by the way, ACS is the minimum. It's the worst I can do and still become a pilot. Right. Can I take that? And then can I be safe in the traffic pattern? Because what the ACS doesn't say is now there's four other planes in the traffic pattern and you got to do a left 360 or a go around or whatever it is. Right. The ACS is right. just this perfect scenario, but we know in the real world there's a disabled plane down the runway and we're diverting and all these things happen. So it's a combination of both operating within ACS and exceeding it, but making smart real world decisions based on the circumstances thrown at you. Right. So it's interesting because when you go out and you solo for the first time and everybody's got their solo story, right? And you got yours and I remember mine it was not too long ago. And then you go up by yourself and you go, I'm going to practice some maneuvers, right? Because that's what you do when yeah. you first start learning. And you go, ah. Oh. And then you want to get, do I go back to the pattern and just bang the pattern out or do I go back and do, keep doing maneuvers? It's always an interesting kind of juggling thing. And I will say this on a completely lighter note. He tells me, make sure you stay student pilot. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. like, oh, no. I am not staying student pilot. I went to the tower, and That's then right. I said, Zit, and, and then I, yeah, cause he the goes, other controller says, yeah. see if that's a student pilot. You're not going to fly my plane unless you stay student pilot when you go out. I'm thinking, there's no chance I'm staying student pilot. <laughs> and it, we, it's interesting, too. It, it, was, it yeah. was fun. Well, then he jumps in an airplane to see if I'm staying student pilot when I'm getting, you know. I follow you around the yeah, pattern. Yeah, you follow me around. And, that was, that's before the ADSB transpond. That's bad day. I understand. All right, let's let's take let's take some questions here real quick. Yeah. Uh, YouTube. Sam says, "Do controllers get mad or annoyed when pilots say standby?" No, I mean not really. No. Uh, I don't remember that very often. I can't remember the last time I said something to pilot. He goes, "Standby." Uh, I just I can't can't remember that. That or if yeah. you're going to New York and they're giving you another clearance. You need yeah. you need a second to get your pen and pencil. Yeah. You, yeah. you will just yeah. Yeah, you're right. Okay, right. one on YouTube, one D Graham's the username. Uh, when when you say, I guess talking about controllers, when you say fly to and report a three mile left base for runway one zero, to what point should I fly before port reporting and turning? Joel, how do you do it? Someone tell someone tells you a three mile left base. I'm gonna go on um assumption that that's a three mile left base and then report three miles. So three miles is what they're looking for. 
So you're going to be a, a 90 degree angle from the runway, three right. miles three out, miles. basically. Three miles out, yeah. 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 Perfect. Now, a lot of times in VFR towers, report a miles is but merely a reminder that you're out there. Many, many times the control as a default will say report two miles, for example. And that's just to remind, you know, keep, you know, remind them that you're out there, but if I get distracted, you're going to help me but I'm going to do my best to remember you. You know, that's kind of a reminder that as you get with closer to the airport, things start getting a little more, you know, interesting because then you get into the pattern. Two miles kind of keeps you outside of that. Then I can say two mile left base, report two mile final, these kind of things. So I remember, you know, more often than not, the controller is very, very good at remembering, oh, I got this guy out there, two, three miles, clear to land. And therefore you don't have to issue the, the report of two miles, but that's what that's for. Mm -hmm. Super. Uh, Adam Saylor, one of our phenomenal lifetime members says, I hope these guys are on the cruise. They seem like a ton of fun. Is that accurate? <laughs> I don't know if we want that. Well, because <laughs> I can tell you right now, we flew by Cocoa Beach and they're all anchored offshore yeah. right now. Both Disney cruise ships are offshore. There are four in port. There are four up here at Jacksonville. And there's no cruises. Yeah, we're just gonna be a pontoon boat, Jason, and you, yeah, Joel. Joel uh, <laughs> I have been on Joel's boat, and uh, and Joel sold me my first boat. It was called Shrimp Skimpy, and that was, and then I, and then and then he bought it back from me. Wait, I forgot about Wait, Shrimp Skimpy. Shrimp Skimpy plane? was the name of my first boat. Boat? What's that? You bought his plane and you bought his boat. I bought his plane and it, well, and he bought the boat back from me. It was Shrimp Skimpy. You still have? Where's Shrimp Skimpy now, Joel? I can't remember what happened to Shrimp Skimpy, but it, it was sold. That was my first boat. Wow, had a, lot of, a lot of good memories of the old St. Johns River. Wow. wow. <laughs> All that 15 horsepower Johnson, you know. <laughs> Got a lot done. All right. Um, is it true that controllers don't like hearing the phrase with you? It's no, I haven't had anybody go. I have nobody that I know goes, Oh my god, I wish they would never say that. I say it when I'm flying. Yeah, we're with you at flight level 210 or whatever, whatever yeah. you know. Some people have, we gotta remember though, what you're talking about are personal preferences that drive some people crazy. That's like people, saying yeah. tree and fight. It just, it just, it's kind of like there's no, there's no book that's that way from now on. You shouldn't say this. You mean say what you're gonna say and. and okay, but that that relates perfectly to Richard's question. What is the number one pet peeve of controllers and pi that pilots do over and over? Wow, that's a good one too. Yours pet though, Bob. Peeve. What's your pet peeve? Is it when Joel says tally ho on the fish finder, or what is it? Oh, oh, okay. Here's my pet peeve. All right, that's good. Here's 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 my pet peeve. Guys who <laughs> he's gotta okay. he's gotta think about Got this. No, well, no, I know it exactly correct. We started hanging out together and I said, you know what drives me crazy is when people who are VFR decide to fly the instrument approach on their own without talking to anybody. Oh, this is a good one. So here I am vectoring practice approach, practice approach, it was a practice approach. Saturday morning? I don't no, I don't work Saturday. Well, this was years ago. Yeah, right? well, whatever. whatever. Doesn't matter. And um, I'm right, and here is this poor Cessna driving down the localizer. Talking to him. Talking to me, clear for the approach. All of a sudden, some VFR target, I don't know, we're doing 180 knots, comes careening by on a base leg. And I go, traffic, two o'clock, four miles. It's, and it, he looks like he's going to join. A, I mean, he set up perfect base. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And beautiful. Front, oh, beautiful. And vector to final is amazing because I wasn't doing it. And he right in front of the other Cessna. And I'm going, I'm losing my mind. Why in God's name is this guy this careless to stand in front and shoot an approach without, I mean, he's cutting the guy off. I just, and he goes, Bob, it's me. It's all right. It's just, it's just me. And I sat there and went like this. I was, I, with my pen in my hand, went. <laughs> I just, oh my God! It ticked him off that morning. It pissed. I was. The Cessna was doing ninety knots. So I, I was doing a buck so eighty. I get on a break. I immediately <laughs> called the phone. and Go, what are you doing? And he started, He was giggling like just like this. Just and, like this. Oh my! So pet peeve for me would be, you know, if, you, if you're gonna shoot, join the final, and you're gonna shoot your own practice approach. You know, you're really being. It's really kind of a dangerous thing. Hey, is it is it true there are no practice approaches right now? By the way, controller Bob. No, that's not true. Uh, the guidelines were that, to the extent possible, that workload is permitting that they'll do these things, but it is not going to be one it, of those. It's on the workload. It's on a workload basis, and because the workforce is such stripped down right yeah. now, very very difficult to get those things. Done. Gotcha. Now, so now, along with ATC being stripped down, 
most of the flight schools are thinned oh, way yeah. out. Um, and a lot of the career pilots have taken a break. Right. I know here at, in Jacksonville, the JU program and yeah. the ATP program, there are still flights every day, but there's not 25 airplanes out there in the morning. Now that, it will be one of the situations where I wouldn't necessarily expect it right now. Mm-hmm. But um, the first thing in the morning when there's nothing going on and you want to do something, you know, I flew up to Columbia last week and the guy was doing a practice approach, did a practice approach. So it's possible. I'm just not saying, I wouldn't say it's service as normal. Let's go up and do five of them. I got you. Let's, um, we're coming up to the end of our time. Let's wrap with a one more question for each of you. Uh, Bob, I got your question here from Eric Davis. What advice can you give a student pilot nervous to speak to ATC? Call me and we'll talk it over and we'll go fly the flight together and we'll talk about it. Um, I love it. <laughs> I, love it. Uh, I mean, it, it is intimidating. I would say um, that's a good question. How would you tell us to do pilots nervous about talking to controllers? Um, try just to just rehearse what you're going to say is always a good thing. And then. When I took my daughter flying, I had she was nervous about radio. I said rehearse, and so she would say it to me. And and um, it happens to controllers too when they talk to pilots for the first time. So there, there are some controllers out there that are scared to talk. Oh yeah, my first. There's now there's a guy in Atlanta Tracon who is an amazing controller. The minute he, the minute I saw him, he was he. I knew it was going to be great, and he is fantastic. <laughs> one of the best controllers I've ever seen. Um, I trained him in the tower. First time he's up there, he's nervous as can be. No airplanes. He's pacing around. Just doing one of these. I was like, calm down, dude. You're just killing me. And he's in the tower. He's all keyed up. And it's, it's his time. And it's his first time he's going to talk to an airplane. And here comes a jet down to final. I said, all right, what is, I'm going to pretend with the pilot. We're going to rehearse this. This is the whole about the rehearsing thing. All right, what are you going to say? All right, I'll, I'll be the pilot. You tell me what you're going to say. All right, uh, we're clearing a golf. We're going to Alpha 6. And he goes, uh, uh, taxi via. Uh, 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 he's doing the same. He's nervous, right? I said, just calm down. It's just me. We're rehearsing this. So we do it again. I said, we're clearing off a golf. We're going to Alpha 6. He goes, all right, taxi via. Bravo. Hotel to the ramp. I go, perfect. Do that. It's great. Guy comes. Hey, he lands. He pulls off. Hey, we're here at golf. We're going to Alpha 4. He goes, uh, and he vapor locks on me. I go, dude, we rehearsed this. And he goes, I'm sorry. And the, and the captain, who was kind of role reverse, goes, don't, you know, just, I know, I know. Anyway, you get the idea. I got it's you. Hard. Joel, last question for you. And then office dad sitting over here ready to prank me. He's going to fill in so I can go get another cup of coffee here in a bit. Okay. Joel, last question for you here. What plane would you like to fly that you haven't flown? That's from Shane on YouTube. Well, you and I were talking, and then you got to go fly the DC-3, and I'm still a little jealous of that, by the way. You know. You know? So that's you, you you're guys, one ahead of me on that. One day, Joel, one day. You know. I want to fly a cub, that's on my list. Oh, I know I know where you can fly one. I I, I know where I can come get one. I'm on my way. We'll be there uh we can be there in about forty eight minutes. All right. That sounds good. Hey Joel Bob, thanks for joining us guys. You're always uh, a hoot. We'll have to do more of this. Yeah, yeah, maybe uh, next time we'll work on that. <laughs> All right. Seriously hey, though. Um and, and the next time we do this, have Trevor send us some uh, boxer shorts from uh, the yeah. Chartered All. We want some Chartered All boxers yeah. so we can wear. You got it. That, <laughs> that, much, that much we can do. Well, super, <laughs> super, my friend. We'll catch you guys here in just a bit, all right? All right, take care. Thanks, guys. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I had to hang up on them. They just kept talking. Ken Heron is already calling. Hey, this is the office. Let me introduce you to Ken Heron. Well, let's say hi. We got to say hi to Ken Heron first. Oh my goodness, Ken! Look, Ken, I prepared. I'm wearing two watches. <laughs> Ken, Are Ken, we live? This is. On? Is everybody seeing us? Yeah, you're 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 live and ready to rock and roll right now. That's how exciting oh, this is, man. Ken, Ken this Let is me just the, tell you. This is Let me just M0A I, office dad I, Wayne, who you've been talking to. Oh, okay. Hey, what, how you doing, Wayne? What a good-looking guy. Wayne is going to fill in for me so I can go get a cup of coffee. He even brought me lunch real quick. I just need two minutes, but I'll let you say hi to, to the M0A and Nation. Take care of Jason every once in a while. You got, you got to do what you got to do. Don't put anything okay. in my water. Oh, that's your water. Don't do anything. Ken, keep him in line. While you, I'll you, be got back and t- you got it. I just have to say I really enjoyed the Joel and Bob show and their wacky antics. Well, I really enjoy you're watching that. Only, you're, you were right there with them. I, I imagine that we're <laughs> going to keep the laughs going. I have a well, lot of I, questions for you. 
Okay. Uh, but, but for now, you're stuck with Office Dad for two minutes, and you yeah, got go a couple hundred copy. people on YouTube and Facebook, so don't embarrass me, okay? okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll just watch all your viewers diminish as they realize it's a drone guy. No, no, get out of here. Get out of here. All right, wait, let me go make a cup of coffee. Bye, bye, pilot people. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. How you doing, man? Good. How are you doing? I'm excellent. Thanks for inviting me on your shindig. Yeah, man. We working that out or are we good to go, John? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I think we are good to go. John's just working out. Jason walked out and took everything with him there. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So, so what, one we of the first questions I have for you, me and Amanda were talking about today, where do you call home? I'm in a little town called Huntingdon, Tennessee. Oh. We have one traffic light and a Walmart and more cows than people. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a teeny tiny, tiny town. It's it's uh, probably 30 minutes east of Jackson. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Hey, can you hear it when I do this? Absolutely. Okay, good. Just want to make sure that my sound effects are in there because that's very important. As you welcome me to the show with oh, oh, studio audience, stop. You shouldn't. Have. Oh. You're going to need that a lot with Jason being on, too. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's going to be on my stream later on tonight, in fact. That's right. Uh, What's that? Uh, it's a 7, 7 p.m. Central. central. But we do we do a little news segment, so he'll be on right around 7:30 p.m. In fact, while I have you on and everybody's watching, I'll just show you my my setup here. This is this is camera two. Hi, hi. And and so uh, my encoder here on the big huge monitor. I have to do something, and I usually call Jason just before the show because I have to add him into my encoder. And you might see uh, me do that as I just click. A button here, and I do that, and then I do that, and then you should be able to see yourself. Oh, that's okay. Office dad. So there we go. We're fine. That's Hey, Ken, kick him out of here. Kick him out of here. Hey, get on out of here, man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I love it, Ken. All right, I'm back. I got my coffee. Okay. I I am good to go. We are properly socially distanced, Ken, which is. It's, yeah, how how are you guys uh, dealing with all that? You got most are, of your company. We're on, we're on a stay at home uh, for thirty days, effective tonight at midnight. So I will be streaming uh, on your show tonight from the spare bedroom. It's gonna be, it's gonna be very exciting. You know? Oh, I don't get the fancy set. No, you don't get the fancy set. It'll be streaming, <laughs> streaming into the into the bedroom. So, let's <laughs> let's dive into this. I'm sure Wayne did a yeah. glowing introduction. He is our office dad. This is the one and only Ken Heron. If you have not watched Ken Heron's YouTube videos and you would like to laugh uh, uncontrollably, um, <laughs> this is this is the guy to do it. I mean, he he is the founder of Pigeon Jerky. Um, I mean, I'm sure that'll play a few times during this as well. You know. I mean, uh, uh, now available uh, pigeon jerky in our in our <laughs> online store. This isn't actually a pigeon. Just to let everybody know, there are all. Is that really a pigeon? No, it's it's. Uh, I sell the bags and the labels as a. As it a, really a, says Heron's. Was it say Heron's Homestyle? Oh yeah, Heron's Homestyle. Yeah, Tennessee yeah. pigeon jerky. <laughs> I don't know how it became a thing, but it, it's a thing on my channel. I know exactly how it became a thing with your uh, clever pigeon jerky <laughs> ad. It's yeah. it's outstanding. So Ken is the resident drone expert uh, with with all things. Your channel has blown up, by the way. It is. I'm, you, I'm pretty fortunate for to to have the viewership that I do, being the. A, yeah, the, I mean, I mean that in a good way. Right. It is, it is outstanding. Uh, the the viewership you've gained Thursday Night Live. If you want to watch something really funny tonight? Ken can dance. He is a very, very talented uh, young man. Have so. I ever danced? I don't think I've ever. I don't. I don't think I've ever stood up. No, you never stood up. But you kind of. I don't. No, I better not do it now. Yeah, yeah. We don't want to see your legs or anything. Let's not. Yeah, you no. know, for the sake of the viewership. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, um, talk to us, Ken, a little bit. How did you get started in all this? This started out as photography and broke into drones. How did all this, where did Heron Madness come from? Well, I have a radio background. You have the voice and, and the face for it. <laughs> oh, yes, trust that, yes. Uh, so I was working at a little radio station here in Huntington, Tennessee, and we had a YouTube channel, and I wanted to get our radio station uh, was purpose built to look like a barn. The call letters are W E I O, as in E I E I O. Uh, <laughs> the it. van is is 
uh, an arrow star painted like a cow. It's a whole theme. Um, so I wanted to get some aerial shots of the barn for yes. some videos we're doing on YouTube. And uh, I had one of those little heli toy helicopter things, and I taped a, a little keychain spy camera to it. <laughs> that, that didn't work, of course. And yeah. so my friend at the time, Sarah, uh, bought me a Hubson, and I still have uh, a version of it. The first two, the first one she gave me, I flew too high and it blew away. Uh, <laughs> So I tried to replace it without telling her that I did that because yeah. I didn't break her heart. Yeah. So I did that, flew that one, it flew away again. So <laughs> this third one that... I did that, but this little Hudson with a camera yeah. on it. I imagine... But of course, no gimbal, nothing. I haven't flown this in a while. So I it's super. You, it still works, you had but, it ready to show yeah. though. It's perfect. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so uh, the girlfriend's long gone, but I still have the drum. <laughs> so uh, after her, that. Her, lo her loss. That's how I look at it. <laughs> oh, that's the way I feel about it. <laughs> I totally get uh, it. I but, totally uh, get it. After, after that, uh, now you guys, you guys are, are way above my pay grade. You guys are like talking about, you know, when I bought my first boat. <laughs> you know, and they're like, you know, I own a Cessna. Which Cessna is that? Was that the Wednesday Cessna? Yeah. So, uh, you're out of my tax bracket. So the very first drone I had, I had to like sell plasma or something, yeah. or get my you know tax refund. I bought a a Phantom Two, which is the the forebearer of mm. this. this. Is a yeah. Phantom Four Pro. That's how I got started. And that was back in 2013, about 13, 14, six years or so. Yeah, no, I, I totally get it. So let's, let's talk about, though, because you're right, we have a very different audience. So, I mean, a lot of our Remote Pilot 101 audience is watching this. A lot of our man pilots are watching this right now, fascinated by drones. Ken, how somebody can get started into drone flying? Where would you send them? If someone comes to you, sends a message, Ken Heron, I think you're hilarious. I think you're cool. I want to buy a drone. Where are you sending them? Uh, well, yeah, there's, there's actually two distinct flavors of drones. Um, the first one is photography drones, and then there are FPV drones, which is an entirely different thing that I recently got started. And do you, do you FPV I, I at all? I, I haven't done any yet. No, I want to dive into it, though. Some racing, so everything okay. else will be cool. Okay. If, if your audience has seen some of these crazy um, flights yeah. of buildings and just anything that's really fast like that, that's an FPV drone, first-person view, where you wear the goggles and you fly. Um, but if you want to get started, I would just get a non-GPS stabilized. I mean, this this one's the price in this has a comma in it, but that's no problem for your audience with the, <laughs> the boats and the yeah. So uh, <laughs> get one of these to start. That's fine. But if you want to just bippity bop around your house, get a little toy drone because yeah. it's actually more difficult to fly with a non-GPS stabilized drone. Good and then point. once you get your chops on that, then move on up if you feel like you want to. Yeah, very good point. I want to. Oh, catch everybody up to on how Ken and I actually met. So we launched Remote Pilot 101. Uh, Ken happened to be a customer, didn't know who Ken Heron was. And <laughs> one day, Matt, who, who at the time was heading up the support team, came over and said, Jason, we received this really odd support ticket today. It's from this gentleman who did a review of our course. And he, he said he just wanted to send it in to let us know that he did it. And it was Ken Heron, and I went to watch the video, and you all may have seen this video. It is the reason I wear two watches to this day, <laughs> is thanks to this man right here. Because that, uh, what's that video up to now? Two or 300,000 views last time I checked. It's, it's, quite a, it's quite a popular video. He did a review it's of so Remote awesome. Pilot 101, and the main selling features, Ken, I don't know if you remember this, were that Jason wears two watches, and that you would get lost in his crystal blue eyes. Those were your words. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, you are a striking man. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, for, you know, men and women alike, uh, uh, look at you as uh, quite the human specimen. You know, uh, you, you're, you're striking. And I met you for the first time at an event called Spin Up that yes. us drones put on. Um, yes. And uh, you were there. And not only are you good looking, but you smell fantastic. <laughs> I mean, if, you, if your audience ever has an opportunity to smell you, <laughs> that's something you that's won't the selling forget. point that is yeah. the selling point right there i'm oh, telling you yeah. so that was but, how, that's how i was first introduced to you ken yeah now now speaking of of your 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 deep uh uh blue eyes 
yeah. that are like uh, the summer sky, I <laughs> I put together a little song for you. Would you like me to sing it for you? I, I can only imagine. Go ahead. Okay, let's see. Let me let me get a little bit of reverb. I am a professional after all. Can you hear that reverb? It sounds great. It's a very short song. Are you a Willie Nelson fan? Uh, I haven't listened to the old Willie in a while, so I can only imagine. Okay, well, this is inspired by a Willie Nelson song. <clears throat> and it's about you, so you should like it. <clears throat> in the cockpit glow, I see them. Blue eyes flying in his plane. Gets the tower clearance. Down the runway he goes again. Jason is a flying master, wearing two watches is his way. Through the ages I'll remember Blue eyes at M zero A Applause, applause. Well, well, I, I don't even know what to say. That, um, <laughs> that a, a lot of talent went into that. That no, might be the no. new, hey, hey, John, maybe that could be the new uh, intro sequence. Where you, where we, where we, where we I spent play. a whole 11 minutes doing that for you. Uh, you, have, uh, you have immense talents, much more than drone flying. This, you got a real knack for this radio <laughs> stuff, kid. You keep it up. You well, know. you know, my, my live stream is a radio show disguised as a drone show. To be I, I, I totally get it. How, when, when, you, did you, the, when did you think of this? The, the song? Yeah, the song. Oh, earlier today? I was, like, <laughs> I was like, let's see, what rhymes with plane? And, then, <laughs> and you just ran with it from yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was, uh, 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 you can see the YouTube comments. Chris wants you to uh, join a choir, he believes. Uh, you, oh, you could okay. do well. Choir will sing in. Yeah, maybe in church or something like that. You could do quite well. Beautiful song, says Nathan. Uh, <laughs> oh, you, you've got a knack for it. You've got a knack for it. So, <laughs> If you uh, want silliness like that, uh, Thursday Night Live uh, on my channel is chock full of it every this Thursday. Is, this, is, this is accurate. I'll be on there tonight. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm coming on when, Ken, tonight? Like 8.30ish my time? Uh, yeah, you're in Eastern time, so yeah, that'd be around 8.30. All yep. right, yeah, you need to subscribe to Ken Heron if you want to laugh. All his videos uh, are like that, no doubt. Ken, what are you up to lately, drone flying-wise? What's coming down the old Ken Heron pipeline? Well, I've pretty much holed up here in my in my house um, with a, a lot of extra time. Fortunately, I'm able to work from home. Yes. Uh, um, uh, luckily, I was fired from the radio station just before Christmas because they're a class act, but I'm not bitter. <laughs> <laughs> was that W E I E I O? Should we? Yeah, and it, yeah, yeah. And just in case you're wondering, I, I didn't do anything wrong. They're just kind of, they're just kind of going out of business. Couldn't afford me. I got you. But anyway, yeah. that that said, uh, I'm I'm just kind of catching up on on editing. Not going out too much. Um, just trying to catch up on some stuff around here and working a lot towards uh, the live show. That's awesome. That's awesome. What's uh, what's this transition look like then? Are you gonna take this full time, or what are you thinking then? Oh yeah, no, I've been uh, the the uh, the moment after they said we no longer need your services, I was then full time. That's uh, awesome. YouTube. Yeah, good yeah. for you. Good for you. So what are the <laughs> what are the projects in the in the queue right now? They're gonna be posted out to the channel sometime soon that we can expect and watch for. Oh, uh, well, um, I, I I'm testing some uh, propellers. For a nice. company called Master Air Screw, where I uh, film it with a high-speed camera to failure, so that's fun. Ooh, that uh, is fun. A lot more FPV crashes because I'm still learning. Yes, super cool. You're gonna yeah. break into racing, or what are you thinking? No, I'm not gonna do that. No. I just, I really want to get into FPV for the uh, cinematic aspect of it. Interesting. Um, but oh, one thing that I am gonna do. Yeah. Uh, as soon as it warms up, uh, I'm gonna take a trip down all Route 66 uh, in my. Uh, RX-8 sports car because I'm super cool like that and I'm gonna 
<laughs> I'm going to uh, meet a bunch of my uh, viewers and uh, try to film once, you know, all the yeah. COVID zombies are cleared out. I know you talked about making it down this way too, so hopefully uh, you can take Route 66 this way. I know it really doesn't go this way, but it would be beneficial to bring you out this way yeah, too. You know, I was uh, born in Florida, in Cape that's Canaveral. Right. You were saying that. You were saying that. So yeah. that, that's yeah, yeah. super cool. Um, not to bring up a sore subject, but Ab and a bunch of others are saying they want you on the cruise, Ken. We, th this was actually the original game plan. Ken had some life emergencies kind of come up and everything else. But Ken, the offer still stands. I just want you to know. I, like I you. Is that still on schedule? Because I know uh, Brennan Edwards, yeah. who you're going to speak to here in a little bit. Next, yeah. He's He's great. He's pro you know, I'm a clown. I'm a silly man. Brent is probably the better person to even have on your cruise because he knows a lot. I mean, he's he works in Hollywood. He's a producer. You, we need, you know, your, your comic relief, though, like that's important. Like imagine karaoke with Ken like that could be a segment, I'm thinking. Oh, sure. Sure. I'm, I'm fun to hang out with. But uh, try living with me. I'm impossible. It's, I'm like Disneyland. You want to go for a day or two, but then, and then you've had your fill. <laughs> you leave tired and crying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So th is that still on schedule? Yeah, so we're still on schedule. Aviation Mastery at sea October 26th to the 31st. I mean, it's a crazy time to be marketing a cruise right now, Ken, but you'd be amazed. Pilots are like such a resilient bunch. We continue to, uh, we, we sold out of our diamond package already. We just continue to book cabins with that. So it is, um, it is certainly awesome. We're very, very just uh, blessed and thankful um, with all that. So it, it is, it is cool. And we'll just, again, keep it in the back of your mind. I'm telling you, I'm telling uh, yeah. you. And, and, and uh, just to let everybody know, you might've noticed my face getting a little red. And I'll tell you why. It's because this is the second floor of my house and uh, I don't have central air conditioning. Uh, and I had this <laughs> off because it made a lot of racket and I wanted it to be nice and quiet for your show, but it's getting kind of hot. So I'm going to go it for it. Up. Go for right. it. You, you, you uh, turn, turn that back on. We won't mind. Yeah, I just, uh, you know, that's one of the few luxuries I afford myself. But, um, <laughs> anyway, so yeah. Um, would, uh, would there be drone flying allowed around the, the, the cruise ship? We're at, so on, on a serious note, here's what we're working on. Obviously, Royal Caribbean Marketing has their hands full right now, as you can imagine, uh, with COVID-19 trying to, uh, and all their ships stuck just a few miles offshore. So mm. they got their hands full with that. We were working with the marketing department at the time uh, to try to get all their footage, uh, drone footage for the marketing team of the two private islands and of the ship. So uh, we've been working on that actually. And if we can pull that off, that'd be some fun, fun stuff to actually see your footage used in television and, and everything else. So yeah, uh, Brennan uh, will have a great opportunity to, to film for you if, if you need him to. I, I have oh, yeah. some family stuff that I'm dealing with right now and I can't sure. get away, but I really appreciate the invite. I, I hope it all goes well for you. No, it'll be super. So Ken, let's get back to you. Let's get back to some drone flying here. What mm. are um, what are some of your favorite projects you've worked on or favorite projects you kind of have coming up right now that you've been able to participate in? Um, well, one, one of my favorite uh, projects that I've ever done happened about three years ago it was uh, for the Navy Museum ship, the LST-325. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know what an LST is? I am not familiar, sir, no. Oops. I lost Ken for a second, hold on. Did we lose you? Yeah, I got you again now, there we you are. are. Yeah, I, did. I don't know what uh -oh. an LST is, that's what, what you asked last time. Okay, and we're back. Oh, you don't, or you do? I'm sorry. I do not. I, I do that. not. Yeah, I do not. Oh, okay. An LST is a landing ship tank. Oh. And it's uh, one of these uh, ships, you may have seen it from World War II, where they come up to the beach and then the doors open and all the weapons and the tanks cool. and everything come off the front. Super uh, cool. Well, the last LST that is shipworthy in the world was in Greece. And uh, the LST-325 people, which are some of the original World War II crew members, went over, a bunch of old dudes, went over to Greece yeah. to retrieve it. Wow. Uh, shipped it back. I, I was going to say drive, but you don't drive a ship. You, you <laughs> Pilot. They brought the ship back. And pilot, yes, piloted the <laughs> ship back. Bunch of like 80 and 90-year-old dudes from World War II. Wow. And uh, restored it. And uh, then they, they sail up and down the Ohio River and show it off. Uh, I have a little bit of footage. Would you like to see it? I would love to see it. Okay. I knew you'd be prepared with this. Oh, I'm so prepared. 
All right, so here's, whoops, yeah, there we go. The primary mission of the LST is to land artillery and tanks on an enemy... So this is three years ago, fight through enemy mm -hmm. opposition. and uh, I was actually in radio contact with the captain during this. I was on the shore with my okay. drone. Uh, I wanted to get some shots of the ship as it passed by. Ooh, super cool. What drone was this? Uh, this is the Phantom uh, 4 Pro. It's so there's super. the there's the front, yeah. That gun on the front, they still fire it for people that come to see the ship, for the kids and everything with uh, propane. Just wow. just makes a little bang. But here are some of the crew members uh, that were involved. And uh, what a great bunch of guys. I spent uh, two nights on the ship filming for them for a documentary uh, series that they, they sell in their gift shop on the ship. That's cool. Yeah, it was a lot of fun and probably one of my most rewarding. Uh, Where was this at geographically? <laughs> Uh, that was in, uh, that was in Ohio, I think. I, wow. I, I can't remember the name of the, the town right that, now. That is super cool, man. That's what, probably one of my most rewarding. Yeah. What trips. else? What other kind of cool little things have you done? Um, I mean, obviously I, I, I go through, I watch all your stuff on your channel. You have some hilarious stuff, but you do have some, I have seen this video before the, the LST. I mean, you have some cool stuff that you do. What are, what's one of your YouTube videos? Maybe you're a little more proud of than others that took a lot of love, maybe in the edit department or just to, to make it even come to fruition. Uh, um, well, I, right away, what comes to mind is, uh, in Brownsville, Tennessee, there's mm -hmm. a guy named Billy Tripp. He's an artist, and he's created the, uh, I think it's the largest metal sculpture in the state. Maybe not wow. the country, but in the state. Okay. He calls it the mind field. And it, essentially, it's a collection of old fire towers and, and, and water towers and just metal stuff that he welds together in his yeah. metal. <laughs> uh, and I was just driving by one day on the back roads, looking for uh, stuff, and I yeah. found this place. Dude's just there by himself, just hanging out. He's a, he is, he is an artist. You know how artists are a little, I mean, little. <laughs> I got it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Creative types. Yeah. And uh, so he was just sitting there. He's like, "Yeah, man, you want to fly your drone? Do it." So I talked to him, and I convinced him that day to uh, climb up on the very top of his water tower, uh -huh. and. I did an orbit around him with my drone while I he was this video. Yes. eating from a book that he wrote. And I can play a little bit of that for you if you like. I would love, yes, I'd love to see that. Okay. I was particularly proud of this. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's Billy Tripp up there. He's just up there, huh? That, I'd be, yeah. I'm a little scared of heights, oddly enough. Right. Like this in the morning before work, the sun up outside. The shop doors closed for the time being and from the night. No OSHA harness on, no magnetic <laughs> shoes. It's, it's his art. I guess he can do what he wants, right? Yeah. He is the most confident. At the time, he was 62 years old, just climbing around all that stuff. How did he so, get up there? Is the, I take it it's empty, and he gets up through the hatch? Yeah, you go up right in the middle, and that hatch on the top. Is, so that's, this, that's his, is uh, all this stuff his, all this really tall? Quite yeah, all that's his, and that restaurant there down the bottom right was his too. That's how he makes his money from the restaurant. Okay. Minefield uh, restaurant. But one of the sequences that I'm most proud of is from the same. Are we trying to kill some time? Because I can do it. Yeah, you're f fantastic at it. Go for it. Hey, you let me know when you get bored, and I'll leave. <laughs> all right. Uh, but from the same video, one, one of my uh, most favorite uh, segments was. Now, this was before I had my uh, daytime waiver, 14 CFR Part 107.9. Yeah. Ooh, you are good. Very you're, proud. you're good. Thank you. I, I'm very proud of, of, of having obtained that. Yes. Uh, I guess, I don't know how, I guess there's like only 5,000 or something. There's not 6, many. There's, not, there's more now, but back then, there certainly wasn't a whole lot. It was hard to get, for sure. Well, I didn't have it until about six months ago. That's awesome. So when I filmed this, it was still, you can fly at dusk, and I always pushed it. I was right. like, yeah, it's I understand. It's kind of like, you Down know, to the so, second. Yeah, I gotcha. Uh, Billy just installed some lights in his sculpture, and I wanted to film that for him. He's very proud. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, here's here's a little bit of that segment. I'll just let that roll. Yeah, that's cool.
Now those towers don't have any steps. I don't know if you can see, yeah. but there are uh, no steps on them. And the, in order for Billy to get up there, he, yeah. he has to straddle the no clamps. Way. Yes, where the steps would be. And then he reads a little bit more from so, his book here. What is one to ever do but try? It ought to be simple, or rather more simple. How than did you not hit any other sculptures, too? That's why I want to know. This is like some dicey flying around here, too, with the drone. Yeah, um, I, I had a I had a couple observers on the ground. Mm -hmm. but, it's uh, unreal. I mean, those are just old, like, National Park Service fire watch towers. Yeah, there's fire watch towers and old, uh, you know, high tension line uh, structures and just any, any anything big and metal, that guy gonna get it, gonna weld it on there. He's gonna be like, hey, hey, is it big? Is it metal? Can I buy it? Okay, bibbidi bop. And that's, just, and that's just what he does. <laughs> yeah, that's what he does. That is um, super. It's a tribute to his mother and father mm -hmm. and his wife. Interesting. Yep. And, and uh, he has arranged with the city, apparently mm -hmm. it's okay, yeah. uh, to be buried there. Ah, got it. Got it. So, yep. That sounds like your kind of friend, Ken. You know, if you. <laughs> I do. I really enjoy local history and meeting unique people like that, and and yeah. and bringing them, uh, bringing viewers their story because there's so many interesting, unique people that uh, you never hear about. And I just sure. like combing the place. That's my favorite kind of video to do. Of course, I do reviews and be like, "Hey, man, this is the latest." Uh, uh, 2300 bibbidi bop. You can yeah. buy this too. I'll do those too. But my favorite is to just get out in the car and film pretty stuff and meet interesting people. I understand. I understand. You're probably one of those always has a drone in the car, always ready to rock and roll and film something. Yeah. 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 I have one more clip if you want to see it. Of course. Go for it, my friend. Then I got some more questions for you. And by I, the way, YouTube, Facebook, this is your time to ask great questions for Ken <laughs> um, as well. So, yeah, and if I don't know the answer, I'm always happy to make something up for you. I, I gotcha. I gotcha. Go for it, my friend. So uh, one of my most, the most excited times was, uh, now as a, as a, a, a pilot pilot, plane pilot, you, yes. have you been in situations where it's like, you're, maybe you're flying through the clouds and you're like sure. just so excited, you're shaking. You're like, sure. oh, this is awesome. You know? Yeah. Well, I had one of those moments uh, when I was hired by a company that uh, makes window fenestration, uh, which is the metal frames for skyscrapers. Okay. And uh, it's, it's the, um, the, the YYZ, or YKK, same mm -hmm. people that make the zippers. I'm familiar, make, yeah. So uh, uh, they hired a production company to do a promotional video about their window fenestrations. And it just so happened that uh, the, uh, the JW Marriott in Nashville mm -hmm. that was newly completed Mm -hmm. I was the only guy that had any drone footage of it anywhere. Wow. Wow. So they contacted me and, uh, and, 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 and I also went back out to do like a before and after. So I got sure. permission, uh, clearance, everything, everything you need to do. I had like four visual observers on the ground with walkie talkies, permission from the hotel, the whole thing climbed up on the roof with my Inspire 2, which for those who don't know is a big, huge, oh, yeah. big cine cinema drone. And uh, I think I was the first one to launch a drone off the top of a skyscraper in Nashville. So That's awesome. here's a little bit of that. Let's see it. Yeah. I was so excited. I bet. Very... That's cool. Yeah, and you know, uh, mirrored buildings just pop on video. It's yeah. just fantastic because you get the reflection of what's behind you and everything. And yeah. Is this stream in 720 or 1080? Uh, John, how are we streaming out? 720 or 1080? 720. 720, so. 720, okay. It still looks pretty good on our end. Yeah, I mean, if you have a chance, you know, I am pushing my channel. Hey, check it out on my channel. I want you to, yeah, of but, course, <laughs> of course. But, um, this was just a wonderful cool. shot. And the footprint of the building was large enough, and uh, we had people let me know. We did this a few times before I could actually do a full orbit because, you know, there's traffic. and Now, sure. you can tell people that in the drone world, you're allowed to fly over streets. You just can't fly over moving cars. Yeah. yeah so that's a right. tricky, tricky well, thing to, to do. And technically as well, you're talking altitude-wise. If you're flying for the purpose of this building, you can be over that 400 feet like we talked about, which I imagine this building looks quite high. So, Yes, it was, it was over 400 feet. That's but, pretty cool, uh, man. There it is. That, that was a great day. 
That's yeah. super cool. Hey, Ken, a few questions for you. Kyle Voss, he's actually one of our uh, uh, super uh, members here. He says, I shot some drone footage for my roofing company in Jacksonville. I recently switched from Mac to PC. What video editing programs do you recommend, Mr. Heron? Um, I, I use the Adobe family of programs. Mm -hmm. um, if you're just starting out, my advice would be. Oops. Yeah, I dropped him for just a second here. I don't know if it's on our end or, or his end. We lost. Ken, we, get, we, we dropped you for just a second. I don't know. It might be on our end. I mean, internet everywhere is kind of slow, so I'm going to give it a second. It's acting like it's going to come uh, roaring back here. Um, let's, uh, let's see. Come on, Skype. You're frozen in a really great thumbnail right now, though, so it's, it's a very flattering thumbnail, so don't worry about, uh, worry about that, uh, Ken. It's trying to, it's acting like it wants to catch up. Let's give it a second here and see if it'll, uh, it'll catch up. If not, Ken just, oh, he hung up. Um, let Ken call us right back. There we go. It froze you in the best thumbnail, though. I was really, I was hoping to get a screenshot of it, but I just couldn't in time. So it's, it's. Am, a, am I back? You are back, my friend. You are back okay. live with us. Right. I, yeah, I don't know. Internet's slow no matter where you are, so it's, it's all good. Yeah, not, not to throw aspersions, but my internet's beefy. <laughs> yeah, my internet is not beefy. It's Ours is. It, that is accurate. It normally is. We need. A, we need. I need that fiber dedicated line. Is what that is. You don't have so, fiber. You, do you, do you not? Oh, no, we don't. It, it's funny. In our current office, there's fiber on the road. However, there's so many old uh, T1 lines in the the conduit that they say mm. it's it's gonna be too expensive to rip all that out. Some are still using T1, they don't know what lines are good, what lines are bad. They don't wanna rip everything uh -oh. out and they can't fit the fiber through the conduit, so. I don't have fiber where I am. Um, I'm fiber adjacent. Ah, uh, like it's too node. expensive to bring it, yeah. Yeah, um, but I would move, I would move all of this, wow. all of this stuff to, wow. to, to live somewhere with fiber. That's what how, I would do. How do you do all your crazy <laughs> sound effects and all your like, beady bops and all that stuff that you do on oh, your live stream? Stuff? Yeah. Oh yeah, good question. Uh, so I have this this box. This is left over from radio days. This yeah. is called a 360 Systems Instant Replay. We just, I mean, you can hit, you know, I can just that kind of thing, and everything is in there. You know, and give me one of one of those there. You know, you just have it already, and you know the buttons. Yeah, yeah, I've had this for years in in Radio Land, so it, it comes in handy. Uh, I got gotcha. you. But anyway, so uh, back to the question of software. Yeah, you were cut out a little bit. You said if you're going to take it, if you're just getting started out, is where you got cut out. Okay, if you're just starting out, I would recommend going with a powerful program such as the Adobe family of editing programs. Uh, uh, Premiere, Audition, they all work together. If you're editing video and yes. you need to edit the audio within the video, it'll bring up Audition and then it'll save it into that project. Yes. Uh, it's, you, you, you don't want to start with a minimalist editor and then get to a point where you hit a wall creatively because you're going to want it to do something and then it's just not going to be able to do it. Then you're going to have to relearn another program. So I would pick a program you can grow into, such as Adobe Premiere. Now, that's all it. I've ever used. I'm sure there's yeah. other editors out there, but that's what I recommend. I totally get it. By the way, uh, John of Drone says he's just here for Ken, by the way. He doesn't want to see me. <laughs> he just wants to see Ken. And he asked a question, have we talked about nighttime waivers just yet? Ken, do you want to explain a little bit about your, we call it a nighttime waiver. It's technically a daytime waiver if we want to get really, really specific with it. Um, I mean, he can even, Ken can even quote the Code of Federal Regulations for it as well. <laughs> <laughs> Can run me run me through what that is uh, for our viewers, and as well how how long it took, and how did you go about that process? Well, the the phrase daytime waiver is kind of a misnomer. Uh, mm -hmm. It sounds like it shouldn't be, but uh, as right. it is, Part 107 allows you to fly in the daytime, so you mm -hmm. want to be have a waiver from that. Right. In order to fly at night, so I, you know it's it's the government. What you gonna do? It's the government. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. I Don't you. ask. I, uh, but uh, so what I did, and uh, I, I guess I don't. I was going to make a video uh, about this on my channel. I haven't yet. It's mm -hmm. one of the most asked for videos. Uh, but you really have to um, dot all the I's and cross the T's and and give them. There are samples out there of what you should put. But one of the things that I can recommend, if you're going to 
uh, if you're going to apply. And yes. you could do this right in the, the FAA's drone zone. Um, tell them, tell them that, that you're going to work for your city uh, for emergency responses because that seems to get people ahead of the line. If you're just a private person like, I want to fly at night because it's a party. <laughs> They're going to be like, nope. Uh, but if you're doing something for your community, whether it be flying with the police, search and rescue, that kind of thing. Yeah. It seems to me anyway, you get bumped up to the head of the line. As far as the verbiage goes for the application, I can't really speak to that. Sure. I can't I like to cut and paste what I put. Uh, <laughs> which That's is I get that a lot. That's oh, everybody, I get so many emails. Hey, just cut and paste it to me. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's not that easy. No. That's right, you, your product. That's your retirement right there. Well, I mean, they'll know, too. Yeah, well, that's a good point. You know, what a good point. Like, it was the whole uh, NPRM from the FAA uh, about drones um, for the, you know, uh, uh, people are cutting and pasting their comments to, to yeah. the FAA. Yeah, but that, that's not productive. They're going to look at this. We've seen this. We've seen this. They're going to just throw it out. It's not, um, you know, we originally, uh, to that note, we were going to make our comments. I think it was on your show I shared. Hey, I'm going to make my, my comments. I was going to make them public. And then I had that idea of I don't want people being swayed by what I'm writing first off uh, and just to copy and paste. I want people to have their own opinion. I will inform them and educate them, but they need to put it in their own words, I believe. Exactly. E exactly. In fact, the AMA... Uh, put out a statement that they said, "Hey, just send this." Uh, but <sighs> it's tough. You know, the, the FAA will still have little computer bots that will recognize if you've cut and pasted something. Bef yeah, before it even gets to to somebody to actually see it. So I, yeah. I, I totally hey, get it. Let me turn this around on you. Uh, uh, what have you heard about all that uh, that stuff with the remote ID and everything? Just aren't, uh, we, aren't we saving this for tonight? I mean, uh, are you? Are we? This is like the preamble to it. I imagine. Pre pre it's the pre-interview. I, I got you the pre the pre interview for the interview. Uh, Have you heard? No, there's not a whole lot of updates as far as remote ID. My my stance is still strong that I believe remote ID is going to be a good thing. There's a lot of people that don't like the the government as you as you pronounce it from Tennessee. Um, they think they're going to be watching them, spying on them, all this sort of stuff. I think if you're playing by the rules, it's not going to be uh, an issue. I still stand strong that UTM is the thing you want to be watching for. Uh, if you've been if you've been watching for anything UTM related, that's my fear. That could prove really beneficial or could prove really scary. Um, with well, uh, yes, for the photography drone people, for hobbyists and for FPV people, yeah. no matter what they do, it's going to it's going to affect them negatively. Because, it, you know, they're building their own drones and everything. Uh, no, I totally get it. And they need to just, uh, yeah, I get it. I wish everybody would just go out and earn their Part 107. I know it's not always financially feasible um, or, or time feasible as well um, with that. But that's just kind of my, my, my opinion with that. We can chat more about it tonight, I imagine. Well, that, yeah. you, you know, I always, I always tell people, you know, even if you're not planning on making money with your drone, it's good to get your Part 107 just for the knowledge. Yeah. In fact. Make sure you go to remotepilot101.com. What a good guy. I need to get you the PNG so it's at least transparent. Like, let me do that for you, you know. But it's oh, good. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's good. It's good. I mean, you're a Photoshop ninja, too, I imagine. But I'll, I'll get to that. Hey, um, something else, too, we should probably talk about tonight, and I want to mention it now, about the PSI testing centers. This is going to be a, a hot topic. Um, mom and pop PSI testing centers are still open. However, if it is a PSI-owned testing facility, they're closed right now. So what does this mean for, let's say, Ken Heron has this recurrent test that's due this month? Uh, in you, September. It, well, September. okay, that's, that's yeah. realistic then. So what does that look like uh, if someone needs to renew right now in April or by May or whatever it is, and they can't go find a testing center or they're not allowed to leave. They're in you know, one of the more shelter in place type places like New York or Seattle or Chicago and they literally cannot leave to go take their, their written tests. So uh, tonight I'll bring to you some guidance on that, but it fits down to my manned aviation pilots as well because there's so many knowledge tests they need to be taking and they just can't right now. And the FAA is providing very little guidance on, well, would Ken be illegal if he was due at the end of April and didn't take his recurrent test? We can right. talk about I mean, that tonight the, the, as well. The government's moving uh, tax day, so they should probably accommodate That's, all the other little things that, that we need to yeah my do. my my opinion of it is as long as you don't go out and do anything stupid um, you're gonna be okay and there's gonna be some sort of grace period like 60 days grace period or something like that for recurrent tests that doesn't mean I have 60 more days to study 
<laughs> it means keep studying right. and just be ready to take it as soon as they open back up. Because the other thing is, all these testing centers, you have to remember, PSI is not just aviation. PSI is medical tests, and the dentists do their CEUs there, and uh, flight attendants, and everybody takes their tests at PSI's test centers. They're going to be swamped as soon as this opens back up. It's going to be hard is, to get a booking. Is there any motivation to hmm. allow online testing at all? The, the problem is how the Code of Federal Regulations read, whether it's 107 or Part 61, how we take our MAND exams, it's a proctored test. Will we, you know, I, I do agree. I think there's something cool about all these kids now doing distant remote learning, like every kid's a homeschool kid right now, basically. Um, how are they proctoring final exams and these sort of things? Can we uh, proctor in via a webcam and watch? It, it's going to flip a lot of business models on its head, and maybe um, I know what it's doing for us. I mean, we're a team of 25 people, and we're all working remote now. John and I are in the office here making things happen, but we're bringing the TriCaster and everything to my house after this. You know, so mm -hmm. it's, um, it's flipping a lot of industries on their head. Could, could we see that change? Possibly. I mean, the, but it's the government. Yet again, it is slow moving, man, to change all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. So... That's yeah. just my, uh, my opinion of that. Hey, some more questions for you from Dukester727 uh, over on uh, YouTube was asking, Ken, could you review like an engine start checklist? So before you, you're taking that Phantom 4 out behind you to fly, you run a checklist, Ken, or what kind of stuff do you do before you just blast off? I'll be honest, uh, sometimes I'm in situations where there's not a lot of time for that, but I, I, I always always make sure to, to give it at least the, the once over it. And, and, and before I put the drone away, I will pre do that so that it's, mm. it's in the case. And I know that it's, it's ready so that I can just, if I'm in a situation where, you know, sometimes if you're out somewhere and you see some, Hey, that's pretty, look at that barge going down the river. And you're like, well, that barge is going pretty quick. So I better get yeah. out and fly. I yeah. always, before I put it away, I make sure to check it out. So it's, it's in the case and, and, uh, ready to go. Yeah. Uh, checked yeah i uh i totally get it my friend i totally get it uh john of drones again said he heard some drone pilots can join the civil air patrol and serve as the state's uh air force national guard as auxiliary i haven't heard that ken have you heard any such along those lines i, I, I haven't heard uh, anything along those lines and people are very often uh, willing to help out with that mm -hmm. kind of thing uh, local authority search and rescue and whatnot my advice would be don't just go out there with your drone no, it, it, if there's an emergency situation, uh, if there's a lost child, just don't go out there with it. Call them first. You don't you don't want to bum rush somebody and go, hey man, here's I got my Mavic. I'm ready to find that kid. You know, because yeah, it's uh, I get it. There's a lot of little hoops that you have to go through with authorities in order to do that. I get it. Well, the temporary flight restrictions, everything else. Hey, over on Facebook, Michael Johnson um, wants to know what are your favorite lens filters, Ken? Oh, you know, I. Uh, of course, I use Freewell lens filters. There you go. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Freewellgear.com. <laughs> you are, you are, uh, you are awesome. You know that you are like ready for everything. I, I, I want to see the whole monitor setup one day, like where all these buttons and logos. Are you use Wirecast? What do you use? I do, I do use Wirecast. It's all just yeah. queued up, ready to go. That's fun. That's it. But um, I, if it's sunny out, I'll use an ND8. Okay. That's it. Every time I. I don't flip that around too much because for, for, for what I do now, if, if it, it depends on what you're using it for, for, yeah. for me, just filming goofy stuff on my channel, you, you know, that's, that's all I need. If it's super sunny, then I will use an ND8 and that seems to be enough gotcha. for me anyway. But if you're super into, you know, I'm not one of these guys who, who, who the enjoyable part for me is, is filming, getting together with people and, and editing. The whole getting into the functionality of the camera and just, you know, beyond ISO adjustments and, and just mm -hmm. the, the basics, I don't get into that uh, too terribly much. And I found that an ND8 is, is enough for me. I gotcha. Yeah. Super cool. Hey, what, uh, what seminar? I mean, I know with coronavirus, everything else is, is crazy right now. You're playing this Route 66 trip. I don't know if you really meant Route 66 or just traveling around. I don't know what you're playing with that, but what, is, what are the travel plans? Is there a spin up this year? I mean, what are you guys uh, thinking and planning for as far as you making it to inner drone? If that happens, what are you thinking? I don't know about inner drone, but uh, spin up, I, I was talking 
with Kelly from Ready Set Drone, who organizes it. Yes. It's definitely going to be one. Depends on the whole zombie apocalypse, of course. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's talks of it happening somewhere in Colorado this time. Ready Set Drone what? Or, or I'm sorry, Spin Up what? Yeah, possibly in, in Colorado. Interesting. Um, maybe, he was talking maybe in October. I'm not sure. Is that where he's based? No, he's in Austin, Texas. That's what I thought. Okay. Wow. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Are you going to go? You going to yeah, go? Absolutely. Okay. I'm writing it down now just so I remember to, to follow up with him and kind of see. So that that sounds yeah. absolutely super. I loved it last time. It's just the drone community is super cool. And uh, you would be amazed, Ken. We did, uh, I was in Charlottesville, Virginia. And there's a video coming uh, out uh, kind of behind the scenes on it soon. I was out there and we did a meetup to the Remote Pilot 101 audience as well as the M0A audience. And we we're like half drone guys, half man pilots. And we all just like, we all had something in common. You know, we all had aviation uh, in common. And I, I find the drone community is just as strong as the aviation community as far as helping each other out and just stepping up and being like this relentless but generous bunch. Absolutely. Uh, I love it. Absolutely. You, you know, uh, I, I had an accident. Uh, at the end of 2017, day after Christmas. I remember, yes. I was in the hospital for 19 days. I was in a coma. I broke my back in two places. Motorcycle, was, right? Uh, no, I got hit from behind by a distracted driver. Okay, that's what it was. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, and um, the drone community really stepped up for me. They, they started a GoFundMe page, which got, which, uh, got me close to $10,000. Just wow. from strangers and people that just liked my channel and me. And, and that really touched me and my family and... That's when I realized that uh, the drone community was just filled with just amazing selfless people. In fact, in fact, I'm going to brag on them a little bit more. Sure. Uh, because I recently did a 24-hour live stream, which I don't recommend for wow. streaming. Wow. How'd you manage that? Um, well, let's see. I, I, uh, I drank a lot of coffee. Oh, got it. Coffee. This is the, uh, the trucker's friend, Fiverr. <laughs> Safe as coffee, they say. I took two of those. That was good. Great. But, you know, How, how'd you go to the bathroom and stuff? Did you have like office dad Wayne fill in for you like I did to run to the bathroom or what? Yeah, I, I would have guests on. Okay. And and uh, then I would have, I, I would say, well, I'll, it streams yours and I'd go away for a minute. I had to let my dog out, make sandwiches. But uh, you literally didn't sleep for 24 hours. 24 hour live stream. There's, and, uh, yeah, go to my channel. You can see it's it's broken up into five sections. That's it's, awesome. You would think, you would, and I thought that it would be, you know, after the tenth hour, it'd be just me. Yeah. You know, but no, it was pretty solid. At the end, man, I crashed hard. But I bet. what we did it for was uh, we we're trying to raise money for Meals on Wheels mm. America for seniors because the, these people are the volunteers are still going out and feeding old uh, the elderly population. And uh, we managed to raise, right over my face there, uh, $2,492.50. Super cool. This is a proof of a giant Ed McMahon-sized check. That, yeah, uh, nice I'm signature, too. It looks official. Take and, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's how generous the drone community is. And I'm going to take that out and film myself handing it to the Meals on Wheels people. Well, look at what we did in uh, at at Spin Up, where it was the uh, the spark around the world that it was really oh. really beat up. I mean, how much money did you get for that? Six or seven hundred bucks for us? More than I that. I think it had a, I think it had a comma in it. I yeah. think it did. It have it a comma? Yeah, it, it got yeah. up there. I'm like this thing. It, yeah, yeah, it was cool. You have to to offset that with uh, the fees from 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 mailing. It was a fun thing to do. I don't know sure. if I'd do it again. But yeah, basically, for those who don't know, I took a little. A drone called a spark and uh, I flew a little bit filmed sent it to like Australia and then they did the same thing off to Sweden and Germany and England and Hong Kong and and then uh, it got lost in Argentina for about three months That's it awesome. got lost in customs and then miraculously showed up about a half a year later anyway so that yeah that was fun that's super cool. That's real. Ken, let's take a few more questions here, and then we'll kind of wrap up here in a bit. Right. Um, let's see. Uh, Richard, this might be for both of us here. Richard on YouTube said, do you foresee the FAA requiring even more training and licensing as more drones are being flown? Ken, I'll let you start with it, and then I'll take it from there. Yes, I, I believe so. And, and I agree that that's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> I have to be careful because, you know, part... A lot of my audience uh, 
Yeah, let me get the let me get the let me get the red uh, the music ready. We don't like it when the government steps in and messes with us. You can't take my drone. You can take my drone out of my, my cold dead hand. That's what you're gonna do, government. Is, is that so, you on the is that you on the banjo? By the way, you are from Tennessee. Totally. I was under the impression if you're born in Tennessee, you come out of the womb playing the banjo. Well, I I I play the jug. Oh. <laughs> I, I'm not good enough to play the, the banjo. I play the jug. I'm a jug it. player. But you're yes, I, I do believe that there's going to be uh, some more required for for hobbyists. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, part 107 people alike. In fact, uh, I think you can expand on that a little bit because there is going to be yeah. the FAA is working on a new let's, thing for the and hobbyists. Let's, let's write that down as a thing to talk about tonight too, Ken. Uh, there is a hobbyist test coming. How that is going to be proctored or if it's going to be proctored, I don't know. Uh, you know Remote Pilot 101 will have the prepware for you, whatever that looks like. It might just be a simple online test. It might be a PSI proctored test. We do not know those answers. But I do know with a 99.9% .9 certainty there is a hobbyist test coming. Here's the reason why is it's just too many airspace violations, too many manned airplane pilots reporting they see drones. And trust me, when I, I'm a, I, I love manned aviation, I love unmanned aviation. When I'm traveling at 110 knots to the sky and I see a blur go by, I don't know if it was a hawk, I don't know if it was a drone, I don't know much of anything. Yeah. But I have to interject. There's there's a lot of vilification going on of, of drones by the general community. It used to be, yeah. it used to. I'm gonna have my music ready. It used to be, uh, you know, years ago. I was like, what was that? Oh, well, that was a UFO, man. I know it was a UFO. He's gonna come suck my brain out. <laughs> but now it's a drone. It went from UFOs, the, the aliens, to to everything that you can't identify as being uh, a drone. Yeah. And uh, there's there's a lot of blame being put on drones yeah. by uh, pilots. And of course, you yeah. know, I don't think anybody is, has anybody uh, died from a, a drone accident yet? That's my knowledge, sir. The only, um, the only real public one was that uh, drone that hit the military helicopter flying through the Hudson River corridor. Cause that's a, that's a safe place to go fly my drone uh, around all the, the national monuments of the Statue of Liberty through some of JFK, yeah. Teterboro, uh, LaGuardia's airspace. Why not? That, but that's the reason why we're gonna have a hobbyist right. test because one silly person went into the nation's probably busiest airspace compared to LA depending on the day and decided to throw yeah. a drone up and hit a military helicopter. Yeah, you, you can't legislate common sense. No, you no. can't do it. That's why we have pictures of little stick figures being smashed by Coke machines. Uh, you, you got it. One, you got it. One dumbass did it, and you, now we all have to suffer for you it. Are, Sorry. You are exactly <laughs> right. Um, yeah. hey, coming, I, I know it's probably time for, to wrap up. Yeah, can, go can ahead. I ask you a question now that we have the the manned aircraft community here? Yeah, go for it. Uh, how does the manned aircraft community feel about uh, us drone people? Uh, do we? Uh, I mean, we, we share we share aviation, the love of aviation, but uh, are we a, are we a bother? Are we a pest? Or uh, uh, I'd be yeah, I'd be excited to see the comments on this. I'll give you my opinion of it. I hope I don't sway anybody's comment with this because yes, we are sharing the airspace. What you'll find, I personally believe, Ken, is most manned aviation pilots are technology geeks. Like we geek out over the newest iPad, the newest Apple product, whatever it is. Drones are an extension of that. Like I, if DJI makes a new product, guess what? I've got it pre-ordered. Whether it's right, wrong, and different, doesn't matter. I think it's super cool. I want to have it first, and I want to fly that sort of stuff. It is a diff It is another extension of aviation. Now, I have to be honest. When drones first came out, all the manned aviation community was like, "Ooh, drones, cooties." You know, like, "Oh, I need my cootie shot back in." But you remember that? Did you have cooties back when you were in high cooties, school? Cooties, man. <laughs> okay, I'm making sure you remember. Yeah, um, yeah. It was like that, and I think as they begin to adopt it more, everyone's like, drones are pretty cool, when obviously used in the right way. Um, mm. Flying the day after Christmas scares me to death because it's every kid who just got a drone from Best Buy, how high can it go, how fast can it go? Yep. Um, you know, that, that scares me a little bit. But for the most part, I, I love drones. I mean, I absolutely do. Let's, let's look at some other, um, other comments. Bill Potter says, I'm both. I love both. 1D Graham says, love drones. Um, absolutely here. Uh, I think you're going to find that more and more. Now, the problem is, Ken, you hear from the few bad apples. You hear from the few bad apples of those drones, they're stealing, they're stealing our airspace and stealing our women. And you know, <laughs> they, just, yeah. they think whatever what? it is, those are the bad apples. Yeah, well, one of the good things uh, about 
RomboPilot101.com. Uh, is <laughs> you need that PNG. <laughs> is uh, you know, and and I didn't myself realize this as much. Uh, I, the reason why I got my Part 107 was because I had a YouTube channel yeah. and I got a visit from uh, an FAA agent. Wow. We had lunch together. Yeah. In the local restaurant, they, he showed up. Yeah. And uh, but that that put the the fear of God into me because mm-hmm. uh, I. I had made a video where, uh, you know, you know, back in the olden days. Oh, in the olden days, it was the Wild West, man. We were three, wild, three, wild threes, West. and yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I was filming a, a parade, and I was probably this far over people's heads, and you know, just anyway, I was but being it, stupid. It's, it was before we had regulation. Like it's, it's not. You, yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not making excuses. You know, again, common sense. I mean, anything could have gone wrong, but you know, yeah. way back, way back. Five years ago, man, that's I was a different person. But anyway, yeah. well, I had lunch with this dude, and he's like, "Yeah, you got to." I didn't know about Part One Hundred Seven. I did some research. I said, "You know what?" I got. We lost. Can I lost you again for just a second? But I did get a screenshot of this thumbnail. Most importantly, it's catching back up now. Maybe. Maybe. Let's have Ken. Come on, internet. It's like rolling the dice, John, on their internet these days. I think, Ken, either way, I'm getting, I'm getting great thumbnails. Let's see. All right, Ken hung up. He's calling back. I'm going to send you the thumbnail. I just got you frozen like this. It was really, it was a really <laughs> good thumbnail. That's the best part of bad internet is I'm getting good thumbnails of Ken Heron. So, Ken, okay. keep going. You were, you were like this. <laughs> So wherever you left off, say, wherever you're saying when your arms are like this, that's where you left off. Okay, and I'll wrap it up because I know Brandon, is Brandon coming on after yeah, me? Yeah, five minutes, yep. Okay, awesome. Well, let me just wrap it up. I got a visit from uh, an FAA agent yeah. who let me know about the uh, Part 107 that was going to start, what was it August 26, 2016? Mm-hmm. That was... Yeah, August, you're right. A day that will live in infamy. <laughs> um, so uh, he said, you know, if you're going to make money, uh, there's a... Uh, there's a thing that you're gonna want to know about, and uh, that's a Part 107 uh, certification. Uh, now I said what? So I went, and I took the test uh, just from the information that was avail- available from the FAA, and I failed it. Wow! I thought, you know, I remember seeing this in some of your earlier videos. You and uh, you and Kelly Green were like in this old wooden cabin, talking about it in a video. Yeah, yeah. I was like, why do I need to pay for it? RomoPilot101.com. When I can just get the information for free from the good old FAA. Well, the good old FAA doesn't have what Jason has. Jason, and you, not to make this a commercial or anything, but what you offer is uh, absolutely incredible for those of us who, uh, you know, we we average through high school. Yeah, that's me. I so, but uh, dudes are uh, usually visual learners, and you do it in a way with your videos that really sticks. So awesome. I took it, I passed it, and 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 did pretty well. Uh, there's a thing that the FAA uh, quotes is called in furtherance of a business, mm-hmm. which is a sneaky way of them because people ask me all the time, well, what if what if uh, the, the, the real estate company, uh, what if I just give them the the, the images? In further uh, their uh, business, yeah. Yeah, in furtherance of a business. Uh, it it covers so much. They had some clever lawyer uh, write that up, boy. So, yeah, there's no way around it unfortunately. I get it. I get it. Well, Ken, thank you so much for spending some time with us. I will see you tonight um, as well. So uh, again, seriously, everyone watching this, go follow Ken Heron. Hop on his live stream tonight. It's called Thursday Night Live. You haven't missed a show since when? This will be the 140th show. 140th show in a row. Man doesn't go on vacation. Even when I was in the hospital. Even when you were in the hospital, you had shows. Yeah. So yeah, go back and look at that one. I was on morphine. It was a lot of fun. I can only I can only <laughs> imagine. So super. I will see. I will see you tonight. Who are, who are you hosting with? Kelly Green or who are you with? Yeah, Kelly. Kelly's on tonight. Awesome. Super, yeah. my friend. Well, I'll see you guys all this evening then. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks everybody for watching. All right. Thanks. See you, man. Okay. Bye. Super. And just like that, we have Brennan already calling now. This is part, this is like back to back. Like he knew it was coming. Let's see here. Oh, I gotta accept this. I won't forget the I won't forget the promos. Um, uh, let me tell Brennan. Try to call again, please. Um, 
We'll hop on with Brendan. Don't forget, if we can share that, uh, thank you, John, for sharing the link for all that giveaway. Brendan's calling now. He's part of our giveaway as well, so we'll come to that. What is happening, my friend? How are you? Jason, I'm fantastic. How are you, brother? Man, I am doing super. I'm excited to finally get to talk to you. I know you've been talking to Amanda, Wayne, who is our office dad, everybody else. You've been chatting with them quite a bit. We've been, we've been talking you up the whole time, man. So we're excited to, uh, uh, to chat with you and learn a little bit more uh, about you and everything else. Hey, Brennan, before we get started though, uh, I wanna share a little bit. We've been sharing the giveaway link every hour. I just signed off talking to our good friend, Ken Heron, um, who had a, a, the joke levels like up here now. So uh, <laughs> you, you, we gotta, I don't know how we're gonna overcome. He wrote a song and everything he performed. So I don't know how we're gonna top that, but you know how crazy Ken is. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and actually Ken is the one who put Brennan and I together. So, um, Brennan, you are giving away and participating in this, in this giveaway a little bit. Can you chat about that before we dive into who is Brennan and everything else? Just why that link is up there? Well, it's funny that you said, can you talk about it? Because I actually have it right here. Super um, cool. Yeah, yeah. So what this is, is like it's an FPV starter kit. So if you ever want to learn how to do FPV, which, you know, some people may or may not know, FPV is first person view flying. Yeah. Um, when you typically most people think about that, that is like a, a drone racer. Right. Uh, so if you want to learn how to do drone racing, that means you need to learn how to FPV fly. Mm -hmm. and the best way to learn how to FPV fly is to have something that's like a you know a starter kit. And this is what a starter kit looks like. Um, this pretty much gives you like the most basic kind of headgear that you can use, so you can pretty much have your vision. You wear this, um, and you're like, well, what am I flying? Well, this thing is so conveniently made that it's actually right inside. No way. Uh, yeah, so this is pretty much a little tiny whoop in here. A um, little powerful little bugger that you can fly indoors, outdoors. As you can see, it has a camera on yeah. it. Um, this kit is worth a little over 200 mm -hmm. bucks uh, yeah. from one of my partners uh, called Newbie Drone. Yeah. Uh, they're absolutely fantastic because you know, even their name, Newbie Drone. Yeah. Just, if, you're, if you're newbie into it and you want to get an FPV flying, that's them right there. That's the screen as well that it comes with. Um, it comes in a cool package that is all self-contained with a controller. Uh, I'm giving one of these away because this is what's gotten me started into FPV. This is what got me started into FPV flying. This is why I'm still I'm still not that great at it. I still need to put a few more in hours. Yeah. Um, but if I was to recommend to anybody, how do you get into it? Then I would say this is the best way to start. And they have the best package because everything you need comes in it. Like you don't need to buy anything separate. You don't need to get transmitters, receivers. Like every single thing you need comes in a cool little kit that all zips up and you can take it anywhere you want, fly it indoors and outdoors. The only thing I'll say is when you get your hands on this, make yeah. sure every time you fly outdoors, yeah. you have a spotter because you yes. will lose the drone. Uh, that, <laughs> that I believe too. That's super cool. Brennan, thank you for that. Again, the link. John, if we can share that one more time, we're giving away t-shirts, bags, like I said earlier, uh, Remote Pilot 101 bag. If you want it as a Remote Pilot 101 bag or an M0A.com bag with your name on there as well. A ton of great stuff. Brennan, thank you for contributing to that giveaway. We'll mention it again um, at the very end. But Brennan, this is, uh, you're a blessing to us, man. This is about you. I haven't got a chance to speak with you just yet, although when I do speak about you, it's very highly just from what I hear from my team here, uh, from Ken Heron and really the drone community. Catch us up on who is Brennan a little bit and what you've been up to, my friend. Before we do that, I actually have to give you some credit, my brother. Sure, sure. You taught me how to pass the 107. Ah, uh, that's awesome. Somebody asked me, like, hey, I want to come become a professional drone pilot. I'm like, yes. outside, for me, I'm a professional drone cinematographer. So yes. outside of learning how to specifically, tactically learn how to fly a drone and safely learn how to fly a drone, if you want to learn how to pass that test, yeah. it is 1,000%. The best way I found is remotepilot101.com because I actually bought books. Like yeah. I took other courses. Like I went through a lot of things. My my like trajectory towards getting there, like I actually failed the test the first time I took it. No way. Uh, yeah, just keeping it real. I failed it the first time I took it and yeah. then I watched the videos and I passed it with like a 95 or 92%. Wow. So I have to give you credit, um, and as you'll get to know me, is I love to give credit where credit is due. That's awesome. Um, I gotta give you that. But about me now, yeah. um, I'm, I'm just a kid from, uh, I'm actually from Flint, Michigan. Um, I've lived in LA for the past eight years. Um, I originally got into, uh, I'd say I originally got into film and video production um, right when I first moved out here. It was not a goal, it kind of just happened. And um, I got into drones actually because of these kind of things. Oh yeah? Video. Yeah. I'm a game um, when I was in college, uh, I played video games competitively, um, and that was my thing. And one of the things that's really easy that you can tell, uh, I'm grabbing everything as I'm talking, one of the things that was really easy for me, and the entire reason I got into drones is a very simple one. 
is that if you look at this, this is a video game controller. It's mm -hmm. very typical. This is a, uh, a, a Switch Pro controller, but as you can see, this looks just like pretty much any other game controller. Yeah. And it's a basic drone controller. The common person wouldn't know the difference. Yeah. Um, for the most part, you wouldn't know the difference. And I was actually on set being a, a producer on a show uh, way back in the day, mm -hmm. um, in the late 2014. And a guy brought a Phantom One. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Right? I know, right? A Phantom yeah. One on set. And he was flying it, and I was watching him fly it. And at the time, like I said, I'm a gamer. I beat pretty much anybody in any video game that they challenged me in 95% yeah. of the time. Yeah. And I'm super competitive, you can't tell. Yeah, I gotcha, I gotcha. Yeah, right? And so I saw the controller, I saw how he was flying the drone, and I honestly was watching, and I was like, I think I could do this better than this guy, because his thumbs just don't look coordinated. Right. And I was watching, and I was, watching, and I was like, hey man, can I, can I give it a shot? And he shot me down. He was like, no, you don't know what you're doing. You don't know, like, you know, he was just like really mean to me about it. And I was just like, that's so funny because I'm working right now. I could just go buy one. Yeah. That's what I did. Um, I bought a micro drone, a nano drone. Uh, mm -hmm. the, I think it was the Proto X. Okay. Um, I bought that and I, I was on set, you know, I was learning how to fly that like around the directors and things like that. Mm -hmm. And after a while, I got really, really good at it. And they're like, and I was like, I'm going to buy a big one. And so I bought a 3D robotics drone, an Iris Plus. Um, I don't know if you remember that drone or not. No, uh, I that, do not. No, that's back in the day. Yeah, that's like a put a GoPro on the bottom of it. Yeah. And you, first, you, buy, you just fly it and hope you got the shot because there's no video transmission. Yeah. Yeah. And then like they later put out a video transmission system. Um, but I got the Iris Plus uh, and I started flying it for TV shows because I was already there. Yeah. I was already a producer on these TV shows. And so for me, it was, a, it was an offering that I did for free um, to the shows that I was on simply because I didn't know if I was good at it or not. And honestly, I was horrible mm -hmm. at it back then. Mm -hmm. um, but now, you know, so, but after that time, you get the experience, the directors get to know you, the other producers know that you have a drone and things like that. I continued to build and I started my own production company and that's actually the office I'm sitting in right now. Cool. I have a studio, I have all that. Um, but on the drone side of it, uh, we started a YouTube channel for me. I started to get a bunch of uh, experience working on all these different shoots all around the country, all around the world. Yeah. And suddenly I look back and I'm like, I'm a drone OG, a cinematographer. <laughs> Really? I'm that guy now? It's, it feels weird because I say I've been flying since late 2014 and people yeah. look at me like I'm crazy. Like drones were around then. I'm yeah. like, not in the way that you imagine them now. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's how I got into it. And now but, I'm like, oh, this a guy that is really good at drones, I guess. That is super cool, man. Let's talk about what you've done. I mean, you're doing, I mean, shows on Netflix, Hulu, big sporting events. Let's let's talk about Let's Let's talk yourself up a little bit here because you've done some really cool stuff. Yeah, um, I've gotten, I've been, you know, it's funny, is like, as a, one of the things that's really interesting about the experience of being a drone pilot is sometimes you don't even know what you're flying for. Um, because as a drone pilot, you'll show up to set and they'll just say, hey, uh, we need you to get this shot, that shot, this shot, that shot. And then mm -hmm. your movie's on Netflix. And you're yeah. just like, no one told me yeah. that this is going to be on Netflix. Like, you just don't know. Yeah. Because you're such a segmented part of production is that you're not part of pre-production, you're not part of post-production. You literally are a specialty camera that's brought in for a very short period of time, typically one to three days. That's the most you get for a movie. That's the most you'll get for almost anything, yeah. unless it's an ongoing reality show or something like sure. that. And normally, they don't hire a separate drone, drone crew for that. Mm -hmm. So for me, I get brought in for very small pieces of, of the pie for these, all these different projects. So yes, I've done stuff for Netflix. Uh, I don't know if you ever saw the movie Nightcrawler. I'm um, familiar with it. I haven't seen it, but I, yeah, I'm familiar with it. Was, there's a, the spinoff of that on Netflix. Uh, I, don't even, you know, I should know the name of it, but either way, I got to fly nighttime drone. That's actually the first time I got my night waiver. Was Neat. Flight. It was like three years ago, three or four years ago. Um, and I had to get a night waiver to fly for this because they couldn't get any nighttime drone shots. And I had to fly all over LA with them and these guys that were driving around trying to find, uh, like, like pretty much listening to police radios and trying to like go and beat the police to these scenes. Yeah. And I was in drone B-roll of them like racing down the street which logistically was one of the hardest things I've ever I done. Bet. But as you know, the harder the project is, the harder the thing that you're taking on is, the more you learn from it. Sure. Um, and so from there, I got to work, like I got to work on that for Netflix, and I got to work on a bunch of other, just like random projects that like, in all honesty, I don't know my full catalog because wow. it's like, they don't let us know. So it's like, yeah. I'll work on something, I'm like, I've worked on at least seven movies, that I had no idea what was happening with them. I don't yeah. know where they are. I don't even know the name of the movie because while you're working on they it, they bring you in, yeah. In title. Yeah. Um, and normally they just put you in the credits and then it just pops up on your IMDb one day and you're just like, oh, I did that. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that a lot of people like to talk to me about, and the, probably the most questions that I get asked about, 
is I got to be uh, work with HBO, mm. uh, and uh, they did, HBO did a documentary on Jay Z and Beyonce's On the Run World Tour, uh, World Tour Two mm-hmm. that actually hasn't been released yet. Wow. Uh, and I was a drone pilot for their LA side of it uh, because that's the only place they shot the whole documentary in Pasadena yeah. uh, at the Rose Bowl, and I got to do the drone work for that. Yeah. Um, which I will say might be my favorite drone experience I've ever had, yeah. um, because as as you when you work in production, you get access to things that other people don't. You get yeah. if you have a nice looking fancy camera, people give you access to stuff you're not supposed to have. Yeah, I understand. Uh, so the on the run tour had two shows. The mm-hmm. first, so they were like, we just need a B-roll footage of this concert happening from some wide shots of the crowd of Beyonce and Jay Z. We just want to see this kind of stuff. So I brought out like the entire Inspire Two, a couple Inspire Twos with X7s. Yeah. You know, you know, playing with that. And but the thing is, they also need a scout day. And so the first show was a scout day. I was the only person brought on for my drone team to scout, and they gave me an all access pass to her concert and notes on, and they gave me like a schedule with notes saying, we wanna make sure we get the pyro at this part, this or that. And so my job that day was to observe the concert and take notes on when the things happened that I needed to capture with yeah. an all access pass to a Jay Z Beyonce concert. Let me tell you, I was literally standing next to Blue Ivy. Like, yeah. that's Jay Z Beyonce's son. I'm yeah. a daughter. It's yeah. a daughter. Like I was there, like in the family section, just hanging out, and they're like, "Who are you?" I'm just like, "Oh, you know, I'm just a drone pilot." <laughs> I'm like, "Not bro, Jay Z, Beyonce," and I'm like, "This is because I'm a drone pilot." And That's then the awesome, incredible. So let me uh, let me ask you a question. Um, over on Facebook, Eric Deagle, he's one of our actually Eric's awesome drone pilot and manned aviation pilot as well. Uh, he asked, "How do you break into the big production work?" In my area, I have a guy that has two Bell helicopters, a ton of drones, owns the local film market. By the way, he's not hiring. He goes, "I've flown model aviation for 25 years. Most of my work's with law enforcement, search and rescue projects. But his goal is to get a major film credit." I mean, what kind of advice would you give? That? And Eric's a super super guy. He's in the Virginia kind of D.C. area. So it's a decent population area to be in for that sort of stuff. I mean, what, what do you think? I'd say there's two different things. Uh, one thing you have to understand off top is that one of the most difficult things about the film industry is that almost everything is about word of mouth. Mm-hmm. Um, isn't really like a LinkedIn you go to or a website that you go and apply to be a drone pilot or anything like that. You got to know somebody. Right. Uh, but if you don't know somebody, what I would recommend is that you look for the hubs, the production hubs, and follow the tax incentives. Um, is that production moves with the tax incentives. So like right now, Atlanta, Louisiana, and LA have really big tax incentives. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of movies and TV shows being shot in those three locations. Um, you're in the DC area, so you might have to travel a bit because I honestly don't know what kind of productions are happening in that area. And to find out, again, follow the tax incentives. Who's giving the film incentives right now because they move? And then from there, what I would personally do, uh, to be fully honest, uh, I, I'm, a, I'm very, I'm not, I have no shame whatsoever. Um, so what That's I awesome. was, I would go find, I would go look and see, because uh, it's required for every film incentive when they have them. I don't have to announce what they're doing. So if they're working on real steel, they have to put up job postings. They have to hire locals for X amount percent of how many people are there. And so what I would go and do is look for those job postings that don't have anything to do with drone and then offer them drone services for free. That's what I would do. And I know that sounds stupid, and I know it doesn't make sense, but if you don't get in good with these people, if they don't see what you can do, um, they're not gonna give you They're not gonna give you a shot. And you're not gonna be able to show them what you can do without having done it with someone else before. Um, so it's it really comes down to 1,000% networking. And then the other side of it, what I would recommend is the on the networking, is that I would go and look for any kind of production companies in your area. Mm-hmm. Um, I would look on Yelp, I would look on uh, anything. I would just internet the crap out of it and yeah. say, hey, here's all the production companies that were within 100 miles of where I live, contact them, have a really cool drone reel, which is a whole different conversation we can talk yeah, about. Yeah, good point, good point. Have a really good drone reel and then send it out and say, hey, I'd like to come show you what I can do. You don't have to pay me for anything for the first project. I just want you to see what I'm capable of um, and then you know, show them that you're awesome and then they're gonna wanna be able to hire you. They'll probably hire you for everything else because after they get dependable people that they like, um, as I could speak to as an owner of a production company, after you get people you like that do what you want, you have no reason to look anywhere else. That's a good point. Hey, by the way, our good friend Ken Heron uh, posted in the chat, ask Brennan about army ants. I don't even know what that means. Army that, ants? Oh, bullet ants. He means bullet, bullet ants. ants. Bullet ants. He's an army <laughs> ants, but. Yeah, I've, okay, so Ken with his multi, I, first of all, I love Ken. Ken's crazy, but, but we love his, him. His right, favorite. <laughs> He's watching now. Of course he's watching. Of course he's watching. 
Um, my favorite thing about Ken is he likes to poke fun at everybody and just mm-hmm. like, yo, I want to talk about this funny story. Yeah. Um, the reason why he sang Bullet Dance is because of something I was going to try to avoid talking about, Ken, um, is that <laughs> drone channel, uh, my drone channel got pretty popular um, and I kind of let it like, like I just kind of let it uh, do, I had my, my company and my drone channel both got popular at the same time. Mm-hmm. And the drone channel wasn't really making me enough money for it to be my focus, so I kind of let it fall to the wayside. On my YouTube channel, and then was focusing on the company thing. But in the meantime, the drone channel kept growing, and on top of that, I got noticed by an Australian production company that wanted me to be the tech specialist on a, a TV show. Mm-hmm. And the TV show was pretty much Scooby Doo meets Indiana Jones, and what it was is we went into the jungle of Peru and Brazil mm-hmm. looking for a lost city, um, and also looking to solve a murder mystery or a, a missing persons mystery of about four people who went looking for that same lost city we were looking for that never were heard from again. Mm-hmm. And so they pretty much gathered a team of six experts to go out into the jungle to do that. And the show was called The Curse of Akakor. And I was pretty much, if you watch Scooby Doo, you'll get the reference. I was Velma. Yeah. On that. <laughs> you, you look like a Velma. You know, it's appropriate. <laughs> I was doing the Velma thing. And yeah. so I was the one with the tech. And so the reason he's asking about bullet ants to bring it all back together mm-hmm. is because bullet ants are one of the most terrifying creatures that you get to encounter when you're in the jungle, they're about that big. Yeah. And the reason they're called bullet ants is because if you get bitten or stung by one, it feels like, and your experience is like being shot by a bullet. Wow. Um, and so I was telling him that, you know, like one of the things I had to learn while living in the jungle for two months, uh, while filming this stuff was that like, you have to be very cognizant of wherever you put your hand, wherever mm-hmm. you put your foot, wherever you put anything, because Anything can happen. Anything can bite you, and you got to pay attention. While you're and the, flying and everything else, right? Like, <laughs> like man, there's footage on that show of me trying to fly drones and just being attacked by everything while I'm flying. And then, like, everybody's just like, come on, Brennan, get the shot. I'm like, y'all can defend <laughs> yourselves right now. I got to have, exactly. Yeah. I have both my hands on this drone, and y'all trying to help have me find some artifact that we don't even know if it's there. Right. And y'all have no empathy. No empathy whatsoever. Right. I'm destroyed. Um, but... The very first day, I put my hand on a tree and a bullet ant crawled right across it. No um, way. Like, I, I pretty much, much lost. Like, you probably couldn't put that up on all the color. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And I was like, ah, like, I was just terrified. Um, and it didn't bite me, though. And it just kept going. And that was a huge lesson. Ken mm. got a big kick out of that story. That's um, so, super. Uh, there's Ken's story. You're welcome, Ken. Yeah, Ken's always watching. <laughs> By the way, some other comments. John of Drone says, follow the tax incentives. That's the best advice I've ever heard. I was a state lobbyist in Washington State for industrial video production. was successful getting tax incentives uh, to compete with Canada. And then uh, B. Evans is the username. said, don't mess with those ants. They will eat your hands off. So uh, you, got, you got some backup on the, uh, in the ant department it's, for sure. That's that, Superman. It's absolutely that's super. Let, let's talk a little bit more about your career. We talked how you kind of got there as well. What's a favorite flight you've done in your career thus far? Favorite flight I've done in my career? One of my favorite flights was, well, I already told you about the Beyonce Jay-Z one. Yeah. I'd say another favorite flight was um, back in the Phantom 3 days. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you don't know, Anybody doesn't know, the Phantom 3 changed the entire I've got, I've got a crash one happened. over there, man. It's like, it was a life changer, yeah. It is. This, it's still to this day the most dependable drone I've ever seen. Yeah. Like, like, it's more dependable than Fire 2, more dependable than the Always, Phantom 4. Yeah. Um, and when it came out, there was literally nothing that even came close to competing with yes. it. It destroyed all the competition. Yes. So this has been those days. I first got my Phantom 3. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a project that I was working on in Costa Rica. Mm-hmm. And we were uh, filming in the jungle there. And there was this river that had like a waterfall and then it had like an S-curve up the river and then up the waterfall. Mm-hmm. And I did a drone shot that followed the S-curve while riding in a boat, like a pecky peck boat. Yeah. So it was like a little wooden, like, <laughs> like we're literally, yeah, like, yeah. so I had this guy paddling the boat and I'm in there and I'm just like staring at the thing, like trying not to get sick or car sick or whatever you call it. Yeah. And I'm buying this, this crevice um, and then up the waterfall. Now that was one of my favorite flights I've ever done. But unfortunately, the footage didn't look that great, right? Uh, simply because you're flying through a high humidity space mm. and it fogged up. And, and so the whole entire flight, you got it, but it just all just looks like a, it looks like a dream sequence Yeah. Um, in reality. But for me, that was one of my favorite flights simply because of the level of difficulty, the beauty around us, and just the story associated with it. I was like, this is so cool. Um, yeah. so I was really happy to do that. That was awesome. 
I, I, I've had those similar kind of things where you think the footage is going to be beautiful, then you get it back into post, and you're like, oh, I, there was a shot. It had just rained. And in, in Florida, after it rains, it kind of can steam up off the asphalt. I had the airplane right, parked right, right there. The, the, it had rained just enough, so it kind of like, and the sun was high enough, there was this mirror reflection off the water from the runway to the plane and the steam. Filmed the whole thing of the Inspire 2, and there was like a little speck of, of uh, just a little raindrop on the lens the entire huh? time. And I'm like, I, I can't believe this happened. <laughs> I can't believe this like, happened. Yeah, yeah. Can't, use it. can't use anything. Yeah. Oh, I have another story that I think you'll enjoy. Yeah. Uh, is another favorite flight. I was, I was working on a documentary for Sierra Club. Um, it's called Reinventing Power. It's like my company did it. And um, me and another drone pilot that I, that I work with, one of the best drone pilots I know, his name is Dominic Mendejo. Mm -hmm. um, he and I were flying off, off a boat off the coast of uh, Rhode Island. Because mm -hmm. only the whole entire documentary was about renewable technology. Okay. What it's doing to change the industry in the United States. Okay. And old people don't know this. There's a lot of wind farms all over the country, but there's only one offshore wind farm. So pretty much a wind farm that's happening in the ocean. Mm -hmm. Europe have a lot of them. Yeah, they do. In the United States, we only have six. Mm -hmm. uh, when I say six, I mean six turbines, not six wind, wow. wind farms. Wow, yeah, yeah. And um, there's, a cold, there's a little island called Block Island. I'm familiar, yeah. Off the coast of Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. We were coming, coming from Block Island, and we were on a boat out there. And this <laughs> is so funny. But we're with this boat cap and we had scheduled it for like weeks in advance. And we get out and we're out there at 5 a.m. We're like, like, getting, like we're still in the, uh, next to the coast. Where we're like, we're still protected with waves. And I'm looking around. I didn't say anything, but I was thinking like, how come we're the only boat out here? Like, what is going on? Like, there should be more boats out here. And, and so we keep going and as soon as we crash across the break wall, it is like eight, nine foot waves. It is wow. super intense. And what kind of boat are you in? No other. Yeah, you're in like a tiny huh? boat or what are you in? Oh, it was like a, it was a little fishing boat. It was yeah. maybe a 25 footer. Yeah. Like a little fishing boat. Yeah. Nothing to be out there on that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, and it was the boat just going crazy. And the captain was like the funniest, goofiest guy of all time. Up until the moment we passed the break wall. And he was just like, like stone cold serious. We were just like, hold on. Like, oh, oh shit. Yeah. You know, excuse me, excuse you're my friends. All right, you're all right. <laughs> Yeah, and um, and so we pretty much like we had we had this is the only time we could get drone shots, and this is the only time we can get any shots of those turbines. So we had an Inspire one at this point, mm -hmm. and so we had to take off, take off an Inspire one from a platform on the back of this boat. That was probably about four feet by four feet, um, in crazy wind and crazy waves like that. So we took off, we flew out there. Uh, Dom was flying on drone, I was on the gimbal, and we got the shot. I got him, and now we're like, doing it back, and we're just like. like Oh, we have to land this. <laughs> like, and there's no yeah, return to home in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. Yes. Um, because you know, as you know, press return to home is just gonna go back to where you where were, we were at last, yeah. you took off, which we can't do, and the boat's doing like this. Yeah. And so it was one of the most challenging landings we've ever had to do. Um, I give Dom all the hats off and credit because he landed that thing in the boat and only broke one prop in the sense that we got it on the ground and then it like as it got onto the uh, as it got hit the bottom of the boat uh -huh. it like the boat moved and it was still slightly in the air so it, like kind of bounced around the inside of the boat a little bit yeah and just one prop shattered everything else was completely fine got the shots That's... and on, and literally everybody on the boat except for me flew up. yeah um wow it was a good time that sounds like a good time <laughs> That sounds like a good time. So let's talk. What's what's the favorite drone to fly? I mean, you're flying some some cinematic, very high level stuff. What are you flying mostly? What what equipment? Everything else? No way. This is my favorite drone. Yeah. Yeah. This is the DJI Mavic Air. I yeah. know people can judge me for it, get on me, whatever. The best camera in the world is the one that you have with you. That good is point. my. That is 100% the best camera you have. Like, yeah, I can have an Alexa Mini, but can it fit in your backpack? I can have an Inspire 2, but can it fit with me? Right. Like an Inspire 2 is an incredible bird, and I love it. It's great for all these cinematic adventures that I do and for these big clients that I have. But a lot of the best footage I've gotten has been off of this because it's always in my backpack. Good and point. it's easy to fly. This is the easiest drone I've ever flown when it comes yeah. to like the way that it responds, how smooth it is. Mm -hmm. It still shoots 4K. Yeah. You know, I have a whole entire like uh, Polar Pro like set of lens filters on it so I can make everything look cinematic and amazing. Yeah. Um, the flight time is reasonable. Like I normally get about 15 minutes to a battery. I have like 10 of the batteries for yeah, this. Yeah, of course. Um, and so, like for me, this is it. Um, also, another cool thing about this drone is that each one of these batteries, um, this little adapter that comes with these batteries, mm -hmm. that you could reach into a USB charger. Um, so it's like yeah. you travel anywhere with this, and you got it. Like when you're on the plane, you have to have the batteries with you. Yeah. I don't have to bring any external battery sources because these things will charge. Each one of these will charge my phone like three times, and I have let's say five or six of them. Yeah. There we go. 
Um, that's awesome. This, I know that's that's a weird answer from a professional drone pilot, but no. I, this is the drone I've flown the most, like with me all the time. Um, and it's just there for the moments. Like, when something's about to happen crazy or like, my favorite thing about this drone is when you get into like areas where I've gotten to spots where traffic's, you're somewhere like on the highway and traffic stops. Mm -hmm. Then you're like, what's happening? You're sitting there for an hour, nothing moves. Yeah. It's like, I'm gonna pull out my drone and go check it out. Yeah. And I, you know, and I just go like, I don't fly over the highway over your cars, but the cars ain't moving anyway. Sure. But just fly over the medium, because you have a wide medium, just fly down the expressway, and then you can see what happened. You're like, oh, there's a massive accident up yeah. there. But things are looking like they're starting to move, and then all the people from the other cars are coming over and asking questions like, yeah. hey, what, what is happening? I saw you just take off. And like, hey, look at this. This is crazy. And then you make a bunch of friends. That's um, awesome. And so for me, this is it. This is my favorite drone. Um, this isn't my favorite cinematography drone. Um, okay. It does a great job. Sure. Um, a lot of the, actually, I've had this drone, this exact drone's footage has been used on multiple television shows I've been a part of. No way. Um, so, yeah, it's good enough. Um, yeah. That's the thing. Is, again, the camera that's with you is the one that matters. And so, this also is really good at flying indoors, too. Yeah. Um, so, you actually, you know, like somebody actually uh, inquired to me yesterday about doing some indoor flying and some um, like indoor growing operations and said, hey, we'd like for you to fly indoors. We've heard you have a Mavic Air that's good for that. And I'm like, if it wasn't for Corona, I'd probably do it. Yeah. Um, yeah, afterwards I can come do it with you guys and so it's been that yeah. kind of a conversation um, but yeah this is this for me I wouldn't say this is a great starter drone sure but as a professional uh, cinematographer professional drone cinematographer this is still my like my go-to like, especially when I go on location scouts mm. and then because normally if you get a drone job with a with a movie yeah you don't have to go to a tech scout yeah. and so the tech scout is the day that you go and you look at what you're gonna do you plan it out especially if it's a nice shoot mm -hmm. um, you have to go there and you have to plan out what you're gonna do and what you're gonna fly what angles you want to get what all that kind of stuff talk about it make a plan and say where your home base is gonna be and if you have something like this with you then you don't have to imagine anything because mm -hmm. you're like oh, we want to get this shot that shot you're like well hold on a second you just pull it out and put it up and like you mean something like this and then the, the director's mind just you know yeah. pops off you know, they're just like, this is incredible. Like, you can just show it to me right now. I'm like, yeah, we can do this, this, and this. But we'll have a better drone. We can switch the lenses on it. You know, all this kind of stuff. But these are the kind of angles we can do. These are the type of moves. Sure. Um, so this has been an instrumental uh, instrumental tool in not only my cinematography work, but also just my life in general. I get it. Let's talk about the cinematic side of things, though. If you if you are stepping up for that big client that wants something, it's, uh, what are you bringing out? You bring out the Inspire 2? What are you going from there? Well, it really depends on the client. Um, mm -hmm. So, for example, most, I'd say the vast majority of the clients that I've shot for in the last year and a half, uh, mm -hmm. something like an Inspire 2 with an X, X5S, mm -hmm. um, honestly, is actually wow. what is pretty much good enough for most clients. They're pretty happy with it. Um, like most people don't need more than 4K, but it shoots up to like 5.2K. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Um, everybody's going to be pretty happy with that. Mm -hmm. um, then obviously, you know, if you get the X7 up there, then yeah. it's just, it's an improvement. Game changer, yeah. It's a game changer on any stretch. That's not like. My business partners might have just got here with a dog, so be ready. Not, we're not worried about it, man. We got roof repairs going on now. If you hear anything on our end, don't you worry. Hilarious. So. Um, no, but uh, but yeah, like that's what uh, like that that drone, the X. I'd say the Inspire Two with that. Um, but recently, I actually had to get a job with a, a heavy lift drone. Um, the Matrice Six Hundred is. I've used it about four or five times now. And I, you get weird drop when you become known for being doing drone stuff. Then people assume you do all the drone stuff. Yeah. Um, people assume you guys are doing all the drone stuff. It's okay, guys. Come on in. I'm just on a, I'm on a live stream, but it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Um, but uh, but the I got hit up because people wanted me to fly a basketball, like they wanted me to fly a basketball hoop for a, uh, a pretty much like an obstacle course challenge. Wow. For a drone job. That's what they wanted me to do. Okay. And so I had to figure out and work with their like the people who build the hoop because you can't use a regular basketball hoop. That's too much weight. Um, so yeah. I'm just like, we gotta have plastic backboard, we gotta have plastic all this, we have to attach it like this. And so I had to, you know, get the Matrice out and then give them an extra angle as well, because they just expected the drone to fly and have another drone flying and like capturing it as well. So I had a big drone team for this. Um, but the other thing they didn't expect is that, you know, a Matrice can hold like a X3 or X5 camera yeah. and so you can actually have a shot looking straight down at the hoop or looking out at people trying to shoot it yeah. um so always delivering that extra quality is really important and each drone and each job is very very specific to the client but i'd say sure. if you were to ask me the, what's the one camera drone that's working more than any other drone in the cinema cinema world it's 100 percent the inspired suit yeah. with the x with the x5 actually Even the x5 wow um the x7 is a better camera for sure, sure. Of, course. of course um but i a lot of people if you know who have the x7 
um, is that there's there's you have there's more issues with the X7 than the X5 in the sense of like you'll get a jittery camera thing where it's just like mm. you can't figure out how to get your gimbal to calibrate the way you want it to. Right. It's just, there's more logistical issues that come with it. It's right. a better camera, and I prefer to use it 90% of the time. Right. Um, but normally I I bring the X5s anyway because it's an incredible camera. Um, but the X Inspire 2 with the X7 is everything you'll need. That's awesome, man. Let's talk a little bit about filters too. Someone asked Ken earlier, uh, what are some what are some of his favorite filters? What do you like filter wise? Well, I mean, you first of all, if you're flying a drone and you're not using ND filter, then you're not being a pro uh, a pro uh, drone cinematographer. Like sure. that's normally the, the biggest advice anybody asks me. Is like, I want to be a drone cinematographer. Like, what do I, what equipment do I need? I'm like, well, besides the drone, you need to get the right filters. Yeah. Um, there's a couple different companies that do a really good job at it. Uh, Polar Pro, I've worked with a bunch mm -hmm. to get a lot of their filters, um, and so as well as uh, Tiffin. Mm -hmm. uh, both of them make some really good glass. Um, and the filter that you're going to use really is up to the top. Now, for example, on this. On this drone, like just so you know what I literally am just hanging out with. Sure. So like right now, I have a little ND filter on this at yeah. the moment. I yeah. always keep one of them just on there. Um, sure. I always keep a bunch with me, and I normally keep a 32. Okay. Um, so what I call it, a 32 uh, polarized ND filter on there. The 32, this one doesn't have aperture. This, If you don't know much about cameras, one of the mm -hmm. things you'll learn is when you get little drones like this, they have something, they don't have something called aperture control. Mm -hmm. Aperture control is normally something that a bigger camera will have where you can actually open and close the aperture to be able to control how much light is being exposed against what you're filming. And so this one doesn't have that. The only thing you can do on this drone to adjust your lighting is to add, change your shutter speed, change your, uh, or brighten it with your ISO. Mm -hmm. and the biggest issue you're normally going to be flying during the day, so it's normally going to be very bright. So you're normally not going to have to worry about the ISO, but you are going to have too much light. And if you put your shutter speed too high, then your drone footage starts to look really choppy. It starts to look really weird, and it's easy to tell that you didn't know what you were doing, yeah. especially by a professional camera operator from any sort. Yeah. So what you want to have on here is pretty much sunglasses, um, and that's what an ND filter is. Yeah. And depending on what you're shooting, um, you can get the gradient versions of these as well. Typically, whenever I'm shooting like over the ocean or like on a full sunny day, yeah. but I'm shooting against a dark, uh, like a really bright top, sure. really dark bottom, or vice versa, then the gradient ones work because you can get from an 8 ND to a 32 in the same filter, and it just is a gradient across here. You just have to make sure it's turned the right way, and that'll make sure that your entire image is exposed correctly. And if you're wondering, how do I know if my image is exposed correctly, if you're flying a DJI drone, the easiest way that I find to do it is that there is a little, uh, there's a little grid that's called a histogram on there, and it's just a box. It's pretty much a square, mm -hmm. and what you do is make sure that your square, that the, all the whites, the, all the mm -hmm. whiteness in here is going to be a little graph. Yeah. Make sure that, that that histogram is nothing is touching either side of it. This is the dark side, and then this line over here is the, uh, the bright side. You don't want to have any part of your white touching either one of those sides because that means you're either fully underexposed or fully peaking on your overexposure, and that means that it's going to be really hard to be able to make your footage look cohesive and look good. Yeah. Um, if you have like, a bubble right in the middle, you're winning. That's awesome, man. So let, let's switch gears, still talking to cinematography. Talk to me about the YouTube channel with Droner. How did this come about? It, it's, yeah. it's taking off quick now, man. I mean, back when I first heard of you to now, it's, it's grown like exponentially. So, so catch me up on what you're doing over there, how people can follow you a little bit more as well. Yeah, so I started the, uh, the YouTube channel um, a few years back. Uh, I didn't actually want to start the channel, mm -hmm. uh, to be fully honest. Uh, I didn't think I was good on camera at all. I thought I was absolutely, I'm, I'm a producer, I'm behind the camera, that's what I do. I had yeah. never been on camera before. Yeah. And so I went to go work on a uh, brand integrated, ironically, a brand integrated content uh, shoot for YouTube, a YouTube channel. Um, Improv Everywhere was the name okay. of the YouTube channel. And they were doing an improv integration with the Marriott Hotel. And I got brought in as a drone pilot. And the guy who, uh, like, and the funny part is I got brought in as a drone pilot. And they were like, we want you to fly indoors at the Marriott Hotel in Atlanta, downtown Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I told them, I was like, I'm not going to be able to do that. And they were like, no, 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 no. Like, we're gonna, like it's going to be fine. We'll make sure there's no people, blah, blah, blah. I was like, I'm telling you, if you guys can't clear the whole area, I'm just going to say no. Yeah. You're going to fly me out there and you're going to pay me for this. I'm going to tell you no. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened. Like I got flown out there and I made sure the contract and everything was done. I got up there, I was like, yeah, well, can we clear all these people? And they were like, well, the hotel's telling us no, so what can we do? I was like, well, I can actually hold this drone with my hand on the elevator uh -huh. and use it as a gimbal, but I'm not yeah. flying anything. Uh -huh. um, and so I didn't get to fly, but so I had a lot of spare time, but I still was like, I'm gonna stick around set, see if there's anything else I can help with because obviously I'm pretty experienced on set. So I was just hanging out and the guy who orchestrated the entire shoot, like executive producer, he's the one who did the brand integration. He was just asking me a bunch of questions about, um, about drones. He was just like, you know, like, what about this? What about that? And I was just answering all the questions. And he's like, man, 
I have an idea. And I was just like, what is it? He's like, can I have your number? Can I call you? And I was like, sure. And then like two weeks later, he called me. He's like, dude, you need to be a YouTuber. Like, you got it. You got to start a channel. Yeah. And I was like, that is the best joke I've heard today, but what did you honestly call me for? Uh-huh. <laughs> and he was like, no, no, I'm serious. You should be explaining your own stuff to people because you're yeah. good at your stuff. And so after much convincing from him and my current business partner, because I had just started my production company like the year prior, mm-hmm. um, we decided we had enough spare time to just do it in our spare time, like my backyard. And so we started doing it and uh, nothing happened. That was the fun part. Anybody that says, I want to start a YouTube channel, what's it going to take? Like the biggest thing, patience. Yeah. It's a lot of patience time. because you never, never, never know when you pick up. Yeah. Um, so I pretty much, we, we put out two to three videos every single week mm-hmm. for 18 months. Um, most people can't even imagine how much right? work that is. It's a lot of content, um, man. Man, it's a lot of content. So we put all of that and, you know, we got to like, 7,000 subscribers in 18 months. And I was just like, all this work isn't worth it. Like, I'm not doing this for another 18 months so I can have 14,000 subscribers. Right. Um, and I was just like, I'm just gonna chill, maybe release stuff occasionally. Um, and that's when the channel blew up. I completely ignored the channel. Like, I just forgot it existed, mm-hmm. went working for a year, and I came back and I'm just like, I have 17,000 subscribers? Like, yeah, and where did it anything. come from? Yeah, it's leverage. You know? Yeah, and so, and that's now recently, like, what is, I've shifted it a little bit. It's still very much so drones focused, but now the channel's called Droner Tech, um, mm-hmm. because I'm also, like, I'm, I'm a tech nerd. Like, yeah. that's why I got that show. So I do a little bit more technology than that. Um, but, yeah, but now it's, like, big thing that I like to talk about now is, like, what's going on with the drone laws. Wow, um, yeah. Change with that. You know, I saw you put out a really, really good video uh, yeah. not too long ago. Yeah. Um, talking about petitioning uh, sure. for the new drone laws that are going to come out with remote ID, because sure. that's it. Super serious hot topic yeah, right now. Big time, big time. It's a big thing. It's so funny because like it's all happening. And the coronavirus hit. Now everybody's like, so do we still push for this? Or yeah, I think <laughs> I, I'm sure that's slowed down. Government's focused on something else right now, which is good. Uh, gives us more time to to build up to that. So we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But it's still going to come to fruition somehow. So we'll have to work on it. Exactly. You know? um, but yeah, I mean that's that's pretty much where it is. It's on YouTube. If you type in the word D R O N E R on YouTube, mm-hmm. then I pop up. But for some reason, if you type in D R O N R, it corrects your it corrects your search uh, engine to drone instead of droner, which yeah. is hilarious, and you'll never find me. But if you type in D R O N E R, you'll yeah. find me. That's so that's awesome. why I tell people. And that's another my second biggest piece of advice. Make sure your name is searchable. There you go. T-shirts made. I got yeah. this cool logo. <laughs> I was doing it for a long time. Yeah. You never realized that I can't tell people to look this up yeah. um, to find me because if you type that in directly, you ain't gonna find me. Yep, auto correct, man. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. It's I a got thing. You. That's super funny. Hey, YouTube, Facebook, any questions you have for Brennan, now is a great time to uh, ask them. Uh, I'm watching all the comments now. I'll be catching up with some of you here in just a bit. Uh, Brennan is joining us on the Aviation Mastery uh, at sea in October. I know it's a crazy time to be marketing a cruise right now, Brennan, but you would be <laughs> amazed. Um, we just continue. We actually sold out the diamond package, which is basically dinner with you, I, and my other buddy, Steve-O, from Manned Aviation, Steve-O One Canevo. Um, so that's already sold out. Uh, I just learned that today. We continue to sell cabins on this. On this. So aviation is a relentless bunch. So despite, um, despite a um, <laughs> coronavirus and everything else, people are still booking like crazy. So we're going to have a great time in October. I know we're working on hopefully flying. Uh, not only for Royal Caribbean, but on some of their islands as well. Uh, I know our team has been working on that. I think you guys have a little bit too. So there's going to be some fun stuff um, uh, happening uh, with that. So you'll be leading some of the seminars and everything. We've got some phenomenal people there. So we're, uh, we're, we're thankful that you're going to be joining us uh, on that. You, you've done a cruise before? What you, what's the oh, scoop? yeah. I've, it's funny. I've actually only ever been on one cruise before in my life. I yeah. Was- 15 years old yeah <laughs> um, well this, this is a flying old. cruise so it's gonna be way more fun yeah i think this is gonna be first of all i'll be an adult so that's gonna change things a lot yeah i got gotcha. you um, but yeah it's uh i'm really excited because i had a great i remember having a great time um i've been to the caribbean a bunch one of our biggest clients is actually based in the bahamas so i actually have a lot of experience flying um yeah. in the bahamas so i'm super excited because you can't beat that water like the, the look of the water with the drone shots uh, you get the wide scape of oh, this yeah. incredible look it's like you can make anything look amazing. You could put anything in the foreground of that, and you're just like, yeah, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Um, so, so yeah, I'm super excited. I'm just like, this is gonna be great. We're gonna be on a cruise ship. We're gonna have a great time. We're hopefully gonna be flying around. 
Um, it should be like for me, I'm I'm super excited. I think it's gonna be a great time. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. We're excited about it. So I'll read some comments here. Uh, Ray, who's uh, again drone pilot, manned aviation pilot uh, on both of our channels, uh, it, actually a full sail graduate. Uh, he said, "I do a lot of my post production work. It's a ton of work." Whenever my cl clients try to do their own editing, they always call me a few days later and say, here, can you do this? He's saying he shoots it and clients come right back. <laughs> you know, Tim, I'm sure you can relate, yeah. to, uh, relate to that probably back in some freelance days and everything else. Um, most definitely with that. What would you say, uh, Brennan, is that number one tip um, for somebody not looking to break in? I, I, I mean, everyone wants to break into Hollywood, let's say, but let's... I just want to get started, man. I, I want to help the local real estate photographer out. I want to do some surveying work. I want to do like, what is that tip to kind of get started? And let's just break into the drone space for now. And then we'll take it from there and hopefully get into Hollywood or whatever our dreams are after that. But the first baby step, just getting into the industry. Um, just with any start. So the thing is you have to be with this. If you want, if you have to make it a mediation. Are you yeah. doing this for fun or are you doing this for business? Yeah, good point. If you're doing it, you need to approach it. If you're going to do this for business, which most people like to talk about, like, I want a professional drone pilot. Well, is that okay? Well, or commercial drone pilot, I should say. Mm -hmm. And if you're looking at this business and you need to look at it like any other business, and the yeah. first thing you need to do is market research. Yeah. You need to look in your area and see what drone pilots are doing what. What kind of things can get you into there? Mm -hmm. The second thing you can do is look at us. If you're going to look at specifically at like what I do with drone cinematography, is you need to go and start studying drone cinematography. Mm. Look at different drone reels of the best drone pilots you can find. Yeah. You know, playing like just internet the crap out of it, but looking at what kind of variety of shots that they have. Because if you look at, for example, my drone reel, I have a huge variety because the easiest thing you can get as a drone pilot is just the big wide push shot. That's right. literally the thing. Like it's just like, okay, I've been in more beautiful places than you. Here's a bunch of shots of me being in beautiful places. That does not show me that you're a good drone pilot. That shows me you know how to use exposure and press forward on a stick. Wow. Um, all that shows me. Um, what really sets you apart is being able to have a variety of shots where you show the framing, yeah. that you show the creativity, that you show your use of the foreground, that you can show that you can track people, that you can show that you know you have an eye for story. Because the biggest reason that people are using drones is to be able to bring production value to their projects as well as to be advanced the story or the story elements they want to tell. Mm -hmm. So it's just okay. Well, how do I make someone like for me? It's like one one time a director looked at me and said, "Hey." I want to make this shot feel really lonely and creepy. How can we do that? Yeah. And you're just like, as a drone pilot, you're like, oh. Uh. Well, but me, because I have so much experience like, and being in film and all that, I was able to sure. look at him. Let's get a really, really big fog machine. Let's start on a really low shot in, in this forest. And let's just do a super slow creep back up and we'll tilt down. Yeah. And it's creepy because it looks like somebody's got kind of sort of just looking in on whatever this is, and nobody wants to be there in like a foggy, steamy atmosphere. Right. Now, to go back specifically to answer your question, the research is really, really important. The drone reel is the second most important thing, as I mentioned before, mm -hmm. is that if you want people to hire you, then you have to show them what you can do, and that variety that I brought up before is right. big. And you learning how to be able to create that variety is going to give you enough skills to not only have the drone reel because you'll have the footage, but now you actually know how to pull off those shots. How yeah. do you pull off a parallax shot? How do you pull off a drop a drop tilt shot? Mm -hmm. You know, these are the most basic drone shots, but if you're having the drone fly it for you, it's very easy to tell because the drone always has like a little tick to it. Yeah. But if somebody is flying it themselves and be able to do that smooth, oh, yeah. you know the difference. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, like that, I gotcha. The whole entire purpose of this is that you want to be able to make the whole goal of being a drone cinematographer is that you don't want people to realize that you're flying a drone at all. Yeah. You don't want people to realize that you have a camera at all. You want the camera to disappear and it becomes the, the viewer's perspective. Yeah, wow. It's, it just disappears and now they're just like, yeah, this is what I was looking at. I remember looking at this. You know, I remember experiencing this and there's no camera. And those little those little tweaks, those little yeah. micro adjustments, they take you right out of that, that, uh, that, that what feeling. What a good point. Yeah. It's practice, man. It all comes down to it. Hey, a few other questions. Bill Potter over on YouTube asked, thoughts on the Phantom 4 Pro versus a Mavic 2 Pro? Hmm. Phantom 4 Pro versus Mavic 2 Pro. Now, that's a good question. That's a huge debate in a lot of forums that are happening right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're different birds with different purposes. If I was going to just be doing strictly cinematography, as in video work, then I'm going to say the Mavic 2 Pro. Um, that cam, that drone is incredible. I love that drone. It's mm -hmm. extremely robust. You pretty much, it's almost impossible to crash. Anybody who's ever crashed a Mavic, 
I'm always just like, how did you do that? Yeah. Like yeah. you can run a, I've literally watched somebody one time run a Mavic into a phone tele, telephone pole and it corrected itself. Wow. Broke wow. the props all the way off and still was able to land. And I'm just like, how do you crash one of these things? But if you have a phantom and the little tip of the drone, one blade tips any part of it, it goes into a full spiral free fall and yeah. then explodes when it hits the ground. Yes. Not that I've ever had anything like I that understand. I've got Crash Phantom 3, I understand. <laughs> right? But you know what I'm talking about. As gotcha. soon as it comes out of what it knows how to do, the Phantom's in free fall. But the Phantom 4 Pro has a mechanical strutter. Mm. That's not the difference. So if you want to do photography, the Phantom 4 Pro is a better camera. If you want to do landscape surveying, the Phantom 4 Pro is a better drone, specifically because of that mechanical shutter, as well as it has longer flight times. Um, so it just really comes down to what you're really looking to do. In general, I think that the Mavic 2 Pro is a better bird mm -hmm. um, with a very almost similar camera to the Phantom 4 Pro, but the Phantom 4 Pro has a mechanical shutter and it's just a, it's just a slightly better camera in general. Um, you just it's a bigger camera, it has more space. You know, no, it doesn't have the Hasselblad ga glass on it, but honestly, like they just put Hasselblad's name on that camera because I understand. Like, I understand. Now, I mean, Hasselblad never made a camera this big, so why would that be a Hasselblad camera? Right. Um, just keeping it real. No, know? I get it, man. I get it. I get it. That's super, man. Well, Brandon, listen, I, I am so excited to spend part of our vacation with you, uh, learning more just uh, about the cinematography side of things. Fly I, I hope we get to do some great flying uh, on our trip as well. I'm sure we'll be talking again in the future, man, but I'm gonna let you get back to work today and we're gonna sign off here in a bit anyway. So thanks for taking some time out today. Thank you for the giveaway as well. I'm sure the team will be reaching out to you with our uh, winner on that and we will be uh, in touch. Again, the uh, chance is Droner, but, uh, but you guys will drone ER to find the drone just NR as well to make that to make that work. We're, we're learning, right? So it's it's all good. Well, my friend, thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day, man. We'll catch you later, okay? Stay fly, brother. Awesome. Thanks, my friend. We'll see ya. Awesome. So what do you think, M08 Nation? A fantastic all things aviation live stream today. Do I look tired? It was a long day. I mean, it's not like a Ken Heron 24 hour live stream. I'll be on Ken Heron's show tonight, by the way, Thursday night live uh, this evening. So you'll be able to check all of that out. One last thing, last chance for our giveaway here. This is the last time you're gonna see this link, the bit.ly link down there. Thanks for moving it, John. Uh, the bit.ly link down there, last chance you're gonna see it again, what we are giving away. I got my list here. We talked with Max from Cirrus earlier, giving away a Cirrus goodie bag. Uh, Trevor giving away a Chart It All mug. Uh, Brennan is giving away the uh, FPV starter kit, which I was kinda, after I saw that, man, I'm thinking, I'm like writing this name down, like I want one of these. <laughs> You already found it? Okay, good, because I'm like, I'm sure Wayne's like, I want one. Tell him to order two, because I want one too. Um, I'm not sharing, a, a sharing goggles with him with the coronavirus going on. So um, it was super cool. Um, I, I might enter to win that one. And then of course, all the M08 and Remote Pot 101 gifts. Remote Pot 101 t-shirt. M0A.com t-shirt, obviously sent in your size, so when you win, I'm sure Amanda will follow up, or Sarah will follow up, get your sizes as well. Uh, two, three, Mike Zulu shirt. All our books package, the check ride series, uh, private pilot blueprint, past your private pilot check ride, past your instrument pilot check ride, and past your commercial pilot check ride will be one of the prizes as well. Then, the M0A certificate holder. This is good for manned or unmanned aviation, honestly. It says M0A on the front though, pilot certificates, and all your certificates in there, medical behind that written text. Actually, I, for, I use, man and unmanned, so I have my flight instructor, my, uh, my regular pilot certificate, my drone certificate, my recurrent test stays back here, my medical stays back there. So I kind of keep everything tucked in there with a pen and a notepad to copy down IFR clearances. I am an advocate and a user of it. And then we're giving away two flight bags actually. One, you gotta specify which one you want uh, if you win. One will be m0a.com with your name or it could be Remote Pot 101 uh, with your name there as well. This one will take a little bit longer to ship because we'll, we will literally make it here just for you. I think I covered all our great giveaways again. Uh, the All Things Aviation link that you saw there, that link is only good for today. Amanda, when are we gonna, when are we gonna turn that link off? Uh, it, goes uh, off at it goes off at midnight tonight. So do make sure you uh, get entered uh, in that here today because we're literally gonna notify winners tomorrow. Um, so that link will not work after this. So if you're watching this recording, happens to be today, 
Please go check that out. Today is the 2nd of April. Uh, is it the 2nd of April? I'm making sure my watch is right. Uh, the 2nd uh, of April. So if it's the 3rd of April, you already missed out. So 2nd of April, head over to that link, get entered to win some of that great uh, swag and gear as well. Listen, it has been a long day, but it has been a phenomenal day. Uh, we are literally packing up the majority of the studio and we're gonna move it to my spare bedroom at my house because we're on a uh, stay at home order for 30 days here in Florida. And we're gonna continue to bring great live streams uh, from the house. It sounds crazy, but we are here to deliver value to you all. You know, you have been such a blessing to us as a business, the 25 employees here of m0a.com and remotepot101.com. It is our turn to be a blessing to you. So while you're stuck at home, you need to study for written tests, get ready for check rides, recurrent tests, flight reviews, whatever it is, we are here to serve you. If there is anything, anything at all myself or this outstanding team here can do uh, to better serve you, to help you, don't hesitate to reach out. On our website, the bottom right hand corner, you'll see a little uh, button that says chat. We have nine flight instructors just waiting to sit there and chat with you about your questions, your concerns, whatever that may be. Still offering phone support. Everyone's working remotely. Um, so bear with us if, if response times are slow on phones and everything else. It's literally ringing here, then ringing to cell phones, and we're working on that. But um, we're still the, the same great company that is here to serve you, grow with you, make you safer, smarter each and every day. So. With that, enjoy the rest of your day, and most importantly, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, guys. We'll see you.